The Pat McAfee Show. There will be no rules for our guests, for us, for the things we can talk about. Yes, sir. Speaking his mind. I've never had a problem expressing my opinions or my thoughts or anything like that. While being relatable. I haven't had that manufactured, fake-ass celebrity that a lot of people have whenever they go on those big networks. I've had a chance to really build my crew, build my following, build my audience. And ridiculous. What am I supposed to do? So I'm supposed to look at something that I can definitely afford and say, nah. Nope. Is that what I'm supposed to do? The Pat McAfee Show starts in three, three two, two, one. one. Good afternoon, beautiful people. It is Thursday, March 18th, 2021. One day into the NFL's new league year. Where do we stand? Shout out to Twine for that beat drop. There's players going back to old homes. There's guys coming out of retirement. There's money flying around. There's decisions being made by teams that make you go, what the fuck are they doing over there? <laughs> then there's also decisions being made where you think, oh, I like to see that team doing that. Kyle Van Noy, friend of the show, signs back with the New England Patriots. Yeah. He goes back into the same division as the team that signed him to a four-year, 40-some million dollar deal and released him one year after that deal uh, was signed. He goes back to New England. Miami has to pay him money still. And the New England Patriots, after Kyle Van Noy, with how he played, got a compensatory pick uh, for for the entire a fourth-round draft pick. So the Dolphins are, are going to pay Pay Kyle Van Noy some sort of money next year. Mm -hmm. They're one of their biggest rivals in their division. Earned another draft pick, which they do pretty well with. Uh, well, actually, maybe not. Actually, maybe that doesn't oh. even matter long term. I mean, and that might just be used as a bundle to go get somebody else. But ah. they get a fourth round draft, and they have to play against them two times a year. I mean, this is <laughs> quite a situation for the Miami Dolphins. Congrats to front of the show, Kyle Van Noy, going back to New England. I assume he's excited. We start doing some math, and we're not 100% sure how much Miami will pay him next year to play against them twice a year, uh, twice in the next 17 games or whatever. But I think it's a a couple million dollars so they're gonna be paying a guy to play against them and bill belichick once again super smart human how you doing keep him moving signing bonus here you'll make one million dollars here then we'll give you some money on the back end you're back in the game you're back in the building and have you seen what we have built there now you have to think to yourself with patrick chung retiring Okay, he was one of the opt-outs. Did he do that by himself after one year of opting out due to a COVID scare, which had a few players who haven't seemed to have the most bright current days that opted out because they didn't want to do the season. And it was alleged that there would be no nothing held against the people that did that. We all knew that there's humans involved in this. If three guys opt out and there's still another 75 guys that play and the entire season goes off without a hitch, how is that going to make the opt-outs look to the teams that they're potentially trying to come back to? I'm not saying it's right. I'm just saying whenever they made the announcement that there will be nothing held against anybody that does this, that was an ignorant statement that did not take into account, you know, football guys that run buildings <laughs> yeah. and go, uh, this, uh, you remember you didn't want to play against COVID. You remember that? Mm. We had a full team in here. The league, full season. Mm -hmm. Didn't even delay anything. Same time. Star players were playing. You know Aaron Rodgers? That song bitch played. You know Tom Brady? That motherfucker played. Yeah. Do you know Patrick Mahomes? That motherfucker paid. played. You didn't want to play? Okay, yeah, yeah, it's good, that's good. Mm -hmm. yeah, not on this fucking team, though. See There's, There's a lot a of that going on right now. Okay? And we're not saying it's right. Okay, listen. You make a decision, there are consequences. Now, when you make the decision, you're told that these consequences can't necessarily happen. But I think everybody that has ever been into a football building and talked to humans that are making decisions in football buildings, you all knew that if there was a chance that you opted out because of something that, that could have a little bit of a conversation when everybody else seemed to go play. So it's not right. Once again, not right, but definitely happening. Patrick Chung retires. Okay. Cannon traded got, got traded yep. out of Houston. He was uh, the other opt out. And now Dante Hightower, right? Was the third yep. opt out. Mm -hmm. Dante Hightower also plays similar position. Kyle Van Noy, right? Oh yeah. Okay. So now what's going to happen with Dante Hightower? Cause you look around a couple different teams. The opt outs have all been sent. Mm -hmm. See you later. You're, mm -hmm. you're, you're not coming back here. Now other teams signing guys that opted out is interesting to me because that means, okay, not, that's not league wide. There's only certain teams, which I think is expected whenever you, if you, if we were asked immediately upon the 
uh, protocol being that nothing can be held against these players that opt out. This is a, a free, if you were to ask us, I think we would have been able to, I think I would have given you a percentage of the amount of people that that will ring true for, and I think it's a smaller number. But there are teams trading for opt-outs. There are teams signing for opt-outs. It feels like there's a couple teams that you can get a good read on how they feel about how the opt-outs uh, are, and I think that can dictate some moves that are going to be made in the future. Speaking of moves that were made, Kyle Long is now a member of the Kansas City Chiefs. Yeah! Oh, congrats. Was just on a show a couple weeks ago, looked in a very good space. Oh, yeah. Mentally, physically, he talked about how his brother could get it, actually. Hey, yeah. hey, Chris, you want to come get some? I'm right down the road. Great conversation. He, In that conversation that he had with us, he chit-chatted about how when in his final days with Chicago, he was a bitter, hurt guy, basically. I think he even has come to the understanding with himself that maybe how football ended for him the first time that caused him to retirement was nowhere near how his actual feelings were. I think he understood injuries play into that, transition tra plays into that. I would assume with how the team was doing plays into that. You can really get into your head there, and it can become a bit negative. And I would assume Kyle Long got away from the game. He got back into media a little bit. He was doing some other things, and he realized that he absolutely loved football still. He realized that his body is better than than it's ever felt. He realized that taking a break maybe mentally and physically helped him out. And I think we're going to see it very dominant Kyle Long. He had a visit with the Raiders. Remember, whenever he announced he was coming out of retirement, they said, oh, he's taking a visit to the Raiders. The Raiders are going to want him or whatever. And I, I think there was a chance that maybe he and his dad chatted, or I would assume you and her dad would speak, especially on something about coming out of retirement when your dad's an NFL legend. I would assume that would happen. But I wonder if, like, the Raiders was the initial idea. Like, oh, I'll go play for, you know, that whole thing. I'm, I'm not saying it is. I have not talked to him about any of this. I'm just speculating from looking outside and with the conversation I've had with him and knowing him a little bit off fair I wonder if he and his dad talked and maybe it was like Raiders and then as soon as his name got out there that he was potentially coming back to football and he was going to be a free agent I wonder if his phone was like hey 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 hey, 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 hey hold the phone here pal we just get, we don't have any offensive lineman over here we'll pay no. you and by the way we've been back back Super Bowls you want to come on over huh. Kyle Long's like hey let me <laughs> I, Excuse me, John. Appreciate you, John, man. You're a good guy. <laughs> Is my dad's jersey still up there? Yeah, okay, good. I'm going right. to try to get one somewhere else. <laughs> yeah. Let me get to Kansas City. $5 million deal. He's in a revamped offensive line. They got Tooney from New England. They got him. Who knows what he's going to play? Is he going to play guard? Everybody's assuming he's going to play guard because he was a dominant guard. But if he's feeling better than he's ever felt, he's very athletic. Mm -hmm. Maybe they move him to tackle. I'm not, I have not talked to him. This is nothing. We are assuming he's going to play guard because he was a very good guard. But he's athletic enough where he could potentially move to tackle. And maybe this last year or two, he's like studying tackle. I, who mm -hmm. knows? Who knows what's going to happen over there? But I love to see the Kansas City Chiefs getting into the game. I I like the fact that they've been to back-to-back -back Super Bowls and their team is absolutely littered with talent. And they're still going after people. They're still making plays. They have $25 million in cap space right now. Allegedly. Allegedly. After reworking Travis Kelsey's contract officially, you know, and it actually happening. They have like $25 million. They could sign right now. And I'm not, I'm not suggesting they will or saying they... They are going to do this, which is the same as Will. You get it. But um, <laughs> they could sign Kenny Galladay right now. Okay, Kenny Galladay, who is, in our eyes, the best wide receiver that is on the board right now. They could sign Kenny Galladay right now, and everybody would be like, how the fuck did the Chiefs add Kenny Galladay to that offense? And it's because right now there's people making moves. There's people moving signing bonus or, or, or salaries to signing bonus. There's voidable years. You're seeing a lot of people make plays, even people that have a – an abundance of riches. They're like, oh, we can make more, though. Let's do this. Let's do this. And if you're a fan of one of those teams, I, you got to be fucking pumped. Yeah. Like, it, it has to be so much fun to watch your team go all in. And I'm only saying that because when I grew up, we were in uh, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, East Hills, Plum Borough, where the ballers ball and the players play. There's a couple good teachers there, but a majority of not great school district. Mm. You, then, now it's much better, obviously. Ain't that right, Nick? Much, much better. They cleaned it up big time. They did clean it up big time. That, that place had to get turned around, and and they did turn it. I, I, one of the only places where I think they actually did like an actual broom, and they just sweep the entire school, and they're like, all right, we need an entire get them out. I, full rehaul. I, it felt like, like there's there's obviously some legends that are still around there, and I, I appreciate a lot of the people, but, you know, our 
Pittsburgh Plum, very interesting place. Okay, I think you can realize that by the COVID cowboy here, Nick, and myself speaking. And our CFO is a guy who was a goon on our hockey team. So, I mean, you can tell <laughs> that the way we kind of operate is different. But it was a Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh's obviously a hockey and football town. Okay, uh-huh. it's that's all. It's a it's a hockey town and a football town. But I was never a fan of the football team. I enjoyed when they won because everybody in the city was happier. Okay, everybody in the city was happy. My dad was happier. My family was happier. Everybody's happier when the Steelers win. So I liked when they won because it was good. But I was a fan of players. I like players. I was actually the only team I was an actual fan of in Pittsburgh was the Penguins because we could get to a couple of those games. You couldn't get into Steelers games if you didn't have money or know the right people. Hockey, you could get into a couple of the games in the igloo. Okay, so I became big fan had the starter jacket and we had a baseball team in pittsburgh they're named the pittsburgh pirates and they were the worst fucking team in the league my entire childhood basically 25 straight years losing seasons they just absolutely stink all, all the old heads in pittsburgh would tell these glory days stories about how the pirates are good and whatever as i was growing up as we were growing up they were the fucking worst <laughs> and as you looked at the owners you're like you're watching these owners and they're they're not doing anything i i started looking around the baseball space i didn't play baseball but i didn't mind watching it and i saw these new york yankees and this owner was like hey this guy will spend all the money they would put graphics up on espn on sports center back when everybody used to watch that because it was an amazing show they would put graphics up there and it would say this is the salary or payroll for the New York Yankees and this is the payroll for the other team and I think they were trying to say like this is unfair or whatever in my eyes I was like oh there's a team that is trying to fucking win and there's a team that's like oh we're trying to uh, we're trying to do this in the right way I love a team that says, hey, listen, from the top all the way down to the bottom, every person in there is, we're going all in. I know you don't have to spend the most money to go all in. I know that there's different ways to do it. But when I see these teams getting active and making moves, I absolutely love it. I have a lot of respect for it. I understand not everybody can do it because of Uncle Cove and everything like that. But with what they're doing with signing bonuses for the the salary becoming signing bonus in these voidable years, it feels like everybody could potentially make some moves if they really wanted to. I wonder how the NFL is going to put a button on that little clause that has been taken advantage of here. Uh, Who knows as we go forward. Tonight, March Madness begins. There's a lot to talk about. We got a lot going on in the world. If you haven't entered in to our March Madness live app bracket, you're an absolute stooge. Now, if you have entered in, you know the competition is for second place. Mm -hmm. I filled out a perfect bracket just two days ago. So right now we're sitting at like 38,000 entries. 38,000 entries. And the clause was, we'll give away $51,000 to the winner of the bracket bonanza. So mm-hmm. I'll be giving myself $51,000 because oh, wow. I filled out a perfect well, bracket. That's that's I'm going to win. So no, you'll be giving it to me. No, but but is your bracket the same as mine? Because well, I filled out a perfect Yeah, but bracket. I got the final score exactly right. So uh, I'll share the money oh, with you guys. Now, anyways, it, it's not, not as, as robust as Zito's mom. You know, oh! All oh, oh, right. So, boy. like, all this... All you're hearing right now is noise, and you don't need to worry about that. What you need to worry about is what's real, okay? What is real is $51,000 is going to the winner of our bracket bonanza. If we become, now, listen, I've said this in a series, okay? Uh So if we become the largest bracket on the March Madness Live app, brought to you by Capital One, if we, we are not sponsored by Capital One, we're just telling you the app is, and we are learning in a hard way that they are, they are in charge of this whole thing. If we become the biggest bracket on the app, it'll go to $75,000. Okay. 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 This is what I've been saying since the beginning. Yeah. yeah. And then if we surpass 50,000 entries, which we've been saying for a long time now, impossible. Not going to no happen. Way. Not going to happen. It'll go to $100,000. Mm. So now what we're learning is... There is a chance we're going to get to 50,000 entries. Yeah. Okay, 12,000 more people need to enter before tomorrow at noon or whatever. We thought it was tonight. It's not because the way the brackets filled out is you just get whoever gets in there in your bracket. So it's until now. There's a good chance we're going to get to 50,000, nice. but we're not going to be the biggest bracket on the app. Uh. So what do we do then? Because there was a protocol. Yeah. yeah. Was there not? If this, <laughs> then this. If that. Then hundred grand. Right. That's right. I mean, Standard you, logic. Exactly. Uh-huh. You can't check the third box off. Yeah. If the second and box exact, hasn't as, been checked as, off, yeah. So, as the as the winner go. here, okay. I, I fifty one thousand is fine. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty nice. Very nice. That's very nice of you. 
But it doesn't fucking matter because you're going to lose. And you're Canadian. No Canadians oh, can yeah. be a part yeah, of this. Yeah, you can't enter. Can't so yeah. that is not our rule. That is Capital One's right. March Madness Live yeah. Apps rules, not ours. No. Okay. Take that up with them. Uh -huh. We did not make those rules. Our rules are for, hey, you know, we did a little digging into our stats here over the last couple of weeks. Oh. The business, the everything like that. Hey, hey, we're doing okay, okay? Nice. It's been a fun time to do that. Do you know about 20% of our views are international? Really? Yeah. It's a regional show, though. We're only 80% American, huh. okay? 20% international. Huh. 100%, why the fuck are people watching? Hell yeah. You know what I mean? A lot of that going on. I did not expect that. So maybe our bracket is a little bit at a disadvantage because you're taking away, what, one-fifth of our audience can't even enter our bracket because you guys say, build that wall. That's what they said, basically, Jeez. with this March Madness Live app. And that's one you know, I'm not happy about it, but you can get an illegal VPN thing that will get you yeah. into America. Yeah. You can mm -hmm. enter for sure. I don't know how we'll be able to send you the money. Maybe it'll be uh, Bitcoin. Hell. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, we should have put that in there, probably get more entries. One coin. Uh. And by the way, we've attempted, that is not a quick operation. Of no, 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 no. no. I just want to let you know, buying Bitcoin is not just like, I want a Bitcoin, I get a Bitcoin. There's a full process. Takes time. Pulling weeds. Well, I want to know, like, do I get it at the, when I first? When you first inquired? Considered mm. getting in. Excuse me, whenever I sent the I would like one, mm. and now that I got three and a half weeks of bullshit to deal with, am mm -hmm. I getting it at, at when I sent the email, or is it whenever they fucking figure out that I deserve a Bitcoin? Well, I mean, if you have it in writing and they, they try to backdoor you, I'm sure you could sue the guy. Yeah, so. but who who do you sue? That's the thing. Mr. Bitcoin. Mr. Coin. Well, yeah, uh, what's his name? Oh, oh man. Ho, uh, James Coin. Hondi uh, Sun Suri no, or something? No, no, it's a <laughs> Japanese name. And it is not the easy. It's a Winklevoss. Owned the, the, by the way, they're potentially a part of this whole problem. <laughs> the Winklevi. All right. <laughs> but anyways, you'll get the money. And if it gets to 50000 we'll give away 100000 We'll be the fifth largest fucking bracket on the thing i we lose in the end but i win in the end because i'm just giving myself the money i'll have to deal with the taxes i guess but this is quite a situation we have we hope you enter we hope you enjoy yourself also before tonight's michigan state ucla game you have to listen mm -hmm. this is a this is a this is a sternly stated recommendation if you are in a state that has the FanDuel Sportsbook app available, and I know that's not all of them. I think it's only like seven or something at this point. And this is not going for Tennessee because your regulator said no to this particular Jeez. thing. So that's not on FanDuel or us. That's on the people making the rules down there. There is a free bet tonight on FanDuel Sportsbook on the app. that spread the love campaign, which is something um, that was created uh, when we were added to FanDuel. It was our idea. It has become an incredible thing, okay? It's like team betting, basically. Yeah. It's team betting. I asked, like, hey, is there any way we can do a team bet situation? We'll look into it. They had to do a bunch of things because the regulators are very difficult because everything has to be, you know, very dialed in because there's a lot of money at play, a lot of people gambling. The more people that gamble or, or bet on something, the larger the spread gets. It's called spread love because guess what you're doing? You're, you're, you're spreading love. Hey, so yeah. We did this with uh, Colts game. We did this with... Uh, IU Hoosiers, I believe, over Purdue. They've done this in other states, and it's gone to the thing. We're at 100 and what, 15 or 117? 120. 120. Wow. 120 and a half right now. Every 2,500 people that hit this, it'll go up a point. This thing is free money going into March Madness. If the Michigan State Spartans, presented by Rocket Mortgage, yep. lose by more than 120 and a half points, I will personally refund everybody their 50 bucks. Okay, wow. there Let's we go. go. Okay. Stand up guy. Stand up guy. I don't have that Thank money. You. I'm going to have to wash dishes and shit to get that done. Yeah. They're not going to lose. But oh, I don't oh, care, they're Foxy. They're not oh, stay out of this. Foxy will split it with you. Stay out of this. What I'm saying is, <laughs> I'm not saying the win lose. No, no, I am not. No, 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 no. <laughs> Presented by Rocket Mortgage. Let that son of a bitch do that. But if they lose by more than whatever this spread is, I will... With the help of Connor, yep, mm -hmm. and Ty, yep, yeah. and Diggs, yeah. and oh, Diggs is out. Tone. Zito, I'm in. I don't trust Foxy. Yep. Nick is definitely out. Gumpy, no chance. He's Canadian. Can't even do it. Sure. We will pay everybody their fifty bucks back. So this is a guarantee. You're going to win fifty bucks going into March Madness. Shout to FanDuel. Shout to you. And to be honest, shout to us for saying. It's a it's a win win. Yeah, yep. we'll reimburse you if they get beat by what 135 or whatever it closes. Don't out. be afraid to double down on UCLA catching a couple points either. Ooh, oh, you're saying hey, here's a little sports bet. A little yep. double insight. 
yep, yep. Get 50 bucks going into March Madness, though. Get 50 bucks going into life. Get 50 bucks back into maybe restaurants opening in your... T- just get 50 bucks out of this thing. Yeah, you're going to want it over Take the, the next money. few days here. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, which is an issue because Fox had guaranteed Michigan State tonight. All the boys yeah. here, by the way, Ty, Connor, Diggs, Gumpy, all the boys. We appreciate you guys listening and watching wherever you may be. Uh, I He told me... In Michigan, Foxy, correct me if I'm wrong here. Foxy grew up in Michigan, diehard Michigan State fan. Yep. In Michigan, it's January, February, okay. Izzo, April, May, June, mm-hmm. July, August, September, October, November, December, January, February, Izzo. Oh. Rocket Mortgage. You don't bet against Tom Izzo in March, Pat. Rocket Mortgage, <laughs> April. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's get to a break. So I put a lot of money on that just because of what Foxy said. Just so my misery tomorrow, when his little bullshit narrative that he talked me into yep. cost me a lot of money, that's why I did it. Sure, you take it out on him. Said it was the biggest lock he's ever handed out. He yep. actually, he put it, he raised his finger to it on his computer screen yep. and then told the entire office, biggest lock I've ever made. Uh-huh. And then went into this whole January, February <laughs> Izzo speech. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Fortunately, he said the same thing before the Maryland game. Yeah, he did. Yeah, he nah. did. But this one was a good delivery. It was. It, it does feel like he's moving the goalposts a little bit. <laughs> yep. But this one feels real. We got to get to a break. Dallas Clark will join us on yeah. the other side. Talking football, talking Belichick. I should be a Hall of Famer, I assume, at some point. Wore no gloves. Mm-hmm. Uh, he lives out in the middle of Iowa. His Wi-Fi always stinks. Always. Uh-huh. Can't wait to chat with him, though. Legend, <laughs> Dallas Clark on the other side. This is the Pat McAfee Show, Thursday, March 18th. What's that guy's name? Chuck Norris. Yeah, J.J. Watt is the modern-day Chuck Norris. That's what he is. Like, in years to come, people will be like, J.J. Watt, Justin James, kind of do Infinity twice, and, like, performed his own C-section and all that stuff. Andrew's probably the smartest human on earth, if I had to guess. He's the smartest I've ever talked to. Every time you have a conversation with him, you got to use context clues to try to figure out what the heck the words mean in the sentence. You go, hi, Andrew, how's it going? Ba ba ba. S-A-T word, S-A-T word. You don't know what it means. you got to just hope the next sentence is going to describe what you just said. I don't know. I don't like ranking people. That, I mean, I understand that's what this show is. <laughs> now, here we are. Here we are on a ranking show, and I don't like ranking people. I don't like judging people. If I'm on Tinder, I swipe right on everybody. I don't like judging people, uh, but I think the fact that Von Miller won a Super Bowl for a team, basically, and was an MVP of a Super Bowl, uh, I, think, I think that's worthy of being uh, a top five guy. And there's people in Germany, there's people in Hong Kong, there's people in South America that only watch one game a year and it's the Super Bowl. Everybody's tuned in. Uh, and I think all of them are saying is, Guten Tag, Von Miller, he's the man. If I was a superhero, I'd be Hancock, the drunk one. Next question. <laughs> <coughs> well, do you do, uh, Bane was the most recent um, villain in it. Do yeah. you do any Bane impersonations? I do would What's would that say? thing, like, uh, the one with the, like, the mask Here, do one real quick, do one real quick. I, I was never, born in the dog. Impersonation oh. before. That was good, you sounded really good. I was an American. In America, kicking an American football, blindfolded. Had you attempted kicking blindfolded before? We practiced it like three times before the actual attempt and they were nowhere near, nowhere near, nowhere close. Didn't think it was possible. Then the adjudicator shows up, he's got a little suit on with a little Guinness patch on, all high and mighty, judging me. Wham, (laughs) right down the middle. Some kid on the internet definitely has already beat it. I mean, that's just the way it goes these days, but I mean, life's good. You know, they called me officially awesome. That's their thing, like when you get a record, they go, you are officially awesome. I go, thanks, adjudicator. I already knew that. That's all we got. Hey, Thank thanks, man, that was much. a lot of fun. You know, got a chance to talk about incredible football players. Got a chance to represent the shield here, you know? And uh, I'm just lucky to be in this league filled with awesome humans, you know? That's what it's all about. I'm just lucky to be here. Thanks for having me. Thank you. Oh, you think darkness is your ally, but you were merely adopted the dark. I was born in it, molded by it.
This is the Pat McAfee Show on Sirius XM Mad Dog Sports Radio. We thank you for taking the time to seek out this small regional show that streams internationally. Here's Pat and the boys. Okay. What? It's hot. Yeah. This is from a kid that went to our high school. I could hear like uh, some West Coast rapper mm-hmm. just going absolutely ham on this thing. It sounds it like is old alien. school. Oh, AP is alien. Yeah. Yeah. Sounds like old school. Sh- show yourself out. I, I'm so sorry. You're right, but Connor, you need to show yourself out here. <laughs> what do you mean? Is that freestyle alien. she put on the radio oh, that one time? Yeah. Just get out of here. Is this DJ B. Lou? <laughs> No, that shit was fucking trash. <laughs> sway, sway. Okay. okay. <laughs> Welcome back to that show that uh, you should not be watching, but you do for some odd reason, and we appreciate it. Uh, I think the reason is is because we get a chance to chat with people that are actually good at what they do. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, joining us now is one of those, a Super Bowl champion, a pro bowler, all pro, Iowa legend, ladies and gentlemen, Dallas Clark. Yeah. Oh boy, Dow. What's up, boys? How are you, pal? I'm great, man. How are you? Hey, not too shabby. You look fantastic. How's uh, how's Iowa? We farming? We chilling? What's going on out there? We're calving. Do you know what that means, Pat? Do you know what calving means? Well, it's spring, so obviously this is the birth time of year for, uh, you know, the cows mm-hmm. and things like that. That's what spring is. We got foxes coming onto our property every single day. It's probably the same. Your West Virginian education is coming through, man. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Yeah, uh, so we got rain in the forecast for the next five days, and and I got cows that mamas that are looking a little, and it's always always bad weather. It's always cold. It's always rainy. Not ideal to have a child. Yeah. Let alone a cow yeah. in, uh, in in this weather. So uh, well, you know, so yeah. So we're. Dallas, that's what we're doing. It's less less Dallas, stress. Dallas, less please, stress. please, please remember this though. Rain makes corn. Corn makes whiskey. Rain is a good thing, Dallas. Rain is a good thing. Rain is a good thing. All right, your hair is you sticking out hey, in the front. Hey, you, you know what? Out. Thank you. Totally changed my pres- I, I I have the wrong attitude. We need this rain. Yeah. Thank you for. Thanks, Pat, for <laughs> educating me on well, that. You or do, Luke Bryan. Well, I was about to say, you know, I saw a Luke Bryan concert before Luke Bryan was Luke Bryan. And I'll tell you what, he, he swiveled those hips. Mm-hmm. And then he talked about going out on the on the farm. I was like, I did not expect that. <laughs> yeah. I, I did not expect that out of you. But I got a lot of respect for that, man. Let's talk about you, Dallas. Right now, have you been paying attention? I know you got a lot going on over there, calving and harvest and everything like that in the 1800s or whatever. But like, Not not not, not harvest, but, but yeah, okay, you got to grow before you harvest. But anyway, well, that's another show. Oh, uh, we gotta be <laughs> hey, gotta be knee high by the Fourth of July now. <laughs> hey, gotta be knee high by the Fourth of July now. But have you been paying attention to this free agency right now, Dallas? Uh, you know, I, I I I've I've gotten some you know read some headlines. Uh, I know there's still um, the NFL's doing well. There's still a <laughs> lot of money getting thrown around. <laughs> you know, these players are going to be okay. Um, but yeah, it's, it's kind of wild. It's uh, I mean, I'm sure it just feeds your guys' week. Cause this is, this is a crazy time of the year for the NFL. Bring in the Brinks truck, please. You're talking about feeding. This is called Brinks week this week. Every time somebody gets Dude. signed, this is what happens. Go ahead and run. Yeah, it, dude. Yeah. Okay. So here's the funny. Okay. So I have a group of uh, old, uh, old, old teammates of ours, and and a small group, and um, and you know Trent Williams just signed his like just huge contract, right? And so a fellow offensive lineman chose to uh, share the headline, and 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 then with the throwing up emojis of uh, next to it, uh, with a lot of dollar bills. And I'm like, and I remind him, like, this has got to be what, like, the older players thought, like, when we were signing our contracts and we thought we were cool. And uh, and just blink of an eye, and now we're sitting in those shoes of, like, good Lord, like, guaranteed money is, like, what our contracts were worth. You yeah. know, it's just insane. It's just, you know, it just shows the growth of the game. 
Um, you know, kudos to the players and all that stuff uh, and, and, and all that. But, man, Olive is money just – it is the Brinks – I mean, we – we joked about that in the locker rooms, and I mean, it is. I mean, and 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 you and you celebrated your fellow teammates, and even you know opposing players, you know, getting those contracts. I, I mean, it's just it was kind of you know on, on a player level, like you, you applaud the you applaud those, and then you know, so that that was always a good thing because you know deep down in your head you're thinking, okay, when I'm up, maybe, you know, that just pushed the the needle up a little more. <laughs> the thought, Dallas, though, what you said about the guaranteed money being worth the entire contract, I, I think that is something that's becoming more and more relevant in the conversation piece because back in the day, it was reported it just signed for a hundred million dollars. It's like ten million of that's guaranteed. Ninety million is <laughs> if he cures cancer. Okay, yeah. if he if yeah. cures cancer, if he somehow. <laughs> if he jumps over the field goal upright after a touchdown, that'll be another million. There was a lot of that. Now I feel oh. like people are starting to learn a lot more about that. Those are kind of starting to disappear. But there's this new thing, Dallas, called voidable years. People are moving salary uh, contracts to signing bonuses, voidable years in the back end. They're making tricks up with these contracts and this money. It feels like anybody can make money happen if they really want to. Oh, well, I mean, you, you look at uh, um, Taysom Hill's uh, contract, and, and it, you know, apparently, and I, I haven't looked deep into it, but you know, I mean, from from the surface, it looks like my man just got a ton of money, right? Oh yeah. You know, but then you read into it, and I haven't, but it sounds like it really wasn't, you know, like a, as glorified as it was, and you know, agents, and all players, four you know, years, I, all four years are voidable. It says. <laughs> okay. Yes. Yes. Okay. So that's right. Is that true? Yeah, it says all four years are voidable. I don't even know what that means. Is that a contract? Did we even make an agreement? I don't know. I don't know what we did I mean, there. Did did they write it out in crayon? I mean, <laughs> I mean, what's uh? I mean, you uh, I mean yeah. what? Else? Yeah. I. Okay, so I mean, so so you know, so like things like that, you know. And here's the world we live in. Like, there's still bad agents. Um, there's still great agents. Um, I agree. And 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 there's great contracts, and there's. There's that smoke and mirror contract that on the paper looks good, but if you like fast forward life in, in three or five years and you look back and okay, how much did that player really get? You know, not good. Uh, you know, because the team cut them right before and they're supposed to, you know, that, that huge spike in the in the salary, you know. So so there are tricks of the trade, and that's you know, and that's the misconception, right? I mean, you know, long before these guaranteed monies have gone out of control, but before like everyone was like, oh my gosh. You signed a forty million. You you have forty million dollars. It's like no, no, no. no I no, did. No, no, I no. wish. That like, I, mean, I will get cut before before the team. Even, you know, I mean, the, the very small percentage of those players actually play those out, and and God bless them for doing it. But I mean, it's you know, there's so many tricks, and it, it, it you know that's the ugly part. You know, that's the the. You know, the dirty, you know, the dirty uh, conversations that 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 take place. But, Dallas, uh, but Dallas, man, Dallas, it, it's 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 changing. Your hair thing, it's doing it again. But the um, holy cow! Yeah, yeah. It's a, Thank I mean, you. No problem. I, you did it for. I, I mean, you know, there was a good forty-five seconds there where <laughs> yeah. it is it? straight up. There's, there's see, I, some... see, see. I'm just staring at you. Yeah, yeah. Well, like, I understand. My eyes are just uh, uh, drawn yeah. to you, I, but well, my hair is just not. I'm captivated. Not, uh, I am. Hey, captivated. You're captivated. Yeah, but it's for the brand. It's hey, for the brand. Hey, and, this and is I'm OG, local, by the way. Mm -hmm. For the brand. What's that local Iowa there? Yeah, that's that's the state of Iowa. That's right, baby. I see them calving down there, but Go the on. the. <laughs> That's a zoom in, you know, zoom out, high level conversation but, that we can have that nobody but, else can. But hold on, hold on, Dallas. Did you did you have numerous agents? Because that, that never gets talked about. Everybody always makes it sound like the player is making a bad decision when they decide to move on from the agent. I disagree. I think that there are some agents that are separators from other agents, and there used to be a protection clause in the NFLPA. I don't know if it's still there, where agents can't poach other clients or whatever. And it's like, well, there's not a lot of business conversation in the locker room. How do I know that I'm potentially being represented? by somebody that's terrible if I don't get a chance to chat with somebody else. I'm not sure if that's changed or not, but I feel like that's something that is like almost, you know, taboo to talk about. But there's good agents and there's shit agents. They're, they're, that's just how it is, Dude. you know? Dude, it's it's scary. And, and, and you know, I mean, look at where these kids are getting, you know, they're getting hounded as college students. I mean, they they, they know nothing. They, they know not. I mean, they know more now than we did. I mean, just social media yeah. and just everything and just kind of, you know, word gets out and, and reputation and things like that are a little bit better known, but still there's some snakes in the, in, in the pond. But, uh, 
but you know, these kids are getting, you know, I hate to use the word poached or but, uh, recruited and, and all that stuff. And, you know, think of what's being said then, right. You know, and, and, and what promises and, and, you know, thing, this is the one thing like, I love, like, you know, cause we had, we had, you know, we had a certain, you know, couple of agents uh, come to university of Iowa and at the time I came out, like we were legit. I mean, we, we had like, you know, some, some, some dudes. And, and so we were kind of, uh, had, a, you know, every team was at our pro day and all that stuff. And so agents were, were definitely, uh, knocking on our doors and, and no coach parents let a few agents come in and talk to us. And, you know, it's, it's just interesting how certain styles, uh, you know, but certain styles attract certain players. Uh, like for instance, one agent felt necessary to, you know, to, you know, take clients to Vegas and, and to do all these things. Oh, and it's like, he's trying to get it's me. like, dude, <laughs> he's not taking you to Vegas on his dime. Like he will get that money from you somehow, some way. I, I don't, don't fall, like, like you're going to make enough money. You can take your own self to Vegas yeah, <laughs> and yeah. pay for it and yeah. get what you want. You know? So it's just, it's just, it's just sad that, to see these players kind of get uh, kind of duped into, into, some some bad situations and and I'm not trying to dog all these agents. No, it's not all like of I said, them. It's not all of them. There's some yeah. there there are some really really good ones, but man, I tell you what, it, 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 there's some bad ones where the, all they see are dollar signs when they look at these athletes, and that's not the relationship that an athlete should have with their agent. I mean, it, it's 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 a partnership. It's a business, but man. It, it it should be more than that. It's a business, and any business goes whenever both sides are with each other, you know. And it's I now I've had numerous agents, and when you're a punter who is also trying to, you know, potentially build a network or become something uh, outside of football that hasn't really happened for the punting position before. Whenever I'd go talk with an agent or whatever, and I would, I, I understood the business. At this point, I'd already done like a stand-up tour. I'd already had my own show. I'd already had a merch business. I'd already done marketing. I'd already done all this. So I'm going to talk to these guys, and they're like, in football, this is what we're going to do. We're going to get you at the right spot, blah, blah, I'm like, okay, cool. We'll, we'll deal with that later, all right? And, yeah. and I have thoughts, too, about the football thing, but let's talk off the field. And then they start yeah. laying out their business, man. I'm like, oh, you don't have a clue what you're fucking talking about. And that guy reps like... <laughs> 20 people and I'm like oh my god like we need and do I tell everybody that the guy that you're working with no it's a very interesting thing right now it's real too. oh real. It, is, it, it is real and the money is real and that's what's drawing all these people and and like I said you know it's 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 a it's a business where you know just um just kind of more moral concepts and you know just kind of values uh can get easily skewed and 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 just kind of yeah. it's just ugly it just gets ugly I agree. and these poor athletes just you know and i hate to say that the athletes aren't you know totally blameless and things like that you know because you, you know because the athletes are probably barking in there you're like i deserve this i you know i should get this and this is what i want and you know, and they're they're the middleman, and they have to try to you know please that, and and then you know. Yeah, but also fine. Dallas, they got business with the person. They got to do business later. So is there a, who's set, who's speaking for who oh. there? Oh, oh. man, because I yeah. got relayed a message. Okay, I got relayed a message during my first negotiation. Okay, and the message was like, "Hey, I didn't draft you. There is no loyalty here, or whatever." And I said, "We'll send this message back, right?" So I I said I would like this message to get relayed back, and it was. I thought it was a pretty well laid out fuck you message. You know what I mean? Like, I, I thought it was pretty good. And I, I, so I asked immediately, I was like, did you, did you send my message back or whatever? And he was like, I did not do that or whatever. I was like, why not? He was like, we don't want to burn the bridge, blah, blah. I got franchise tag 20 minutes later or something like that. So it was like, <laughs> Come on. you know, there was like an entire situation. I'm like, I wish you would have said that though, because maybe, you know, me hitting the market, maybe we can come back. Jim Irsay, the whole business thing, but it's just a very, they got business ties. It's, Business is oh. a wild world. That's why you got to have calves and cows because those things, <laughs> you sell them at the fair and you're off and running. What do you got, Ty? Dallas, do you have they any... Won't, they won't stab you in the back. No, they won't. <laughs> they won't. Dallas, do you have any kind of relationship with any of the current Iowa tight ends that are uh, in the league right now? And w why do you think that so many guys from Iowa have been successful at tight end in the NFL over the last, like, 20, 25 years? We're just better than everyone. <laughs> um, <really. laughs> <laughs> uh, I mean, I, I mean, do you want me to a elaborate? Like, no, no, yeah, that's good, good enough answer. answer. Connor, yeah. what do you know? yeah. <laughs> Next question. Yeah. No, okay, so yeah, I mean, I, I, I formed, uh, I was able to um, work with uh, TJ 
and Noah Fant. Uh, I mean, that was just like the dynamic duo of all. I mean, never, never again will there be fir- two first tight end or first round tight ends on one team. I mean, that just is unheard of. I, you know what? I dare you, Alabama. I dare you to do that. <laughs> Come on, let's see, let's see you do that. But, um, uh, but you know. Um, uh, even when uh, Kittle George was coming out, um, you know, just had good conversations with him and his dad and just talking about what George needs to work on and things like that and have continued these relationships. And, and you know, obviously I'm always there for him. Like I told him, I'm like, I'm like, I'm a 916th wrench. Like if you need, you know, I, I can what? help you if you come to me, but, you know, but I can't, I'm not going to just be checking in like, Hey, you need to work on this, or hey, I saw this. You know, I'm not going to do that because you got. You're a what? People You're a nine sixteenth wrench. Yeah. Okay, is that what you guys? You guys just say that to each other out there in Iowa? If, like, it, yeah, because if you don't know that, like, pretty much every bolt. I mean, probably eighty percent of bolts are nine sixteenths, and so it's just kind of a, it's just a, it's a wrench that you always have to. No, have. I know that. I was just talking about other people. <laughs> Obviously, you don't need it because you, you'll call someone and, and they'll have it. That is true. <laughs> and by the way, if my cow was about to give birth, we would also yep. we'd be calling somebody and do that. It's raining. OK, well, is that a more is that more money then? I mean, how do we get this done, Connor? What do you have? Yeah, Dallas, the uh, Patriots added two top tier tight ends with Hunter Henry and John New Smith. How much does that benefit the offense to have not only one of one guy, but two of them? I think I think uh, the Patriots had a uh, a long hard look this year at themselves, uh, and 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 they had a few extra uh, weeks with that being in the playoffs, and which is unheard of, and just kind of really, you know, I, I know there's a lot of people out there rejoicing in that, you know, but obviously as a Patriot, if you're a Patriot fan, then you, you know you're you're swimming and trying to you know find land to to, to land on because yeah. right now. The, the sturdy ground that they stood on for so many years has finally started shaking, right? And w- when I see that, what I see is just, you know, Belichick kind of going back to their old roots, going back to yeah. what, you know, the Aaron Hernandez, Rob Gronkowski, you know, dynamic duo. You know, I think that's when they made their now hay. let's hope, um, you know, that. let's hope. Mm-hmm. You know. Well, yeah, exactly. You know, so <laughs> so that's, uh, you know, so they're, they're you know, I think everybody. they're going – back to, you know, where they were most dominant, where they're more balanced, where they're most effective is having kind of that two tight end, uh, being able to stay in that set and, uh, and, and really kind of keep defenses balanced, keep uh, and have them be able to do what they want to do and kind of call the shots uh, where before they just, you know, they're just trying to find a weapon, trying to find someone to put the offense on. And with you tight ends, there's a lot of, e- I don't want to say easy completions because you've made some great catches, but there's ways that the offense with play action, everything can set up those tight ends, which I assume they're going to do. I, I mean, it just feels like. Well, that. when you, when you have two uh, pass receiving, but also, I mean, these, these cats are unique. I mean, they're not just hundred percent pass receiving. I mean, both can block, yeah. uh, both are, you know, both are very, uh, um, uh, adversity, you know, uh, um, geez, uh, vers- versatile, geez, uh, help me, help me out there. Pat. Cows, cows. I was going to come. Bo- cows, cows, yeah, cows, cabin, cows, cabin. cows, cow, cow, yeah. uh, they're both <laughs> versatile where, you know, exactly what you want in that position is be able to not just be that typical Y blocker, but also, you know, not to be just that H guy kind of flexing them out and, and, and not really have to block any defensive ends or linebackers. So mm. they will be able to ha- do more with that and play off the play action f- pass that helps the running game. That just kind of, that's, that's the been the foundation of their offense for, for all the years that they've won the Super Bowl. Dallas, you're going to love this, I think. Okay. And okay. Yeah. Uh, are you, you're not in there yet. It's probably gonna take a little bit because there's a lot of guys from the team you're on, but going to be a member of the Colts ring of honor. Uh, I assume at some point, right. Are you there yet? No, I am. Yeah. What? Have you gotten in yet? No, Drew, there's a long list of way before me, pal. There, yeah, there's a I, long I, list. I, that I team you guys were on, that team you guys were on, there's a lot of guys. Probably that text message group you're in, if I had to guess. But anyway, I'm behind you. No, 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 no way. Uh, but Carson Wentz gave his first press conference today speaking as a quote, quarterback. And there's a couple quotes I think you would enjoy. I'm reading them now for the first time because they're coming in literally as we speak. Wentz says – this is this is live news. Like this is like yeah. now news. Yeah, it's a daily show in Dallas. This is what this happens. Is big, Come this on, is big time. Uh, I, I, Carson, I've never Wentz. been a part of like 
news that's happening now. Yeah, they, so, hey, I'll, I'll, Iowa, I'll though, they do it. say a couple days behind. Uh-huh. Now here we are. You FaceTime two, in. News, two days. Two, day, two now days. Now we're news on time, which is great. By the way, I, shout out to I'm everybody. Not, hey, by the way, my, my family won't be able to see this interview uh, until Saturday. Well, that's, <laughs> what I, that's what I was about to say. Shout out to everybody on Iowa. I hope you're having a happy Saturday. March Madness, we're right in the middle <laughs> yeah. of this thing. Go Hawks. Uh, go Hawks. Play tonight. Go Hawks. Number two, baby. Two seed. Let's go. Uh, we'll talk about that here in a second. But Wentz is saying, I'm a competitor and I want nothing but to win and I know that's the culture here I am not a perfect human being I'm going to make mistakes I've made some mistakes in the past but I won't be perfect I'm telling everyone that right now for his struggles last season great question a lot I would like to do different from last year so this is an interesting time because obviously the Colts were in on Matthew Stafford allegedly if any of the reports that are normally fully bullshit or true or not they were allegedly in there Carson Wentz with the Frank Reich tie-in everybody just assumed this was going to happen it seemed like it was maybe a little bit of a negotiation process he comes to be our quarterback with Frank Reich he has played he got in on Ursay's big boy by the way he came in on Ursay's big jet Dallas and I I have seen that plane, actually. Dallas, have you seen that plane? I have not. I have not. Uh, I saw it uh, when Peyton uh, sent the, the picture of him and his son going to the Super Bowl. Oh, no, that's not and... that plane. That's not that plane. That's not that plane. That's not that plane? Carson did not get that plane. <laughs> no, no. Carson did okay. not get that plane. Okay. I've been, I've been on this plane then. Yeah, this is the Pro Bowl plane I think you went on, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And and the getting drafted uh, in the first round. That's what happened. Oh, yeah. No round. big deal. You – Hey, Pat, Pat, get that plane. You, oh, okay. is there an Uber? Uh, uh, yeah. okay. oh. All right. Jeez. Okay. I did. I okay, had to get it. I, I actually drove myself. Uh, thank you. And <laughs> Carl, <laughs> yeah, that's funny. Okay. The, um, well, we love you, Pat. but Carson, thank you. Carson Wentz though. I mean, this is a, this is a massive shot by Chris Bauer and Frank Reich. If he's back to playing in his form, he could be the quarterback for the Colts for the next 10 years. If he stinks again, though, Frank and Chris are going to look, I think this is going to potentially look, because expectations from Ursay have always been Super Bowl. Now he's even more loud with it. I mean, that's his thing. I don't know how this plays out if he doesn't come back. They're just assuming he's going to. What are your thoughts on Carson Wentz? Well, obviously there has been, there there was a lot of film study. There's a lot of yeah. discussion uh, with Frank and Ballard and, and, and the powers of B. I mean, I think those guys don't make that move unless they feel very, very good with what they saw and, 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 you know, stirring up the reasons, kind of justifying the reasons why performance by Chris, uh, by, by, by Wentz and, 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 um, and by Carson, I think he, you know, I think it's easy to see that things weren't good over there. And so, you know, so he wasn't in a healthy spot. He wasn't healthy. You know, it just a lot of things uh, you, you could justify and I think, you know, I think them signing him put, you know, kind of obviously decided what they came up with. They came up with that, hey, if this guy has our offensive line, if he has our, our weapons, he has our defense, um, you know, we can win with the guy. And, and plus the relationship that Frank already has with him. I mean, it, it's it, – it, and also, the, let's go back to last year. I don't know what people were expecting from Philip Rivers, but that dude, I loved, it. I loved what he did for the Colts. I mean, I cannot believe Man, that, that guy came in <laughs> with the year that we had with COVID, all that stuff, you know, limited reps, limited, uh, you know, real time yeah. to come in and win, to take us to the super or to, to the pro- playoffs. Like it just was unbelievable. I mean, I, I, I just, you know, I, I know obviously we have higher goals and all that, but I mean, I, kudos to Philip Rivers, which coach no. that guy, mm-hmm. that guy yeah. crushed our so many dreams of oh. ours, like early, you know, so it's hard to like, hey. you know, it's awesome, you know, right? Him and him and <laughs> Cyphers got me drafted. Him and Cyphers actually were the reason. I, him, him and the punter got me drafted. Literally, the year before was that game where Cyphers had ten inside the ten or whatever, and it you guys you guys lost to. Uh, uh, San Diego at the time or whatever and Hunter Smith they were like not your fault but we got to do something it was like <laughs> well, that was the something that happened to come in there the, the Colt killer like he just was he just good lord we'd go out there and just like battles and just could not play it just always anyway let's not let's no, no, it's not on that. Yeah, happy time. You um, did great. You think Carson will do the same though? You think Carson will lead him to the playoffs get some wins here and then maybe uh, become full time here as a Colt well, I, I I like what you said before. I like that he could come into you know 
kind of come into his own. You know, I think he still has, and, and you know, the fact that he points out like I'm not perfect. I'm not, you know, I'm I'm just like I'm, I'm trying to figure out like where has he felt like he needs to be perfect? Like like <laughs> this game, you know. Like I, like I told you, field goal kickers are the only ones that can be perfect in this game, right? Like you can be three for three. Like everyone else, all the real athletes, we're never perfect. All right, that's the show. show. That's the show. Ladies that's and gentlemen, the show. that's the show. show. Hey, it was a great appearance by you. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Dallas Clark. Yeah, yeah. So, so I, I think he's going to you – know, <laughs> that's, that, that's the upside – Am I still on there? Or do, are we at commercial? No, no, no. Yeah. You're live. You're so good. Oh, you're so am I talking about? No. Am yeah. I talking to myself? Um, you know, I think that's the upside with Carson. I, I think he is young enough where, like, you can kind of, you know, you can kind of see, like, man, he could be the guy. He could be our guy. Like, he could get get he's back in that old form. Too. And, he's athletic. You know, let's go. He's athletic. He loves hunting. He, he loves it. I think he's going to love Indiana. I, I think it's a oh. real, it could be, but he could still be broken, Dallas. That's the, ladies and gentlemen, legend from Iowa in the middle of calving season. Dallas Gore. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. What? What were you shaking your head for? What did I get wrong? I might like, probably have two calves on the ground right now. Just go save them, Dad. <laughs> yeah. I'm more worried about you, Pat, well, and your show, and, and 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 your ratings. I mean, we got we got it's March. Like let, let's go. Well, we can talk about the Hawkeyes. Come well, on. the good thing about that is the calves will hear this two days from now and they'll understand yeah. True. that it was well worth it because you were up. Oh, oh, thank you, Dallas. You're hey, the best. Yeah, talk yeah, to you, yeah. ladies and gentlemen. As Dallas Clark gets back to tending his calves that are popping out of full mama cows. <laughs> we have some breaking news. Somebody got paid. Somebody got broken off. Mike Garofalo is reporting. Former Ravens center Mike Matt Skura is headed to the Dolphins on a one-year deal. His agent, David Cantor, says, all right, Dolphins, get in the game. Hey, Dolphins, get in the game. Here we go. Here we go. Huh? Big. Here we go. Hey. Hey, here, hey, we, go. here we go. Hey, here we go. Dolphins have been, have been big oh, in the unloading game. Unloading yeah, uh -huh. game. We don't need it. We don't want it. See you later. Get out of here. You were good, not good enough. This is what we want to do. <laughs> we potentially are now a piece of, and we have talked about this before, and we thought Brian Flores was potentially the debunker of this theory. Mm -hmm. With all that we know about Bill Belichick, okay, how out of mind is it to think that he sends Mangini to Cleveland to bury Cleveland. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. He sends Matt Patricia to Detroit to bury Detroit. Kill he him. sends Bill O'Brien to Houston to bury Houston. Shut it down. He sent Beeflo down to Miami. Now, they had a run, but it appears as if he's potentially a kind of a sleeping cell down mm -hmm. there. He's about to bury. Is that something that's happening, or will anybody have success once they get out? Josh McDaniels, Denver, see you later. Get mm -hmm. out of here. I'll go on a plane to Indy, delay the head coaching search, turn back around, I'm not doing it. I think this is still potentially all orchestrated by Bill, and that has to stink yeah. when you're in the division and he's doing it to you potentially. Gumpy, you don't deserve that, pal. I mean, if this guy does well, we'll just pay him and cut him. He'll end up on the Patriots next year playing against us while we pay him. It's brilliant. <laughs> love it. It's a good player. I mean, he's, he's been starting for the Ravens for the it's last three years. It's great. He's a good player, it. by the way. We need a is. center. I love it. But this Van Noy thing is so fucking stupid. Well, hey, there's a plan. You just don't understand it yet. That's right. Yeah. We'll talk about it in the next hour. The Dolphins still have maybe the only setup. Now, the Patriots have the money, I guess, and a couple starters they might be willing to unload. But... The Dolphins have the only draft capital setup, I think, that you can make a team bite and say, yeah, we can get better right now. A lot of picks. A lot of picks in this draft. Most of them came from Houston, who yeah. you potentially might be making a deal with for Deshaun, which that situation is growing and growing into something where we hope justice is served, obviously, completely. Uh, but that's an interesting thing going on down there. Hope everybody's okay. Or maybe even Russell Wilson. Oh! Hour two's on the other side. We'll answer some phone calls. one 888 mad dog 6 in about six Hi. minutes. This is Thursday, March 18th. Hi, how's it going? My name's Pat McAfee. Used to hold balls for Adam Vinatieri. Now I'm in his home state. College game day is absolutely electric. And Brookings... <laughs> game day has made the voyage to Brookings, South Dakota to experience a game with the best fans in college football. I unfortunately cannot attend because I have a game this Sunday, 
So I sent a man I trust to make my picks. A man who was my holder for almost a decade. Please be nice to him. Welcome this week's celebrity guest picker, Pat McAfee. Go big, go blue, go Jacks. Hosting Auburn. Yes, everybody saw this. The best fake putt in the world. What do you think, Pat? I absolutely loved it all the way up until execution time. That is not one we like to show in the brand headquarters and punting and kicking world. Uh oh, dance off. Oh, let's get weird. Oh. Yes. Oh. Duck that, huh? Bang! Right oh. on the top of the dome. That makes it a lot easier when you've got a dummy standing right in front of you like that. Running, running. He's. Oh! Hi, Daniel Russo! <laughs> wax on! Wax off! Knee to the Face. Yes. Serious. Go. Yes. Go. Go. Yes. He's being spit. With that 15, they celebrate by doing shotguns. And I'm going to be a fan of that. I'm going to the University of Virginia Catholic. That was great. Whoa. since 4 a.m. College game day comes to town, they lose their mind. The population of this state is about 800,000, and when the Jackrabbits take the field, they're alongside all 800,000 South Dakotans. The Dakota Bunker was in Fargo for far too long. Today, 5 o'clock local time, the Dakota Marker is back in beautiful Brooklyn, South Dakota. Not only are you incredibly intelligent and handsome, you're a man of your word. You picked North Dakota today, so I, I had know, to bury you. That's okay. But it's been nothing but incredible. The college game day crew is hospitable. In South Dakota State, I think we can all agree, they showed up here. Yeah. But I loved it. I've watched the show, obviously, forever. And yeah. it's on in every single one of our locker room. Yeah. So this is a big time deal for me, my family, my friends. All right. I'm back in the day here. Appreciate you, boys. It's from the training room at the Colts. AJ Watt tweeted. Text from every human that I've ever done television with, like since way back in the day. They're like, we knew this day would come. Quit managers, old teammates. I mean, you don't get to turn on Twitter often anymore. They make it damn near impossible. Go up onto a stage with a couple legends and talk some shit in front of the incredible South Dakota fans. Whew, what an awesome opportunity. What's the most beer you did in one night you think of one of those shows? Well, I never forget when we went to Japan one time. Uh, Dudley, Stacy Keebler. I mean, there were so many people out there. We, I think we went through 103 or 108. Now, between just for myself, you know, I'd always make sure to have about a 12 or 18 pack there. <laughs> and, you know, here's the thing when some people say, oh, shit, man, you got too much of that beer on, you don't even know how to drink beer. It's like, dude, fuck you. <laughs> you don't know what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to entertain 20,000 people in an arena. If I just go out there and sip it real properly, how fucking exciting is that? <laughs> So when you're out there on an empty belly and you're shotgunning beers and all that shit's going in, the, the half that was going in was for me. The half that was going on was for them. Nice. But I'm telling you, Pat, when you when you shotgun a bunch of beers like that and you're drinking about half of each beer, you got a pretty damn good buzz when you come out. <laughs> <laughs> and that's a sacrifice I was willing to make every single night. I would assume you were pretty fucked up, yeah. When did and, you start uh, you self cheersing? Know, when did you start self cheersing? Was that something you did in college? You're like, hey, hey, Steve, good for me, man. <laughs> when did that start? No, you know what? Uh, you know, I got to give credit to Sandman for starting that, but he was bashing him off his head, and, and I don't remember. And it wasn't because Sandman was doing it, so I don't want to say I copied him, but he was the first. 
So, and then my style was, because people always get us confused. They'll say, yeah, man, you used to bang them on your head. No, motherfucker, I was the guy that clacked them together. <laughs> it was just something we came up with. I don't know how the, the beers got introduced to the ring, but it became a thing, and we ran with it. Show. There will be no rules for our guests, for us, for the things we could talk about. Yes, Speaking his mind. I've never had a problem expressing my opinions or my thoughts or anything like that. While being relatable. I haven't had that manufactured, fake-ass celebrity that a lot of people have whenever they go on those big networks. I've had a chance to really build my crew, build my following, build my audience. And ridiculous. What am I supposed to do? So I'm supposed to look at something that I can definitely afford and say, nah. Nope. Is that what I'm supposed to do? The Pat McAfee Show starts in three, three two, two, one. one. Welcome back to that show. Hour two here on this Thursday, March 18th, 2021, years after zero. We'll begin immediately following this beat drop from Twine. Shot to Twine, that beat hits hard every single time. Day one and a half of the new league year. Teams are making moves. Players are getting cut. Players are getting signed. There's trades happening yesterday. The Raiders got back in the game instead of cutting players from earlier in the week, which was announced. They traded a couple players. The Cardinals are setting up their team to have some real success. I think everybody's excited if you're a part of the Bird Gang out there in the middle of the desert. The Patriots obviously making plays. The Dolphins, as of 10 minutes ago, just signed their center that they needed. Congrats to the Dolphins making a play. Who will be the quarterback? back down there will be Tua will be Jacoby Brissett or maybe will they be able to package together some of their picks we have a graphic that showcases all of the Miami Dolphins picks and when you think like they cut Kyle Van Noy and it didn't really save him that much money it was and he's now he's playing within the division on another team and you're paying him some money and everything like that at one year into a four-year deal it, that kind of looks a little you know, bleak or whatever. You could, th- you, you could, you could see how Dolphins fans potentially go, "Oh, we suck again." Okay, this is great. We're the fucking worst. Okay, this is awesome. I was having a moment there. We had Tua. We had some Fitz magic. We had a team building. We had a coach that was fiery. Almost fought a ref. Almost fought some players. Seems to be loved down there. We're a good team. And then all of a sudden, these decisions start being made, and you're like, "Oh, we stink." Gumpy has been the life embodiment for us Mm -hmm. as being a Dolphins fan. I'm not sure we would have paid as close of attention to the Dolphins uh, this offseason. No offense to the Dolphins. I'm just not sure we would have had any ties or interest in it. But Van Noy, friend of the show, Gumpy, diehard Dolphins fan, it's become a part of our, our life almost. And I think that's the only reason why we're probably the only people saying this. A lot of people are saying the Patriots are going to make a trade for a big-name quarterback, and maybe they'll be able to trade Hightower, Gilmore, Mm -hmm. and Connor, you said? Possibly Edelman. So then do you even have the Patriot way in the building even more anymore if you get rid of everybody? Are you going to have to reset an entire culture, or is Bill Belichick the culture? Well, we just brought back Kyle Van Noy, and we still got McCordy on the Oh, back. you're I right. Mean, okay, so on. it's still there. still yeah. lives. Don't worry about it. But that is a fascinating thing, plus some picks that Bill somehow always has that he could potentially trade and make a play for a big-time quarterback, whether it's Deshaun or Russell. I mean, whatever Ooh. it could be with Cam Newton, I guess, would be a backup in that case. That is what Patriots people are spinning, and they're thinking. And that's mostly because they're not 100% sold on Cam Newton. They won't say that out loud, but that is why it's happening. The Miami Dolphins. It doesn't feel like they're trying to do something that if you made this move, you would have to be trying to do, which is like win right now, because it doesn't seem like that's what they're doing. And that is not a knock on the Dolphins, but it does not seem like they're trying to win right now. Who knows what happened with Van Noy behind the scenes and everything else that was happening, but it doesn't feel like they're trying to win right now. And this might be a freezing cold take or not, but the picks that they have, they can go get somebody this year Mm -hmm. in the first round. They have the number three overall pick. Very, very valuable. The number 18 overall pick, the number 36 pick, very early in the second round, damn near an extension of the first round there, and the number 50 pick. They have four picks within the top 50. That is a lot of draft capital. That is an immense amount of draft capital. That is, hey, you can turn 
your team around right now. In those four picks, you can get two franchise guys out of that if you were to draft well. And by the way, with those four picks, you can also potentially move up in the draft to go get whatever or whoever you're looking to go get because of how impressive that draft capital is. Now, will the Miami Dolphins do that or will they themselves try to build a franchise from the draft and try to use these four picks to find two pillars that you hope to have for the next five, ten years? I guess that's TBD, but don't count out the Dolphins in a trade potentially. Now, it would go against what it seems like their motto is to do, which would be to build from within and draft and everything like that. Not win right now. Let's not worry about it right now. Let's go maybe two years down the road, maybe three years down the road. But they could do it, Gumpy. So I guess when you lay your head down at night, you have to at least have a little bit of thought of that, don't you? I mean, I'm still positive. Like the Van Noy thing we talked about, it's just it makes no sense either way, no matter what you're doing with the team. But if you're going to try and get Watson, you're going to try and get Wilson, then you have to sign weapons now. Because if you stick with Tua, they're going to get weapons in the draft. Sign Juju. Get Fuller. Oh, Juju's still out there, by the way. It was a good, let's wrap up the Dolphins conversation there and move to the Juju conversation, which I'm (laughs) pumped about. Do you think the Juju bees Uh thought the Juju would be first wide receiver off? Now, because Galladay has not signed, Juju has not signed, T.Y. has not signed. There's been a couple guys that weren't, I think, conversation for a lot of different buildings. I wonder if a lot of teams right now thought that those guys would be gone. And now they're reassessing because I guess the Jets and Juju have started talking. And now when Juju was potentially going to be a free agent or whatever, and there was alleged. Now, he said it wasn't true, but it was alleged by somebody else. Not us, but we did cover it, that he wanted to go to a bigger market. The immediate thought was the Jets because Sam Darnold's also Uh there, Mm -hmm. big city, they're trying to grow. Everybody thought that. It sounds like from the reports, and we don't know what reports are true, and after Trent Dilfer told us yesterday that we're probably being targeted by these false reports, that's really made me question everything I read on my Twitter (laughs) timeline. But the Jets allegedly are in – interested in Juju Smith-Schuster. I guess that conversation has happened. But as are the Steelers uh, in potentially bringing him back to Pittsburgh, which Ben Roethlisberger and Juju have both said would be cool, which leads me to my next point. Did you expect Juju to still be available at the time that we're currently at right now? And how would you feel if Juju went back to that blue collar? Yes. Tough time. Please. That he said he'll carry with him for the rest of his life at Tone Diggs, diehard Pittsburgh Steelers. So Juju isn't doesn't have the market that he thought he would. So that's we thought that's how you would do it. But Kenny Galladay also we have a debunker. The other ones are getting signed. Yeah, well you're right because Curtis uh, uh, Curtis Samuel Samuel just got Mm -hmm. signed. Uh, Kendrick Bourne got signed. Corey Davis got signed. A couple tight ends got signed. Aguilar. Uh, Aguilar got signed. Mm -hmm. By the way, which I don't think any of us would have imagined the comeback he would have after leaving Philadelphia. He leaves Philadelphia. Um, as somebody who had massive potential upside but seemed to have a couple games and situations where the ball would not remain in his hands once it touched him, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah. And that led to a death-defying news situation yeah. <laughs> where a local resident told the news of uh, describing a situation where babies were being tossed mm-hmm. out of a burning building. Mm-hmm. Uh, the local Philadelphia person, man, says... Uh, we were catching him, and then looks at the camera and goes, unlike Aguilar. <laughs> okay? Motion, the emotions in this guy fa- guy's face describing the entire thing. And then as he's talking about babies flying through the air and them catching them, he literally was like, and they're catching, they should be on the fucking Eagles. Unlike Aguilar. <laughs> yeah. And he gets right back to it. That became a thing in of itself oh, about... Yeah. Nelson Aguilar. And then he last year, who's he with the Raiders? No, yeah, Raiders. Yeah, Raiders. Yeah. He was with the Raiders. Very good. Turned around. Mm-hmm. I, I saw him on TV a few times. I'm like, hey, go, I was so happy for mm-hmm. Aguilar because mm-hmm. the internet, the internet, obviously, Ooh. after something yeah. like that comes out, it, man. it is, yeah. it's a tough thing so that happens. Down. And he bounced back and he got himself some money. Mm-hmm. But I don't think any of us would have expected Aguilar after that video came out and after the situations in Philadelphia would now be a pretty highly sought after wide receiver free agent that got signed the first day to a uh, six, no, I'm sorry, eight figure deal or whatever. I mean, good for Aguilar, but there's some core, there's some wide receivers out there that haven't been signed. So the wide receiver market, I think has been an interesting one, not just Juju's market, Mm -hmm. but with that being said, 
Why is Kenny Galladay only talking to these bum ass teams? Yeah. Do you think? Can we not get Galladay on a good team? When what are we doing around? Do you here? think he's potentially just maybe going to do a one year deal with one of those teams? Because like with Juju Ju- or Galladay, Galladay. Well, Juju too, though, because if he goes back to the Steelers, he's definitely going to have to take less money than I assume some team would pay him yeah. for one year, and then he can you know test it again. I, I do wonder if Galladay, Juju. And I would assume T.Y. probably had this mindset Fuller. very early. Fuller. Will Fuller. A-B uh, Antonio Brown is still a free agent, which we haven't talked about. Also, Le'Veon Bell. Oh, <laughs> oh look out. Never really ever talked well. about Alshon Jeffries. I did not yeah. know that. But I, w- I would assume at this point all these guys are going to take a one-year deal. Uh, now, I thought a lot more people were going to be taking one-year deals, and that was way before I thought that or knew that the Patriots were just going to be writing checks for everybody. Mm-hmm. But it feels like if you're Galladay – there's not a real free agency right now. There's only a few teams that are spending money. We have come to the conclusion in, uh, conclusion in this office, though, that everybody could spend money if they wanted to. With all the the tricks that everybody's yeah. doing about uh, salaries to signing bonuses uh-huh. and extensions with voidable years, everybody could be spending money. I, I just I don't know if that is a healthy thought for us to have. Because I would assume certain situations have to line up, but it feels like with the way people have been working this magic in these smoke and mirrors with these contracts and moving numbers that just to city or to years that don't even matter, it feels like everybody could be spending money. I don't think any of us expected for there to be $245 million in guarantees or whatever going into this open year or going into this uh, season with no open stadiums last year. It just, it feels like. There are some people who are benefiting greatly from this. And if you're one of those wide receivers, I think the way you benefit greatly from this is you do a one-year deal, and then whenever everybody catches on to whatever New England did and New Orleans did and Kansas City did, this year there's going to be a lot of salary cap people that are going to try to dissect what happened this past offseason. There's going to be a lot more teams doing a lot of bullshit deals like this. I think free agency – Next year and going forward, especially if they're saying the salary cap is going to be $250 million in five years, I think there's going to be some contracts available next year that are going to be mind-blowing as well. Not that these haven't, but Galladay, Juju, maybe any of these guys. Like, hey, one year from now, imagine what it's potentially going to be. If you're Juju and you're going to do a one-year deal to then hit the market again next year, wouldn't you want to do it with the Steelers where you're familiar with the quarterback, you're familiar with the offense, you're familiar with the organization, and not go to a team like the Jets where you have no idea who the quarterback's going to be and stuff like that? Well, and do you think – if I'm doing a one-year deal, okay, am I, am I putting myself into Juju? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay, man, I got it. Okay. Holy shit, it's yeah, Juju. Yeah, I got it, dude. Come on, bro. Come on, come on. Pop, pop, pop. Ah! Yeah. <laughs> Working at LA Fitness. Was that – Working out at LA Fitness. That's for his fans. It's community. Mm-hmm. Have a little bit of respect. Good guy. He wants to work out with the people. But I'm Juju. I want to go somewhere where I'm going to win, dude. I don't give a damn about if I know the offense or I want to go where I want to win. Now, if the Jets are going to offer you some big money or whatever, I think you go there. But if I'm doing a one year deal, I want to win. I want to get like a ring, or attempted a ring, playoff bonuses, <laughs> primetime games. And then there will be enough money to go around. Uh, if you win, there's enough money to go around. I would want to go somewhere I'd want to win. Now, are we saying the Jets have no chance of winning? I mean, maybe, maybe, <laughs> maybe. But, you know, who knows? They might get hot. Don't let them get hot. Yeah. And, I, and I don't know if they got Frank Gore still on the team, but if Frank Gore's still there, that song bitch won't let them lose every single game. Mm-hmm. So that is, that is something that has to happen over there. So I just think if you're Juju, you want to go somewhere you want to win. But all these other guys that signed these multi-year deals, I, I never would have expected that. I honestly wouldn't. And if you're those guys, congrats to them. And I assume there were some guys that were potentially thinking they were going to do a one-year deal, and then they got offered a big deal, and they're like, well, wait a minute. I did not know this was going to be mm-hmm. possible. This has been a weird market, though. And with all these Fugazi things popping off with these contracts, I think it's only going to get weirder as, the, as everybody else catches up. Like Mike Greenberg – Host to get up. Great mm-hmm. show. Okay. Great show. Shout Great out. Show. Shout out Green. Not the salary cap guy. No, yeah. Mike Greenberg down in Tampa Bay, the uh-huh. Buccaneers, he's a sal- uh, salary cap guy. Mm-hmm. I assume there's going to be case studies by other salary cap people about what they're doing. Kansas City, what they're doing. Mm-hmm. New England, what they're doing. I mean, there's just there's going to be a lot of this going on with these. New Orleans, I assume. They're, they're, there's going to be a lot of studying of this by every other salary cap person. They're going to be like, hey, I think we can get in the game. Yeah, none of this means shit. Yeah. Yeah, there's no dead cap yet. Why is that? Well, we kicked it to 15 years down the road yeah. or whatever, and then guess what we're going to do in 15 years? 
We're going to send that. We're going to send that bitch another two decades. It, it's going to catch up to us sometime. Okay, at some point it's going to catch up to us. But we're just going to go ahead and we're just going to kick that thing right down the road. Let's just continue to do that. It's like John U. Smith's contract. The first guy the Patriots signed, he got fifteen million dollars in signing bonus, and he's only costing a million dollars this upcoming year. So that stuff is wild to me. I think Judon was the biggest cap hit. It's only $6.3 million. It's so low. But for a guy like Juju or Galladay, wouldn't, like, the Packers be a perfect place? Like, you get to play with oh, yeah. Rodgers. You're a number yes. two because Adams is over there. Like, yes. you would thrive in that environment, probably have your best year, and then get broken up. And I don't, I don't know how to say this without, you know, sounding ridiculous. Galladay could go to the Chiefs still, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And that's, that's an offense where – there's enough to go around. Right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Now I'm not saying Galladay at Green Bay would not, you know, tickle my fancy. Right. <laughs> yeah. I'm saying, listen, give Aaron another. Not saying anything about the weapons they currently have. It is always nice to have more. That is mm-hmm. just how it mm-hmm. operates. Especially if you got a guy that can sling that thing. But yeah, if I'm one of those guys, Juju. By the way, Juju in Indianapolis would be awesome. Oh yeah. I mean, we'd have to get a a true number one out there, which, by the way, Galladay and Juju in Indianapolis would be awesome. I mean, whatever you got to do. Uh, there, I don't think Chris Ballard will do it because, I mean, what is he doing? <laughs> oh, man. Listen. I mean, you saw it in Tampa Bay this year. You can never have enough weapons. Guys no. get hurt. Guys get hurt. You got another guy. Mm-hmm. Come on in. And, by the way, guy gets tired. You got another guy. A guy takes a shot to the ribs, and he may be <gasps> having one of those moments that people mm-hmm. have. You got another guy. I mean, it's just – that. This all, this all started with Veach, that that son of a bitch in Kansas yeah. City. Yeah. They were able to sign people to these deals and brought in this team. Now, I guess L.A. did it a couple years ago, but they did not figure out the salary cap. They did, they did not figure out how to bring everybody in and continue to do it long term. The Kansas City Chiefs, I believe, in our history will go down as the team that brought a lot of people in, somehow paid everybody and kept it together. Now, the Buccaneers are doing the same thing right now. So Greenberg, I think, down there, and Light and Marion's deserve some credit. Uh, but I think Veach and Reed were the ones that saw what the Rams did. Like, okay, everybody says you can't bring in all this all this talent or have this talent around if you pay your quarterback. And I think Veach was like, well, how do we, how do we go against that? And we go, oh, we just do a decade-long contract. And then we just pay him $500 million over 10 years, and we just push that. We just push that back and easy. just keep pushing that back. That's what we do. That's an easy deal. We just got to get our quarterback to do it. Hey, do you want a half a billion dollars at least? Yeah? Okay, good. And we'll renegotiate whatever, dude. Just just know that we are going to pay you $500 million at some point. And deal. Okay, you fucking got it. Well, I mean, we just oh, oh, no! No! Please, no! Oh, yes! no! Oh. We're talking about... People figuring out the salary cap, being able to sign who, whoever, whenever, renegotiate contracts, move salary caps into signing bonuses so then there's no hit on the cap and Massacre Week still is happening. Oh. What? Where? Who? Ian Rapport is reporting oh. that the Texans are releasing veteran tight end Darren Fells, source said, after 11 touchdowns in the last two seasons. Okay, so the oh. Texans are releasing veteran tight end Darren Fells. Sorry to hear it, Darren. You had a hell of a run. Good. Congratulations. Hell of a run, Darren, thus far. Hey, baby, Darren. Hey, Darren wanted to play down there, too, didn't he? Yeah. Yeah. I didn't hear one time Mr. Fells say, this place stinks. Nope. He wanted to play there. Like, get him out of here. Now, would we have known Darren Fells was potentially already a free agent? Maybe. Maybe we would have thought that. Maybe. We're not 100% sure. But Darren Fells, we would assume his contract is salaries between $2 million and $12 million. Uh... He is released from the Texans, and I would assume a massive sigh of relief has been um, breathed. Uh, oh, yeah. yeah. A massive sigh of relief has been breathed by Darren Phelps. <laughs> mm-hmm. Is that a sentence? I think so. I don't think so, but... Because <laughs> a mean, sigh of relief is a breath, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. He breathes a sigh of relief. Yeah, but if Expelled, you... Expelled, perhaps? Oh, wow. Did not expect you to come in with a big word. Thought it was our Harvard guy, but I appreciate you coming in there. Well, it almost happened to me a couple times. This you know? morning, a sigh of relief was expelled by Darren <laughs> Fells when he found out he was no longer a part of the Houston Texans dumpster fire they currently have cooking down there in the fourth largest city in America, really? Houston. Yeah, it's crazy what's going on down there. Jack Easterby's still doing his thing. Cal McNair still down there. Coach David Cauley said, what would I sign up for yeah. here? And Nick Cesario from New England could potentially be one of those sleeper cells that we talked about with Belichick in the past. Mangini. 
Patricia, McDaniels, um, uh, Brian Flores, uh, maybe Bill O'Brien, Nick Cesario, everybody that potentially leaves Pioli when he was at Kansas City. How many games did they win? Easterby. Easterby is from New England. <laughs> Whenever people leave New England to go to other places, and they just take their shovels and they just try to bury the place as quick as possible. It's unbelievable. Is that something that is happening by coincidence and they don't have – uh, you know, Big Bill telling them what to do every single day? Probably. But we can't put past the fact that maybe Ernie and Bill are sending some of their troops out elsewhere and taking down other places. And, you know, if the Texans are looking for a tight end, the Patriots had two unbelievable rookie tight ends last year that could be packaged in a possible Watson deal. Yeah, you, you truly <laughs> believe. Still do. Yeah. Like, right now. Right now. You walk into that bathroom, which, by the way, shout out you guys. You know, getting like, um, uh, what's that? A hand sanitizer, hand sanitizer in yeah. there and a big jug mm -hmm. and Some soap, soap yeah. and everything like that. I have a bathroom, um, which I use in my office or whatever. It was one of the only things I needed because I sweat a lot. So I had to, you know, had to have a place where I could rinse off, take, and I shit a lot. So I just wanted one of those. And the boys have, you know, there's there's two bathrooms out here. Mm -hmm. They're very large. I think they're averagely nice, right? I think they're yeah. averagely oh, nice. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Great. I'll go in there once. I don't know, a month or so, I'll end up just running in there because it's pretty close. I went in there, what, a week and a half ago. You guys, there was no soap in there. There was no no, no paper towels Which or one? anything. Well, see, that's the men's room. The poop bathroom or the... Yeah, see, that's... Yeah, yeah, yeah. but you can you can use the glass cleaner. That's right there. I mean, yeah, that washes your hands, too. <laughs> that, by the way, that is what I was told. And I was like, you savages out here. Mm -hmm. So you guys went and bought the cartoon-sized hand sanitizer. Uh -huh. That might have been the biggest thing. We have these... Gaming chairs out here that came in big boxes mm -hmm. and our delivery people hated it. I would assume this hand sanitizer that you guys have came in a box that was similar size there. I'm really impressed by how you, you guys. This barrel comes in, yeah. you refill it, like you refill it and everything. Mm -hmm. It's pretty insane. Oh, really? Yeah. And wheel in an oil drum full yeah. of it. Yeah. yeah. Fuck it. <laughs> That's awesome. I thought so. I'm not 100% sure where I was headed with that, but you guys really made some changes. Pat's rookie tight ends. <laughs> yeah, they're just going somewhere. Let's go to some phones here. Let's go to Nick in San Diego. What's going on, Nick? Hey, what's up, Pat and boys? You guys are the best show out there. Like, I watch you over ESPN or anything on Fox Sports. Well, I'd hope so. We're very different than that show. If you're going to watch our show, I assume you would not watch those shows uh, that are on at the same exact time as us. But I will say a lot of good shit popping off on all those networks. We appreciate them. But there's also a lot of shit there, too. What do you want to talk about, Nick? Uh, I was saying as the NFL draft is approaching, have you guys checked out Chris Sims' uh, QB rankings? And uh, he has Zach Wilson over Trevor Lawrence. I love and that. He has him as the best QB in the draft. Nice. And I believe, Dave, thank you for your call, Nick. And I believe David Pollock actually said that Zach Wilson's comparables are Aaron Rodgers or whatever. That's and, right. Which is interesting because Zach Wilson did talk about Aaron Rodgers' swag this past season. Mm -hmm. So I would assume he is a fan of Aaron Rodgers. And Aaron actually said he likes the guy. He thinks mm -hmm. he's a good player. But he went on this entire speech about how swag is your inner essence. And it was a, it was very deep and yeah, profound. Oh yeah. But it led to. So Aaron and Zach, I believe, know of each other, I, I would assume. And him being compared to Aaron Rodgers is obviously very interesting. Uh, because David Pollock was an incredible football player. I think anytime you do that, it's very – because they said Mac Jones – Tom Brady. A little bit of yeah. Tom Brady in him. I'm like, oh, come on. Like, what the fuck does that mean? Like, can we not can, can we not do that? Like, his comparable – greatest player of all time, okay? His comparable – most talented ball thrower of all time. Like, it, there has to be a different way to do things. I understand comps is the business. Listen, I go on Zillow every goddamn day, okay? Mm -hmm. I understand comps are where the world lives. But whenever you say – like, hey, this person's this person or this person's that person. It immediately goes like, what? So when they run, they look similar? What? Because the thing that makes Aaron Rodgers Aaron Rodgers is he has this ability to flip a switch and become the greatest athlete on earth. And he can potentially, uh, in a very positive way, remember things that are said about him and everything like that. Are you saying this guy, have you talked to him? Do you get the sense that this guy is maybe the most competitive human to ever exist? Because that is what makes... Tom, Tom, it's not his, I mean, he can throw the ball great, okay, mm -hmm. he, he can do all these things, his body's incredible, but that's what makes Aaron Aaron. It, I, I don't know if, I guess the physical comparisons can be made or whatever, by the way they throw or whatever, but the reason why they are Aaron Rodgers and Tom Brady is from in between their ears, it's not because of what their body does. So I just, I always find that a very interesting thing, and Sims, by the way, I guess he has had success in his 
uh, draft evaluations of the mm -hmm. past and yeah. other things like that. But, man, it's got to be hard to judge who's going to make it in the NFL and who's not because it's not about the physical thing. A lot of people can throw the ball. A lot of people can run. It's all mental. I don't know how you – I don't know how you kind of compare that. Well, I love that the human being that compared Mac Jones and Tom Brady was Tua, and this came after all of Tua's teammates were saying that yeah, dude, Mac was better than Tua. Yeah. So Tua's so, like, well, he's basically Tom Brady. How can I be better than that? Well, joining us now is a man who's diehard Dolphin fan, this guy. Yeah, huge. I wonder if it's still happening. Host of the Man to Man podcast and also a man celebrating his birthday today. Wow. wow. Ladies and gentlemen, Darius Butler. Yeah. Diehard Dolphins fan. Diehard. I like that. Hey, happy birthday, Darius. We uh, appreciate you spending some time here. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Appreciate, that. appreciate that, fellas. Um, you're taking I don't wanna I don't wanna be the one that uh, you know does the whole aging thing, but you're taking uh, you're taking another trip around the sun here. What did we learn last trip around the sun that we're gonna carry into this particular year, Darius? So happy birthday. Birthdays are always a great day for reflection, Darius. What are we taking into the next trip around the big hot fire in the sky? Yeah, man. So last year, actually, the whole world shut down oh, right yeah. before my birthday. Like literally, I had a nice party planned, nice little function and everything shut down. So I was like, that was the world telling me to sit down, reflect, oh, see what's important, nice. who's important. I had to shut down the rest of you guys, too. But I learned a lot, man. I think we all did this last year, man. Um, but it's serious. It's just family, man. Just the people that are important to you. Obviously, um, experienced some great, great, cool things. Went on WWE. I was a part of the Rookie of the Year. Hey, the, come on, man. Let's I mean, go! Like that. So, uh, just a lot of different. Started the podcast. Got a lot of new things going on. So, um, last year was actually pretty good to me, man. I'm uh, been, been very fortunate. Well, we're thankful that you joined our show. I'm thankful you had my back. Congrats on winning Rookie of the Year last yeah, year. Yeah, baby, dude. You deserved it. You earned it. Okay, <laughs> let's get into some football stuff here, Darius. Uh, the Dolphins look like they they are uh, potentially going backwards, which is a shame for you. But let's talk about some other teams that are making some real moves, okay? The New England Patriots, the team that drafted you, Bill Belichick, just dishing out cash. I don't think he's done yet. Do you think there's a chance he's in play for a big trade? There's some Patriot fans that believe he's potentially going to go get Deshaun or maybe even Russell. What do you think you see out of Bill? And did this take you by surprise as it did everybody else as somebody that played for New England at the very beginning of your career? Yeah, I, I don't see him going for a big trade, especially not with Deshaun. I don't think Stop. I don't think Nick Nick, Nick, Nick lets Deshaun go to New England. Nowhere in hell. Um, I don't see Russ leaving Seattle either. Sorry. Um, you know, Cam, I'm I'm you know what? I'm I'm still bullish on Cam, man. I think Cam another year removed away from the injury. Uh, another uh, a real all season now with Josh McDaniels and then actually having some weapons. You got your defense coming back as well with some new pieces on that team. I'm excited for this Patriot teams, man. I think I think I think they're back, man. I think they're back. They just that quick. Hold on. You, now, there's conversations that Stephon Gilmore has been on the trading block. He has one year left on his contract. They're not going to pay him what he's going to command in free agency after this year. That's allegedly why he's potentially going to get traded. Now, Hightower, mm -hmm. right? Hightower is the last one remaining of the opt-outs, basically, after Patrick Trung retires Tired, and yeah. Cannon gets traded out there. They bring in Kyle Van Noy. How, do you, you think with the moves that they made, in the existing team with Cam Noon, you think the Patriots all the way back, huh? Yeah, you're 100 percent in. I, I would say I would say the Patriots right now are a contender in my book. Um, you Let's got go. you got the Chiefs, and after the Chiefs, I mean, it's a conversation with the Bills, the the Patriots. In my opinion, because of, I mean, the Bills don't put any fear in anybody in, in that locker room's heart. They had a good year last year. Um, it's not like Cam is like some young guy that he's trying to figure out how to play, play football. He's won an MVP. He's appeared in the Super Bowl. He got a lot of talented guys that are used to winning, getting Kyle Van Noy back in the system that he's comfortable with. Um, he's back hungry again, I'm sure. Um, you got you signed a Green Goblin. You got Judah. You brought in your two tight ends. You know you know how they do with the tight end sets. I mean, everything's kind of kind of coming together for the uh, the Big Bad Empire again. It should be uh, – I mean, I, I guarantee you coaches and GMs around the league it stinks. 
shitting bricks right now. Yeah, it stinks. Right. I mean, you're watching this guy who's the most old school guy of all time <laughs> just completely say the old school model that you guys are all doing is fucking, it's done. Okay, COVID <laughs> has happened. We can just buy, bring in whatever we want to do. We can flux with the salary cap however we want. Voidable years, salary cap, uh, signing bonuses. We can just make this whole thing a bunch of bullshit. I love what they're doing. There's a player, though, that I would like to get your opinion on who I think – you know, you will be able to speak about better than most. You played corner in the league, then you moved to safety, you played nickel as well. You basically played everywhere in the back end. That's why the Man to Man podcast with you and Antoine Bethay is awesome because you guys have so much so much experience from a position that doesn't really get talked about that much, and that's a secondary. Yep. Um, Patrick Peterson just signed a deal with the Vikings for $10 million a year. Now, for one year, for $10 million. It was alleged, I would assume it was his people reporting to the sources, that people are looking at him still to be a man-to-man -man corner, this whole thing. Do you think, and I watched Patrick Peterson play a lot last year because I was a big Cardinals fan. I bet on them a lot because I thought Kyler was just electrifying and he could get going. There were some times where Patrick Peterson last year <laughs> was not Patrick Peterson, okay? And yeah. there were was, there was some times, though, where Patrick Peterson was still Patrick Peterson, like one of the greatest athletes to ever play the game. Returner, wide receiver, corner, you know, he did everything. But do you see this being a corner deal, man-to-man, -man, or do you think he moves to safety? Do you think they're What do you think they're going to do with him in Minnesota? Because the Vikings fans are excited for him. I think they should be. But if he's man-to-man -man still, I think if it's anything like last year, there's a chance something could happen. Yeah, he, he he's he's brought there to be a corner. I don't see. I know uh, he's a big corner, uh, but I don't see his game translating to a guy um, that plays safety. I, I personally don't see it. Um, you, I kind of saw it with C. Wood. You saw it with other guys, but I don't see uh, Pat P. kind of going down that line. He's a man-to-man -man guy on a one-year deal. Um, obviously, he's made a ton of money over his career. You know, he was eight for eight out of the gate for Pro Bowls. He's not that same guy anymore. Uh, but he's he's there to show those young guys. I got a lot of he drafted two young corners, I believe, last year who, who kind of struggled, which you know young corners will. So he's coming there to be CB one, in my opinion. You got Gladney, um, who's a, who's a good player coming out of TCU, and I think they got the kid out of uh, Mississippi State as well. I can't think of his name, but uh, two good young corners. You got you, you know a vet to come in and play that position. Still got Harrison Smith at safety, playing at a very high level. You got on uh, the other safety that's a free agent. So um yeah, he's coming there to be a piece for that defense. He listen. I have the utmost respect for Patrick Peterson. We changed our entire punting style because he was returning punts. <laughs> like, I have a lot of, but last year it felt like the potential islandness of Patrick Peterson was going to change. Like, as you get older, is there a chance that you just have to, like, is there a conversation you have to have where you're like, okay, I can't play the exact same that I played maybe two, three years ago. Because corner, you have to be the greatest athlete on the field. You, you're reacting yeah. to the other greatest athletes on earth. They already know what they're doing. They, they, it's set up for you to fail. You just have to react and read and everything like that. And as you get older, I think there's a chance that that could change, right? Am I wrong in thinking that? And what oh, do you no, think it, he'll do to, to kind of maybe adjust that? Because he is great, one of the greatest athletes we've ever seen. Yeah, it definitely changes. Like you say, you can't expect guys to do what what pat p has done um you know forever and he's done it for a decade he was a guy who traveled with number ones you know he went you know right left in the slot and it wasn't a lot of guys doing that um you know revis would do it here and there but it wasn't a lot of guys doing what pat p did for a long time but it does uh come a point in your career where you know you can't be that guy anymore you have to have that conversation with yourself first and foremost and then obviously the, the coaches and the schemes and things like that um have to has to fit as well but i think um you know Pat P is still a very good corner. I mean, he got a one-year deal for $10 million. You know, quarterbacks, yeah. starting quarterbacks now are getting $10 million, yeah. um, to play with this salary cap. So he's getting good money, so they still expect a lot out of him. I still expect Pat P to have a good year, but I definitely don't expect, you know, the P2 of, you know, year four, year five. Well, and by the way, you can't just like yeah. – there's, there's zero way to do that. I, I think I – watching him, you know, just all the way for, since LSU, I mean, he was just – he was awesome. He never gets <laughs> talked about, by the way. He, P2, Patrick, he yeah. never gets talked about, right? In the, in the whole conversation, I think because he just does his work, does his thing. In last yep. year, I think a couple of the games I watched, I was like, that's not. That's not. Oh, it is. <laughs> okay, that, 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 that <laughs> is. I didn't expect that because, I mean, I'm excited to see what he does in Minnesota. And by the way, that's a very defensive-minded place. So it's yep. not like they're, you know, just throwing darts at like, oh, I hope he's still good. It's mm -hmm. like, no, they, they feel he's going to be a stud. I hope so because – 
He was awesome to watch play. What do you got, Connor? Yeah, Deba, now that you have broken down Sam Darnold, can you please tell us, does he, as offensive coaches say, stink, bro, <laughs> or is he kind of good? Yeah, we need to hear this, by the way, because we feel there's a chance that there's an NFL offensive assistant out there who potentially watches this show <laughs> and also listen to what you said. He stinks, bro. <laughs> you did hey, a deep they, dive. They're, they're dialed in. They're, they're dialed in. Trust me, they're definitely dialed into the show. They're okay, definitely goodness. listening. But um, he stinks. He's bro. he has talent. As as of right now, Sam Darnold stinks. He stinks. He's one of those guys who needs everything around him to be pretty good, damn near great. Which you know, it doesn't make me feel great when you're talking about the quarterback position. Usually, we play with a guy like Andrew Luck, for instance. Like you drop Andrew Luck on any team, he's gonna make everybody on that team better. So um, I wouldn't put Sam Darnold in that bucket. A lot of guys are in that bucket. He can go to a system. Like I said, everything kind of has to be in place around him. Um, he definitely has the talent. And you see, you watch the film, and he makes some plays where it's like, wow, I can see why he's the number three overall pick. But then he makes too many plays that are drive killers. You know, as a quarterback, you want to end drives with kicks, extra point. Uh, field goals, a punt. You don't want, and, and Sam Darnold has way too many drives, a terrible position to fill where he turns the ball over. Um, so he has to limit those to just learn. I don't see that learning curve uh, really taking place with Sam Darnold. So you're saying the consistency level, it's exciting, there's chances, but then there's yeah. too many bonehead decisions. Now, the thought, though, about the dummy decisions, the stooge decisions, everybody says is, well, he feels as if he's the only player on the team. He feels as if blah, blah, blah. He feels, uh, uh, you don't buy nah. it. That's bullshit. Nah, because, I, I mean, I watch the film. I understand a lot. And on the film, if you watch it, most of the plays that I broke down, uh, most of the plays that I went over, obviously I'm not going over every play, but most of the plays were from a clean pocket. Uh, a lot of the plays, there were good plays called. There were guys open. If you watch, like, the Dolphins game, for instance, there were they were kind of like a flavor of the week team where they ran, you know, third down, they were running similar concepts. And they ran the same concept three times in a row. The same guy was open. Three times in a row for a touchdown. He hit him the first time for a big game. wasn't a touchdown. The second, the last two times, he didn't even throw in the ball. So just things like uh, that where quarterbacks usually go see that surface and they say, oh, this happened. Okay, the next time Peyton sees it, he's going to hit that guy. You just don't see that with, uh, with Darnold. Well, you know, also, though, see also – the guy <laughs> who's potentially telling him how to break down defenses was Adam Gase. Did, ah. did, did you see Adam Gase in the film at all? Did you see any Adam Gase in there? And is Adam Gase getting too hard of a rap because the thought is that you just said a guy was open three times in a row. Is Adam Gase's offense potentially manageable and Tannehill and Darnold were just terrible in it? You know, Adam Gase deserves uh, everything that he got. He, okay, he, good. Not, we thought he, so, he, too, he, by the way. Yeah, yeah, he, yeah. He's not great. He stinks, too. <laughs> but, uh, you know, he's one of those guys who can look good when you're coaching a Peyton Manning. But um, I think the thing with Gates was more so about his management of the actual men and the, the personalities yeah. and the people in the building, more so than the X and O's. The X and O's, I mean, you're all good coaches. You got to have players that are going to buy into you and what you're selling, and uh, I don't think Gates did a good job of that. That's such a big part of coaching, too. It, it, and it, you can only really – it's hard for me to – now, listen, that guy that did that opening press conference in Philadelphia who came from the Colts, what is his name, Sirianni? Sirianni. Mm -hmm. He goes, less thinky, less thinky, more athlete <laughs> Dewey or whatever. And they're like, oh, listen, it was a bad press conference, that, that whole thing. I'm like, I understand it's a bad press conference, but that's also – the first image that every player on that team has of that coach. And we, you, can't, you can't put a number or a stat on a team buying in. Like you cannot, you can't put a stat on that. And if that person has that press conference, my immediate thought is, oh, this is probably going to be a bad day-to-day, -day, probably bad day-to-day -day speaking, which, by the way, massive part of the coaching thing is speaking. So, I mean, he'll yeah. figure it out. He'll figure it out. But the team buying in – is a massive ordeal. It never gets talked about, Darius. Yeah, I, I would I wouldn't put too much on the press conference. Like you said, the first time getting up there. But when you the first time you walk in front of that team oh. and that team meet, and obviously, like you said, you got to be in front of that team, you know, multiple times a week. And the, the team has to, like all those grown ass men got to buy into you. And we've been on teams where it gets to a certain point where. It, as soon as the coach gets up there and it's like, all right, all right. come on. All right. All right. All right. So, you know. Yeah. All right. So enough, you enough. Don't, you don't get that point. <laughs> enough, enough, enough. Yeah. No. Oh! Uh -oh. Somebody oh, got paid. Who made some money? Who, Who got signed? 
Uh, the Chargers have their replacement for Hunter Henry as they have agreed to terms with free agent Jared Cook. Source okay, said he gets Cook. a one-year deal worth six million uh, with a spelling error in his tweet. Ian Rappaport at oh, no. Rap Sheet, four point five million dollars fully guaranteed. Good break there, Rappaport. The width though, so close. Nice to know that you're typing out all of these tweets though. Jared Cook goes to the Chargers. Justin Herbert, who is going to be an absolute stud out there oh, with a man. new offensive system, now gets a great wide or a great tight end who has been sturdy for a long time jared cook now with the chargers 4.5 million dollars fully guaranteed good for him darius um and good for the chargers these wide receivers galladay juju uh ty still out there antonio brown there's a lot of a lot of guys yeah. have been signed okay kendrick Bourne. we get that aguilar unbelievable yeah. turnaround there why do you think the will fullers the galladays the jujus why do you think that that hasn't been settled yet darius if you had to guess I I mean, in my in my personal opinion, honestly, when you're building a team, I'm not dumping a bunch of money into the wide receiver, into one wide receiver. That's not a good investment to build a team, number one. Listen number to two, a corner here, by the way. These wide receivers <laughs> are coming in, and they're, they're more NFL-ready than probably any other position. Oh. Um, you know, the, you look back on these classes, you look at, you know, Justin Jefferson and IU and all these guys, they're coming in the league, and they're, they hit the ground running. So Same if I can that. get a guy in the second, third, fourth round, that's going to come in and give me similar production. You know, why would I pay a guy 16, 17, you know, $18 million? Now, I want all these guys to get paid, of course. Me too. But I'm sure that's in the thought process, you know, uh, of these organizations. I love that you're, you know, man-to-man podcast, talk about the secondary. Like, you, you did not spend a lot of money on these wide receivers. I, I do like that that is. But then whenever you came back on the other side there with these rookies are ready to go, I yeah. hadn't even thought about that, and it is so real. They put out those Instagram videos. Oh. Yeah, what, what? I mean, they are. They're coming out of breaks at 15 now. Like, at the age of 14, 13, they're working on coming out of breaks and everything like that. It exactly. is. <laughs> there's a chance that these guys, it's only going to get better and better as we go, I think. I didn't even think about that from a team management perspective. Yeah. Though. How much do you want? Maybe like Jerry Judy. We, we had Xavier Howard on the podcast, and we asked him who was the toughest receiver. And Jerry Judy is a rookie with Drew Lockett quarterback was the first guy that came to his mind because Judy as a rookie came into the league and was probably a top five route runner already so that's kind of unheard of like nobody comes into the league and is that like Justin Jefferson was probably a top six seven receiver last year as a rookie and um, so it, it, it's hard to spend that type of money on a guy and in a receiver position is such a dependent position as well you need a good old line to block you need a good quarterback you need a good play caller and then you you hope your receiver can get open and catch the ball so um yeah, man. I, like I said, I want these guys to get their money, but that's probably what's uh, what's kind of suppressing this market. I want everybody to make a billion dollars someday. I want everybody to Absolutely. experience everything they ever want. But you're because working on your cuts and breaks has become a cool thing to do. You know, <laughs> like what makes you an elite receiver has become like a cool thing to do. Like, oh, I'm going to go get my footwork in or whatever. It's like your footwork is going to make you millions of dollars, mm -hmm. too, by the way. It's like, oh, yeah, but we're doing it for content. It's like it is. You exactly. got these, you got these high schoolers doing this shit with their feet. They used to talk about Lynn Swan, right? He was a ballerina or whatever. Mm -hmm. And then you got other wide receivers. They play soccer. So their feet are good. Now these guys are training their footwork in like 10, 11, 12 years old, it's probably, Early. yeah, it's only going to get more. It, they don't even know that that's what they're preparing for, by the way. They're just, they're just doing <laughs> that. They're just doing that because it's like a cool thing to do. And then all of a sudden they're like, oh, I need you to run 11 yards exactly. And then you need to cut back at a, oh yeah, no problem. Ooh, bang. It's just like a stick and D, D butts over there fucking turning his hips. <laughs> oh no, I'm back out of here. What do you got? And then the rules, the rules are just making it easier for him year in and year out. It can't get hit the same. You can't touch them. The quarterbacks are getting better. They're getting more protected. So, scary for those DBs, man. Hey, you got out to good time. Good time to talk about DBs. You know what I mean? Yeah. Great. Great time. Great yeah. time. Yeah. <laughs> I, I realized that a couple games whenever I saw some returners running like four threes past punters. Man, it's a great time to talk about punting. <laughs> <laughs> Happy I'm not actually out there doing that. What do you have, Diggs? D-Butt. So, Patrick Peterson, Richard Sherman, both free agents. Well, not anymore. Sherman or Peterson signed. But Peterson, who was primarily a man corner early in his career sherman zone is it easier for the man corner to stay in the league longer because he can then become a zone corner later and then sherman has to fit into a system perfectly yeah exactly exactly because you can definitely become you can become a zone you, you kind of saw that with xavier rose xavier rose played majority man in minnesota 
And then he went, um, you know, signed a one year, three million dollar deal. Chris Ballard, I don't know how he finessed that, but got him there and he revived his career and, you know, playing more zone. And once you understand football, you understand the concept. Hopefully you've been well coached. You can definitely become that's what zones about knowing where your help is, knowing your drops, knowing how you're going to be attacked. And that's why Richard Sherman has been so good for so long. But. There are also still systems out there that Richard Sherman uh, can fit in. And if, um, you know, if the Jets are going to run a similar system, obviously you got coaching there. The Colts, you know, there's certain systems that uh, uh, don't worry about the can still go and play at a very <laughs> high level. We ain't paying anybody. I just got a quote. <laughs> I just got a quote. Uh, Ursay is doing a press conference right now. He says, uh, the Colts are being prudent with the cap due to the losses in revenue impacting the cap for the next three years. Ooh, Points out there's extensions on the horizon, too. Uh, that's via Kevin Bowen, who works here, 1070 The Fan, the local uh, ESPN radio affiliate. I, I, what, what, Ursay, I thought we were, you know, dumping a Brinks <laughs> truck out here to go get a couple Super Bowls. What, what are we doing yeah, here? We're trying to get a ring. We don't want to hear that. We don't want to hear that. Hey, Jim. Hey, Jim that, hey, I love Jim Ursay. The guy gave me a plane out of nowhere. I fucking love this man right here. But <laughs> that quote must have been taken out of context. This man will buy a, a drum set if it's $3 million just to put the <laughs> yeah. Beatles back together. What, what are you saying, Diggs? So they have all the cap space this year. And then next year, they're projected to be number two at $127 million in cap space. And then for 2023, oh if we're looking at... Oh, that, just that, sitting there. Then they're number six. I mean, we, they're still. We got to get to a break. We got to get to a break. Ladies and gentlemen, please say thank you to the birthday man, Darius Butler. Thank you, man. Thank you, D-Butt. You're awesome. It, so, oh. so there you have it. Darnold stinks and Ursay's not spending any money. What's going on? I need to, we need to relay a message. To, let's play a game of telephone, Jim Ursay. Jim, come on. Let's go for it, pal. It, That's disheartening to hear. Get some weapons, man. Don't be fucking please, okay? <laughs> Is the I, don't, I don't need Dolphins fan. Hey, I feel this. I'm in the same boat. It yeah, you're right. You're right. You're right. I'm sorry. I, I was. I'm just. You've been experiencing this for a couple of days now. I'm just getting this. Right. Is Cap going down next year? I was gonna say it almost. Uh, we gotta get to a break, okay? <laughs> Seems like in today's NFL, if you have money, you actually don't, and if you don't. You actually do. It's a wild time to be alive. Okay, 2020 <laughs> has made its way into 2021. This is the Pat McAfee Show. We have to get to a break. Jesus. Run red with blood, and you know why. Cause they are coming, they're coming for me. They are coming. A couple people, one college kid. Took a shot of my swag. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. We, know. No, we know. We don't I like don't that. I don't think a lot of people understand what swag is. You know, some of the younger generation thinks. You know, swag is just like you know, the clothes I wear or whatever. No, no, no. A swag is a mentality. Yeah. Swag is a mindset. I tried to tell this to some of the guys in the locker room this week. I said swagger, which is what swag comes from. Swagger is a mindset. Swagger isn't that you have a supreme backpack on. <laughs> or that you have your shoes, you know, unlaced walking around with you know, the, the, you know, you got your new uh, Louis uh, fanny pack that you, you make sure it's not worn at your waist, it's worn over your shoulder. That's not swag. That's not swagger. That's fashion choices. True swag is owning your inner essence. Mm. It's a mindset. Mm -hmm. And my essence on the field is that I feel like I'm a throwback player no. and I'm a tough guy. What I've played through, how I wear my stuff, you know, I'm kind of a no-nonsense, straightforward. To yes. me, that's what swag is all about. You're damn all right. this, like, yeah. fake swag out there. I got my special towel. I got this. I got that. I got this riding out there. A lot of you guys are just posing. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right, all right. Travis called heads. Sorry. You're not sorry. 
I, I'm sorry that it worked out this way, but I told you. You're not I had sorry. To trust my instincts. You asked me what I thought. I thought it was going to be heads. Damn, yeah. I didn't what about have Travis to Kelsey going out put there? Thirty K on it. Hey, I mean, was that the cleanest toss of all time? No, it was Great. terrible. But it, that thing took one bang straight in. What a horse shit toss. They watered, wow. they watered the field. Old Notre Dame versus USC. They raised the grass. And... <laughs> you son of a bitch. We all know that wasn't a fair coin toss. No, it was They should not. redo it. It was a lot worse than 50-50 after fucking watching it. Mm -hmm. A lot of people say that's why you don't bet 30000 on a coin toss. You know? <laughs> seems, like, seems like a reasonable thing to bet thirty k on. <laughs> Cause you got no control. <laughs> you got no control, God, guys. Damn. So I guess not even like a thought to go into it. Well, Christmas is canceled. <laughs> yeah, we're giving away a lot, but no, nowhere near as much as we once had thought. No, no. Remember that double seventy k? Take it back. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Fanduel just made so much money right there. Uh -huh. Use. Giving the old white guys something to complain about. It's the Pat McAfee Show. Welcome back to that show. There's conflicting reports now coming out of Jim Irsay's presser. Is okay. Right? This is the Pat McAfee Show. Series I'm channel 82 Madness. Sports Radio. <laughs> YouTube.com forward slash the Pat McAfee Show. Join our bracket Pat McAfee Show on March Madness Live presented by Capital One. We're trying to catch Capital One in the biggest bracket on there. It could potentially get to $100,000. Uh, what are you doing? Get out there, fill your bracket so you can compete for second place because I'm going to win. No, I'm going to win. No, I'm going to win. No, I'm going to win. I'm going to win. You didn't win. I already know it. I filled out a perfect fucking bracket. That's impossible because I filled out a perfect yeah, we bracket. We already talked about this. I filled out the perfect bracket. You filled out the perfect bracket. I got the final score right. You got it so fucking wrong. No, no. Wait, so that does that mean we both get a billion dollars from Warren Buffett, though? Yeah. Great question. Yeah, oh, I think so. Wow. Or is it? Oh. Is it five? Are we Patrick Mahomes money now all of a sudden? <laughs> is it a split? <laughs> Buffett will give you both. Let's go. What a fucking guy Buffett is. Good guy. Congrats to us. Hey, good for us. Yeah. We, will con we will continue to do the show, but there will be more weeks we will take off. Okay. Just want to let everybody know that. You know, That's when, fair. When things are potentially not happening at all, we're not going to come out here dog and pony show when we got $500 million. Uh, we got a billion dollars in the office when there's nothing to talk we about. We got to groom the island. You know, we can't just leave yeah. it un ungroomed. Well, we'll go live. It'll be a different show, though. Of course. We'll yeah. be on said island, maybe uh -huh. golf course or whatever. But when that happens, anyways, you fill that out, do that whole thing, uh, because we're trying to give away... Fifty-one thousand dollars, may probably not seventy-five thousand, probably not potentially a hundred thousand. Yeah. <laughs> so right right now, you need to go to March Madness Live app and sign up for that. If you're not a part of our fifty-one thousand dollar bracket bonanza, what the fuck are you doing? Um, so there's conflicting reports coming out of Jim Mercy's press conference at at the end of uh, right before our last segment ended, which was a forty-seven minute segment. Uh, the <laughs> That's not how normal commercial blocking works, I'd assume. And I would assume there's a lot of analytics telling us we did it wrong. We did not capitalize on the most amount of people we could listen to. And that's radio business, which we don't know enough about. That's why we do a YouTube show. But whenever we left off air there to go to commercial break, there was a report coming that Jim Mercy in his press conference basically said, uh, they're being prudent with the cap due to the losses in revenue impacting the cap for the next three years. Points out the extensions on the horizon, too. Okay, so immediately upon reading that, I go, Jim, 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 this has never been you, bud. Hey, <laughs> this is not Jim Irsay. Jim Irsay is a guy that, hey, I will get a helicopter to take me to a concert because I don't want to be in traffic. Okay, right. I, I will I will do what I got to do. This is a man who lent us a G5, I believe, to fly one day. He has put the Beatles back together by buying all of their musical equipment in millions. Hey! Millions of dollars spent on drums and, and guitars. And he has said previous times, oh, hey, I want to win Super Bowls here. I'm going all in. Jim has always been like that. Great owner to play for. We'll give you everything you potentially need. Then that quote comes out. And I'm like, Jim, 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 Jim. What the fuck is going on, Jim? Whoa, whoa. What are we doing, Jim? Are we not doing it anymore? Let's, somebody needs to get back in his ear and say, Jim, let's do it. Now, another report is coming out of the press conference where Jim Mersey did say, Jim Mersey, I'm being willing to spend money in free agency. I'm always willing to jump in there to win football games. You can bet on that. Okay. He's back. He's back. Hey, he's, he's back. back. That, uh, now that's Jimmy from the Colts. That's that's, that's what Jimmy that's from Jimmy from the Colts. <laughs> that's Jimmy from the Colts. That first 
That first tweet that I was talking, like Jim's like, now nah, we're being prudent around here because the whole ride. But that 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 that's not that's not. It's not the Jimmy I know. That's not the Jimmy from the Colts that I know. <laughs> Sure feels like. There's another quote yeah. coming out. Jim Irsay makes this very clear. Colts want another wow. dynamic offensive playmaker to add to this team, specifically tight end or wide out fields. It will take an offense that includes Wentz, Taylor, Pittman, Hines, Mack, Pascal, Ali Cox, Doyle to the next level. Okay, well, there's been a couple tight ends that are gone, Jim. All right? I don't know if you know that they went to the one team. Yeah. There's, there's one. And, 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 and there is Kenny Galladay out there. He's talking to teams that aren't good at football right now, Jim, mm -hmm. so I do believe he is interested. Chris Ballard, though, is making all these decisions. There's a T.Y. quote uh, as well, I guess, because T.Y. Hilton, uh, Jim Irsay, via Zach Kiefer, at Z Kiefer. He's a writer for The Athletic. I think there's going to be an opportunity to have have T.Y. back. I know I'd love to see him back. He's been one of the most loved Colts players we've had. We'd love to have him back, but it has to fit within the content. Ah, oh, shit. <laughs> Uh-oh. All right. We got about 20 seconds here before hour two here ends, and this is not... He said he'll get in there, and he will... He said he'll get in there and win some football games. You can bet on that, but then he said T.Y.'s probably gone. We need another playmaker. What are we doing, Jim? I got faith. Get Carson's guy. Yep. Mr. Hour Ertz. two, wrapping up here. We'll see you in six minutes. What the hell? Oh, you think darkness is your ally, but you were merely adopted the dark. I was born in it, molded by it. to experience so many things both as a businessman off the field and on the field is there a moment when i ask this question it pops your mind like what's the craziest shit you've ever seen in your entire life because there was a time there where it felt like you were just getting dropped into insane situations and the world was like watching you yeah. do things man versus wild you and that bear grills oh, guy man. fucking electric that was maybe the most electric shit i've ever seen is there anything that you think of whenever you think like what's the most ridiculous thing you've been a part of uh, probably some of the most ridiculous shit I ever been a part of was, uh, you know, I, I, I had got the uh, uh, the restaurant which I'm in right now, and uh, you know, when we first got it, I, you know, I would come in here and I would, you know, clean up and go outside in the front, sweep up, you know, make sure everything looked nice and shit. And uh, one morning I got up here and I noticed, you know, like, damn, this is a funky ass smell. <laughs> <laughs> and I look, you know what I mean, to the side of my front door and it's a big ass pile of shit. <laughs> and I'm talking about human shit. Yeah, and yeah. it's right on the side of the door. So I'm like, somebody done came and, <laughs> and popped the shit right in front of the door. <laughs> like, oh, this, this shit is crazy. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. I can't be in here serving food. Motherfucker come walk in and they smell <laughs> straight ass cheeks when they come in there like, I don't think that's the restaurant I need to eat in. So, man, I get the water hose and I'm hosing it down and, you know, I see, uh, you know, we got a couple, uh, you know, uh, dolphins that, that usually walk back up in front. Hey, man, did you do this? Like, oh, no. So, you know, one of them owned up to it. I said, hey, man, check it out. So, you don't do this no more. Look, you come by here, we get you a, you know what I mean? We get you a broom and, a, uh, you know, you help, you help us, we help you. You feel me? And you know, we put together a little, uh, I put a proposition together for him and I ain't cleaning up shit no more. <laughs> it's a win win. It's a win for everybody on that one. Hey, one of your hey, former you know, teammates. Hey. Yeah, hey, everybody wins. You're helping the people, man. That's awesome. That's why people love you. But hey, one, one of them teammates. owned up to it. <laughs> Just the line of questioning. The line of questioning. His the name was Willie. Up. Willie. Willie owned up to it. Matter of fact, he just, he just left out. He's saying sweeping up. He's like, hey, what's up? Oh, from shitting outside to working inside. Let's go. Yeah. All right. Let's go, Willie. Let's go. Give it up for my boy, Willie, man. <laughs> Let's test out this Sharon! 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 Proper footy. Seems like it has a bigger sweet spot.
That's the greatest sport on earth right there. Aussie rules football, also known as footy, AFL. My first time bombing in official shorts that are a little bit restricting. I think I lost a ball, to be honest. It might be a Lance Armstrong situation down here, but I can see why this sport is beloved, because those balls fly. Need to get down to Australia, meet up with the Magpie boys, and finish out this AFL season as maybe its biggest fan in America. Let's have a day. The Pat McAfee Show. There will be no rules for our guests, for us, for the things we could talk about. Yes, Speaking his mind. I've never had a problem expressing my opinions or my thoughts or anything like that. While being relatable. I haven't had that manufactured, fake-ass celebrity that a lot of people have whenever they go on those big networks. I've had a chance to really build my crew, build my following, build my audience. And ridiculous. What am I supposed to do? So I'm supposed to look at something that I can definitely afford and say, nah. Nope, nope. Is that what I'm supposed to do? The Pat McAfee Show starts in three, three two, two, one. Welcome back to the Pat McAfee Show here Thursday, March 18th, 2021. A lot happening both personally and business-wise. Hour three will happen right now. Shout out to Twine for that beat drop up. Joining us now is a man that'll cheer his team on tomorrow as the school that he graduated from and is a distinguished member of their alumni battles against oral roberts for a big win which we have all bet on basically and from here in indianapolis all over we're talking about from dayton to youngstown and cleveland and all the towns in between ohio state legend will be saying oh What's up, guys? Good to be with you, man. How you doing? AJ Hawk. This guy stinks. My God. Hey, AJ. Happy Thursday, Pat. Happy Thursday to you, dude. You know you guys are playing tomorrow night against Oral Roberts. I'm not sure if you know that uh, March Madness basketball team is playing. Yeah, I don't know if you know that with Ohio State. But yeah, I know it. it. The opponent doesn't matter. It's about us, Pat. You know that. Okay, we interesting. Get a win. Interesting you say that. Nameless, faceless opponents. I, I, I had a lot of people that believed in that. And then we started diving deep into, like, Bill Belichick. He's like, no, we need to know the names. We'd also like to know their faces. Yep. We want to know what they're good at and what they're not good at. We are changing every single week. Now he's adjusting the entire free agency thing. Some quotes have come out from Jim Irsay's press conference that got me a little bit conflicted, AJ. I would love to see that, but it's a good point you actually make about Bill Belichick. You're right. Like it's not it, it's not only about our team. It's about taking advantage of the matchups we have, no matter what sport you're playing. Yeah, because you have some coaches that say nameless, faceless opponents. Like, hey, if we're our best us, it doesn't matter who we're playing against. And I think that's a great mentality that works. Bill Belichick, greatest coach of all time, does not believe in that at all. That is not his thing. I'd like to know everything about the person. We don't. We actually want to know more each week as opposed to less. It's a, that was some. That was a fascinating conversation we can get into for sure. But I'd like to move the conversation to the Indianapolis Colts right now, AJ, a team that you know has grossly overpaid me to kick balls has had a lot of success. There's conflicting reports about Jim Irsay in in his conversa- in his press conference about what he wants to do in free agency first. Kevin Bowen, of formerly of the Colts, he used to write for the Colts, now he's on 1070 The Fan down here in Indianapolis. He says, the Colts are being prudent with the cap due to the losses in revenue, impacting the cap for the next three years, points out the extensions on the horizons as well, which is Quentin Nelson, Darius Leonard, and I guess a couple other guys. Okay, so do you think 
if, if Ursay's thinking this, he's not the only one that's saying things like this. I would assume there's a lot of owners that are very understanding about the amount of money that normally comes in, the P&Ls, you know, the profits and losses. Ah. Mm -hmm. I believe there's a lot of owners that are thinking to themselves, like, hey, we gotta be a little bit different. He said it, now who knows if he means it or not, but he said it. Other people are thinking that where Kraft is going, hey, you remember how much money we used to make when we were winning? Last year stunk, let's go ahead and go all in. Fascinating to see the two different sides of the coin there, AJ. Yeah, it is, but do the Patriots, do they have those young studs that they're going to have to give max deals to, basically, nope. coming up in the future? Well, Jared Stidham, maybe. Yeah, Stidham, true. maybe. You know, <laughs> Dalton Keene, perhaps, <laughs> depending on how many touchdowns well, he has this year. We actually talked about Mahente. this. Yeah, <laughs> Mahenti yeah, might gonna be. He's going to hit the market. But, but we, we talked about this, and this was something Connor was actually, like, flexing. He was like, everybody says Bill's bad at drafting, folks. Well, we don't have to fucking pay him, do we? We don't yeah. have to pay these, yeah. these people on the horizon for the future. You know, you have to prepare for the future whenever you draft somebody inside. Like, for for instance, when I was being negotiated with for my contract, the Andrew Luck contract was being waved over my head during the entire, well, and we got to save room, you know, because we're going to have to pay Andrew. And uh, Jim Mercy has already tweeted that that's going to be the most expensive contract in history, which times have changed, <laughs> apparently. But uh, I would assume a lot of owners are thinking that way. And the owners that have like real cash right now are like, Kraft has cash cash, right? He has a yeah. lot of money. He's mm -hmm. like, yeah, let's go. We can go. And you look at the guy down at the Panthers. Allegedly, they're in for like everything. Yeah. It's it's interesting separating the the two different teams' styles here. And that's why the Newton deal is so awesome. Because you pay him. Obviously, it's up to $14 million, but it's a pretty cheap contract at quarterback. You can spend everywhere else to help him make him better. So And they <laughs> allegedly overpaid for all these players, right? That's what everybody's saying. Yeah. If they win, did, did they? Did it matter? Did it matter it if they overpaid? doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. They'll restructure when they need to a couple years from now. Like, if they win next year this year and the next year hey yeah it obviously worked out think about free agencies going forward from this moment aj think about everybody in the nfl that watched and has been watching what veach did in kansas city with the amount of money he's given out to the amount of people and the contracts he's given out what the patriots just did mm -hmm. what the saints have been doing now granted they had to cut a lot of players but the way they set up contracts what the tampa bay buccaneers have been doing all these salary cap people that every nfl team has are going to watch what these teams are doing with these fake numbers these fake salary cap hits the way they've been able to maneuver around this this is potentially going to become something where i hope it leads to more teams making plays but uh, it just it feels like this is going to be something that may, could be the change of how, you know, contracts are set up for the foreseeable future until it potentially gets changed. Is it was it Corona that caused this to like all of a sudden all these teams using these voidable years like in how long? have, have uh, teams been using this in contracts? Because now I feel like it's finally coming to light. Well, I guess it's always been something. And, and we have to remember that the NFL and the NFLPA came to an agreement because of COVID that there was the ability to have a difference from year to year salary of more than 25%, which I guess used to be a rule. And will that come back into place and how would that work? But the voidable year thing, I guess it's been around. Everybody that's talked to us that's been in the know, allegedly. They said it's been around, but it's just come to the forefront because of the way the salary cap moved there. But how are they going to, because you just kick the, the thing, you kick that four years down the road, you re-sign, you kick that another four years that's you just keep kicking it down the road, right? Don't you just continue to do that forever? Isn't that kind of what you do? Yeah, you kick it down the road to the next GM who comes in when you get fired three years from now. Bingo. There's some information coming in Ooh. on Mariota. Ian Rappaport is tweeting that decision is coming. The Raiders asked QB Marcus Mariota to take a pay cut down to just $3 million this year, source said. And if he refuses, the team will move on. While a release is likely, the team has been able to trade players they would cut. That remains possible. He is due $10.725 million, which if you're in a quarterback uh search and you don't know who your quarterback is 10.725 million dollars isn't bad but i believe it comes 20 if he starts right yeah mm -hmm. that becomes 20 million dollars if he's your starter that's how the contract is set up in the past few days two players uh which is what rapaport was alluding to here two players were cut from the raiders then they thought they were going to the open market. No, no, actually, you're being traded to another team. So that has happened. Maybe somebody will trade for Marcus Mariota, but that $20 million, you're not trading $10.725 million into your building if you don't think he's a starter. And if he's a starter, it's $20 million. So I assume this is going to be a release, and Marcus Mariota joins this frantic free agency frenzy. Diggs, what do you have? So say he gets released. Uh, would you take him over Cam or Andy Dalton? Are you talking about me? Mm -hmm. I don't know. Let's ask. Let's ask one of the guys who has that as quarterback. Would you take Marcus Mariota no. over no Cam way. Newton? No way. Okay. Hmm. 
Nope. Really? I would. Hey, you if, would, AJ? I, I, no, I'm, I don't know. But I, I sure hope that Marcus doesn't it does not entertain taking a pay cut down to three million dollars he knows if he gets get released, the fuck out of he's gonna there. make more than three million <laughs> yeah. dollars. come on marcus get out of there like hey congratulations you you only needed one half to prove what you had to prove in las vegas you what you went to las vegas to do you did congratulations it took one half in a primetime game everybody now sees oh we can go back and look at the good footage from marcus Mariota when he was at the titans we can watch that half he still has it in there something's going on you know it's just uh mike garofolo is tweeting a follow-up to the ian Rappaport tweet Mariota believes he has options on the marker mm, another spelling mm, error it's a big on. day market <laughs> if the raiders let him go so i'd expect he'll hold firm here yeah we would hope so as well yeah we would hope so as well now granted last year's quarterback market dried up very quick yeah they oh, also yeah. waited until every team filled their court like yeah. till the bears signed dalton to do this yeah and we we talked about this yesterday how this doesn't get mentioned a lot the timing of the cuts could potentially be massively asshole to potential free agent that's about to happen because money's already gone aj like if they just came to marcus and like over the last few days and asked him to take a pay cut yeah then the timing is very like you don't need they don't need to do that if they know that he's probably not going to be there yeah they don't have to there's no rules like doesn't have to be fair we know that but it would have been if you're Mariota, it would have been nice to be on the market a little bit earlier what do you have got there is one spot left if joe burrow isn't ready to start the season he could start for the Bengals. and the Bengals have been spending money hey it's a new oh, Bengals. Yeah. <laughs> did jim ursay's spirit hop over to cincinnati oh, oh. <laughs> Colts are going to sting forever. Whoa. Whoa. Whoa Don't geez. you say that. They're just going to hold on to money. They're just going to hold on to money in the last, in the last our hour. Our team's good right now. It's already a good team. We're already I in the playoffs. I don't know. I don't know. We're already out. Yeah. We got the Patriots. I don't There's know. There's no guarantee for next year. There's no guarantee you're going to the playoffs again. Yeah, that core, that nucleus is going to go to the playoffs. Okay, that team is good. What we're trying to do is, and I think I might be the only person, I guess, that is viewing it this way in the city that I currently reside. We should be trying to figure out how we get to the Super Bowl because that team, that nucleus of that squad, who knows what's going to happen? Some of the, They say big signings are on the horizon. What if they don't sign them? What if they hit the market and go somewhere? I mean, whoa, whoa, we can't live in our fears. You got to figure out how to score a touchdown before you figure out how to go to the Super Bowl this season. All right. I mean, All right. Cam's got to throw defense. more than eight. I think we can just run it with 12 personnel. See you there. Yeah, because it's 19. I don't even think you have to run it. I mean, it, they'll be able to, the amount of screens you guys will be able to run, you have at least four weapons on that team that can be in the screen game. I mean, that is just, that's, that's a kill shot. We're going to be handing the ball off to Jonu Smith, and he's going to be getting six yards of carry. Are you kidding me? And then you'll play action, I think, and Hunter Henry is just going to be slipping on the other side. See ya! Same. Bro. I mean, you can. You're right. It does set up well for the screen game, but you also have to have some downfield threats to set Aguilar. up the screen game. Aguilar. Well, and you have to be able to pound the ball. That's why they brought in, unlike Aguilar, but like they're yeah. allegedly in conversations with Will Fuller as well. There's rumors <laughs> that he's, they're going to sign Will Fuller as well. It's like... This is awesome out of Bill Belichick. A lot of people obviously hate this, and you can judge which players they decided to bring in or whatever, but Bill Belichick had a very vivid plan. Okay, here's our plan. This is And Kraft said, do whatever the hell you want to do. You spend – we are not doing what we did last year ever again. Okay, that we do not stink ever again. Yep. We're not doing – do whatever money you need. Do whatever you got to do. Build that thing up. And Bill Belichick's like, yep, you got it. We're going to spend every dollar you got, sir. Right, let's go ahead and do that. <laughs> and it, it, it might work. Like, Hey, I know you can't win games in March. I understand this is overreaction, all this shit. But what if this works? Which mm -hmm. yeah. I'm tending to believe that it will. Now, Super Bowl is going to be tough, especially mm -hmm. with the other teams. But at least yeah. Bill's getting into the game, you know? Hey, we've seen all these moves that the, the Patriots have done. Do you think there's a chance that anyone in New England has kind of put the feelers out to see if they could find a way to acquire like a Russell Wilson? Well, I guess Deshaun Watson, Watson. also potentially going to be moved to – everybody's saying like, oh, Cesario now – Darius Butler, who was drafted to New England um, and then ended up playing for the Panthers and the Colts is where I got a chance to meet him. Um, he said he doesn't see Cesario sending Deshaun Watson to the Patriots or whatever, but that goes back to how, how real is our theory that Bill Belichick actually sent Cesario down mm -hmm. there and Jack Easterby down there and Matt Patricia to Detroit and Mangini to Cleveland and, and Brian Flores to Miami and everything else that has ever happened out from underneath the Bill Belichick tree. And they just did another deal last hour sending Ryan Izzo down there for a seventh overall yeah. pick. I yeah, mean, they're trading a lot. They're, they're doing a lot of business those calls. Yeah. Easterby and McNair have been busy. Oh, well, it used to be. What do you say? Oh, yeah. I forgot what? all about that. <laughs> It's getting bad. It's getting ugly down there. 
If it's real, justice. Mm -hmm. If not, I'd like it to be just as loud as it currently is. Mm -hmm. And we will talk about it as, you know, it proceeds. Mm -hmm. That's right. Because that's what we are. As necessary. Well said. Unbiased journalists. Bingo. Take the journalist out, though. Unbiased people. Well, because when... (laughs) Thank you. Humans. Humans. How about Kyle? Go ahead. Kyle, hey, Kyle Long, Kansas City. That's what didn't I say that yesterday? Yeah, I'm very pumped for him. Him, I, I wonder if he realized what interest there would be in him whenever he came out of retirement. I wonder if he maybe undersold it to himself or whatever. Goes over to Las Vegas and there was tweets like, "I can't believe Las Vegas let him out of the building." We just assumed that while he was in that building, he was getting a lot of text messages like, "Yo, yo, 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 <laughs> yo, out, yo, out, yo." There is a lot of teams right uh, looking for you. His quote today after signing with the Chiefs was. It's apparent it's a little bit different over here or something like that. I, I forget what his exact quote was, but he was a uh, long on visit to Kansas City as opposed to Vegas via Harold R. Cunts. Excuse me? I don't think so. I don't think that's how you pronounce it. <laughs> hey, it checks out. H-A-R-O-L-D. Yeah. R- verified. K-U-N-T-Z. Wait, okay. wait a minute. Yeah. Wait a minute. You're saying the guy's name is Harry Cunts. Yeah. Listen, that I didn't say that's his name. His, but... His parents did. Yeah. I'm just telling you what the tweet is because I am. You would think Harold, with that last name, Harold would be off the list before the kid was even born. All right. Listen, Harold does not deserve this. Okay. Give him a break. You could have named your kid Mike, and that would have made everything much better for that kid's life. Hey, my bracket. My bracket is a form of Mike Hawk with some numbers. (laughs) Shout out. Shout out to Michael Hawk. Okay. Shout out to Michael Hawk. Harold R. The reaction, I guess, I did not say it right. Coons? No, I think Coons. Okay, Coons. Yeah. Oh, 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 it's a K. Normally. All right, all right, Let's move back. It's John Coon. That's on me. I apologize. I did not. Well, Coon had the U H in there. Yeah, it's an H. So, Come on. But it still started with K U. Oh, okay. So that's how I'm supposed to just remember that. I think you got it right the first time. <laughs> I don't know, Harold, but he does great work. Okay. He says that long on visit to Kansas City as opposed to Vegas. Kyle Long says it becomes apparent that things are different here. Hashtag Chiefs. I would assume so. I would assume that's the case. Yeah. I would assume one team has an owner that is like pumped about their team. Another team seems to have an owner that uh, doesn't have much money, it seems like, and there's mm-hmm. a potential situation yeah. going on. I mean, I could see how one team's been to back to back Super Bowls, but that one team did beat that other team, though. Yeah. So, I mean, maybe. But Kyle Long, anytime you walk into a championship organization, you feel it. You know, it's like very obvious when you walk in the building, right, AJ? It's expected. There's a different feel to it because you have like all those guys and, and people in the building that have done it. They've been there, and that's just what they expect. Like, they're not trying to squeak into the playoffs. Like, they know, hey, you walk in there. There's a there's a weird feeling to a place where hey these spe- these regular season games these, this isn't what it's about. This is just to set us up for where we ultimately want to go. Yeah, these games matter. Okay, of course, because without these we don't get to the next step. But if we're playing football much differently then than we are now, we're cool with that as well. If we're change, if we change and get better, that's why whenever you talk, when Bill talks. You know, in, in I guess post Thanksgiving is really like the I yeah. guess a couple of Patriots have come out and like post Thanksgiving is really when they feel as if training camp's almost done. Like, okay, we figured out our team now. Now we gotta go on a run. That is just a very different mindset, I'd assume, than a lot of places. Jim Caldwell, Peyton, that whole crew with Dallas and them who was on earlier out in the middle of Iowa with, you know, uh, I'd say sketchy service. Yeah, Yeah. A.J. Hawk connection. It Mm -hmm. was kind of, yeah, it was an A.J. Hawk-like connection in the middle of Ohio or whatever. I think you and Dallas would love each other, by the way, if you ever met personally. But, like, whenever we won a game, it was just like, okay, way to go. Business as usual, here we go. Okay, let's move on. We'll see you tomorrow. Team on three, one, two, three. Whenever we lost the game, it was like, okay, here we go. No big deal. Team on three, we'll see you tomorrow. We're going to get this thing right. Let's move on. That type of idea is not one that just any coach can do. The reason why Jim Caldwell was able to do that is because Tony Dungy did that because they had a lot of success and you got to that point. I think building that to get to that point, not necessarily always like we got to be business minded, but once you get to that point, you can never lose that. You can never lose that culture. And I think that is something that uh, I hope the Kansas City Chiefs never have to learn. I got a chance to kind of see the Colts transition into a very different culture. It was almost like a whole thing. And I was always like, man, I wish this particular team could have experienced what I got to fortunately experience the first four years of my career, or three years of my career. You know, like I, I, as I got older, I remember thinking back to that first crew, like, okay, how would this, this, you like lean on it? You know what I mean? And once mm-hmm. we lost that whole group, 
it was very difficult to get back. I think they're getting there now, but let's hope Ursay opens the pocketbook a little bit. Uh oh. Just takes too long. Relax. If you lose that, it takes too long to build that back up to get that. Like it's get, there's probably going to be multiple regime changes, different coaches, multiple quarterbacks, and you're like, man, just ten years ago, this place was a whole had a whole different feel to it. Yeah, people would walk into the building. Like, it's a much different place now. It's like, oh yeah, just wait. You're about to turn a corner. Like, <laughs> yeah. Just wait. Yeah. It's, okay. Let's get to a break. We got Darius Slay on the other side. I cannot wait to chat with him. He was a great interview the last mm -hmm. time he came on. Oh, yeah. Obviously, with the Stafford news, mm -hmm. we'll talk to him. He was a teammate with him for either six or seven years, depending upon how we read his Wikipedia. <laughs> you know, it's always the years are always difficult. He's now at the Eagles. He just got paid last year, I believe, after being traded from Detroit. We'll talk to him about everything happening in the NFL, Matthew Stafford stories, and more with Darius Slay. This is the Pat McAfee Show, Thursday, March 18th, 2021. We also need your phone calls. 1-888-MAD-DOG-6 oh. and... We need you to get in on the FanDuel oh. Spread the Love campaign so we can all make just free $50 going in to a big weekend. Darius Slay's on the other side. Cheers. What's that guy's name? Chuck Norris. Yeah, J.J. Watt is the modern-day Chuck Norris. That's what he is. Like, in years to come, people will be like, J.J. Watt, Justin James, kind of do Infinity twice and, like, performed his own C-section and all that stuff. Andrew's probably the smartest human on earth, if I had to guess. He's the smartest I've ever talked to. Every time you have a conversation with him, you got to use context clues to try to figure out what the heck the words mean in the sentence. You go, hi, Andrew, how's it going? Ba ba ba, S A T word, S A T word. You don't know what it means. You got to just hope that the next sentence is going to describe what you just said. I don't know. I don't like ranking people. That, I mean, I understand that's what this show is. <laughs> Here we are. Here we are on a ranking show, and I don't like ranking people. I don't like judging people. If I'm on Tinder, I swipe right on everybody. I don't like judging people, uh, but I think the fact that Von Miller won a Super Bowl for a team, basically, and was an MVP of a Super Bowl, uh, I, think, I think that's worthy of being uh, a top five guy. And there's people in Germany. There's people in Hong Kong. There's people in South America that only watch one game a year, and it's the Super Bowl. Everybody's tuned in, uh, and I think all of them are saying is, Guten Tag, Von Miller. He's the man. If I was a superhero, I'd be Hancock, the drunk one. Next question. <laughs> <coughs> well, do you do, uh, Bane was the most recent um, villain in it. Do yeah. you do any Bane impersonations that you would What's say? What's that thing, like, uh, um, like here, do one real quick, do one real quick. I, I was born in the dog. That was good. You sounded really good. I was an American. In America, kicking an American football, blindfolded. Had you attempted kicking blindfolded before? We practiced it like three times before the actual attempt and they were nowhere near, nowhere near, nowhere close. Didn't think it was possible. And then the adjudicator shows up, he's got a little suit on with a little Guinness patch on, all high and mighty, judging me. Wham, <laughs> right down the middle. Some kid on the internet definitely is already beat. I mean, that's just the way it goes these days, but I mean, life's good. You know, they called me officially awesome. That's their thing. Like when you get a record, they go, you are officially awesome. I go, thanks adjudicator. I already knew that. That's all we got. Hey, Thank thanks, man. That was life. a lot of fun. You know, got a chance to talk about incredible football players. Got a chance to represent the shield here, you know, and uh, I'm just lucky to be in this league filled with awesome humans, you know? That's what it's all about. I'm just lucky to be here. Thanks for having me. Thank you.
giving the old white guys something to complain about. It's the Pat McAfee Show. Is this a new song in here? I don't know. We're w- welcome back to that show, by the way. That show stinks, by the way. This show. What's it called? This show. Oh. Oh, this is called Pop. Who is this? Yeah. We played this before, didn't we? Yeah. Who? Oh. 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 AJ. O H. Yeah, we've heard this one. We have heard this one, right? It's not a good one to read over, though. So see you later, Alex. Uh, something. If you're one of the 80 million Americans who are fed up with paying high cable prices, yeah, <laughs> count me in. Are yeah. you in there? If you are one of the 80 million people in America who are fed up with cable prices, please say I. I. How did they get that number? Dude. I would assume that is the exact amount of people that are paying high cable prices. Yeah. yeah. Oh my God. Bless, Bless you. you. Some, some people are. Bless you. Bless you. I'm allergic to even talking about that bullshit high Bless cable prices. You know what I mean? And if you're done with dealing with shady cable companies, there's finally an alternative that gives you the cable TV experience at half the price. What? what? Yeah, it's called Fubo TV. Oh. Fubo TV comes with over 100 of your favorite channels, including complete coverage of all your favorite sports with all local broadcasters. Ooh, all major sports league networks, NFL Red Zone, ABC, CBS, and more. And you can stream select games in 4K. 4K? I skipped a certain four-letter network that's also on there because uh, we have banned that show from this show for the week, at least. See ya. Plus, you can record your favorite games and shows on Fubu, Fubo TV's cloud DVR and watch anywhere on any device. Other streaming services can't compete with the breadth of entertainment that comes with Fubo TV. And coming in at half the cost of cable, Fubo TV is the best option for cord cutters everywhere. Hell yeah! Yes, absolute best. Oh, you love it. Use it for all the footy. Fubo TV is easy to try. It just takes two minutes to sign up and start streaming all your favorite cable channels. No cable box required. You can try it for free and cancel anytime. No hassles, no gotchas. Ooh. Go to FuboTV.com forward slash Pat to start your free trial and get 15% off your first month. That's oh. FuboTV.com forward slash Pat to start your free trial and get 15% off your first month. Shout out to Fubo TV. Shout wow. out. I do believe I'm actually allergic to talking about what that bullshit <laughs> cable companies have been doing. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's absurd. It's absolutely absurd. And you've had so many run-ins with uh, bullshit Don't cable. even tell me. Don't, I, don't even tell me. That, that satellite shit, Ugh. lies. Yeah. Just go clean it up. Yeah, just, okay, what do you want me to do? Get a pogo stick? <laughs> I'm getting up to... F- I live good. I got a big house. High roofs. No, go climb on top of your house. Yeah. You got a gutter, right? FuboTV.com forward slash Pat. Free trial and 15% off your first month. Let's go. Shout out I'm to fine. Fubo. Yeah. Come on, Fubo. Thanks for changing the game, Fubo. We appreciate you. Half the price of the bullshit you've been paying. Joining us now, ladies and gentlemen, an all-pro, a pro bowler, the interception leader in the entire NFL in the year 2017, now a Philadelphia Eagle, formerly of the Lions. Ladies and gentlemen, Darius Slay. Yeah. What up, big play? What's good? What's good? How you doing, man? I'm doing good. How you doing? Hey, not too shabby. I just sneezed a couple times because I'm allergic to these cable companies overcharging people. <laughs> Jeez, right? It's unbelievable what's going on out here, Darius. <laughs> um, I just saw you. I believe you were talking about Matthew Stafford with the NFL Films. He is leaving officially. Now, we'll get into you, by the way. I want to let you know. We do appreciate you coming on. We think you're a baller. We'll talk about your life as well. But I would like your thoughts on something that's happening pretty topical here. Matthew Stafford is going to the Los Angeles Rams. Last night, the guy who wore number nine put out a nine-minute video via the Detroit Lions, which basically was emotional. It was a beautiful watch. Evan Fox, diehard Lions fan, damn near cry. I almost cried. It got me so good. It was uh, yeah. I cried. I cried a little bit. Yeah, me too. I got a little tear. What? A little bit. if there's a lot of people, I think, that are about to be introduced to Matthew Stafford, because when you're a quarterback for the Lions, you're not necessarily on primetime television all the time, except for maybe Thanksgiving. He's an absolute stud, and I think a lot of people are about to learn that. Do you feel the same way as somebody that was shared the field with him for, what, six, seven years or whatever in Detroit? Yeah. He's, yeah, of seven. course. I mean, uh, man, he got a – man, they got a guy that's going to be unbelievable down there, man, on L.A. He's a very talented man, smart guy. He going to work hard, and um, he's a great leader, man. He lead by example. He approached practice the right way. Um, like, i never seen a professional like how he is for a long time, man. Um, he, he, he's, he's the man. What does he get? Like, what do you think he's going to do to that team and that offense? Obviously, he and McVay 
both guys, I feel like, are kind of alpha personalities. But oh. right. it seems like Stafford also is one of the tougher quarterbacks ever to play the game. I know he played with what a broken back. Like, what do you, what do you think he does instantly for that offense? Uh, I, I think he's going to bring a lot of, like, you know, accuracy, deep ball guy. Uh, and he go carry the team, man. He go, he could take any load, uh, any load you want to give him, you know, clutch games, come back. Uh, like I said, for the longest, man, uh, Stafford was only missing a, a great defense. And, uh, and, you know, the Rams have a great defense that can uh, continually get the ball back. Because uh, when I was with him at the time, you know, Stafford was putting up 30 points, but our defense was literally giving up 30 points too as well. So, uh, but guys that got a defense there, keeping 20 points under, 17 points under, yeah, staff going to put up 20, uh, 30 points easily. Isn't that something that's pretty interesting is, and we're talking to Darius Slay, corner for the Philadelphia Eagles now. Isn't that something interesting, though, to think about? And this is coming from a corner who's on defense. Is that a thought like, hey, if we keep them under 20 points, our guy is going to be able to get another? Like, is that a goal going into each game? It's like, hey, now, granted, you want it last, obviously. Everybody, we right. want to shut out. We want this. But the realistic mindset, like, hey, if we keep this under 20, there's a good chance our guy is going to get that. Is that something that actually goes through your mind? Yeah, easily, man. Because, you know, uh, you see the work. Definitely with guys like if you've been with Stafford long enough, man. Uh, he gets hot. He get going, man. He's unstoppable, man. He'll start slinging it any kind of way. Uh, <sighs> making the easiest throws, the hardest throw, make it look easy. And, uh, you know, that's always a defense goal, too, is to have a team on at least 20. Because most of the guys in this uh, in this league as a quarterback, definitely them elite ones, they can, uh, they can stack this uh, score up. I'm not going to ask you about the drama that's been surrounding your team because that would be incredibly unfair to you. You're not involved in that. But Jalen Hurts appears to be the quarterback going into next year for you guys. What, mm -hmm. what did you see out of Jalen that makes you think, like, okay, this guy is going to be our guy? There was moments of greatness out there. I don't think everything was as smooth on the offensive side of the ball right. last year as we would hope. But what do you think, like, Philadelphia Eagles fans should expect from Jalen Hurts that you've seen behind the scenes? It's like, hey, this is, there's a reason this guy's going to be our guy now. Uh, because he, he's a great leader, man. As a young guy, he came in with a chip on his shoulder. Um, honestly, man, no disrespect to Carson, but he always felt like that was his spot, you know, because uh, Carson's a great guy. But uh, he came into the um, – young buck came into the room and just basically kind of like trying to take over the uh, the offense, you know, as in you – know, just as competing-wise, not disrespectfully, just as in I want to come out here and compete against you to become this guy, and I want, and I want to be the face of this team. He always had that thought always had that drive. And that's what kind of separated a lot of guys that the fact that, you know, he was kind of just determined, you know, it was competitive wise, not disrespectfully. It was just like, man, I'm up here to compete to be uh, the best quarterback I can be for this team. Oh, cool, that's awesome. It, were you surprised at all? Or were any teammates surprised to see him? Like, and was he like that from day one? Um, well, we always saw that he had a lot of swagger about him and, and you know, in college, you know, that's what we use as the term now, as you see a guy that's playing in college ball, you're like, oh, he got a lot of swag. He, he carried himself the right way. And um, you can see that when he was at Alabama, and he was, and you can see all the, the adversity he had to take. You know, getting benched at uh, at uh, Alabama, nice. then going to over there and was being a Heisman candidate. You know, so he had a lot of drive. Man. He had a lot of a lot of stuff, a lot of stuff to prove, and he he's ready to prove it right now. We got to stop the fake swagger, don't we? Don't you think that's potentially an epidemic as well? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they gotta stop yeah, they got to stop sometime. Well, how are you spending your off season? What are you doing right now? Are you still in the Philly area? Are you back home? Yeah, I just got back to Philly actually just now. Um, you know, I'm going to start back working out, getting ready to uh, get back going. That building from outside of it, it seems like it's on fire. I, I mean, this is just from us, the stories that have gotten out. And the only stories mm -hmm. that get out are negative. I mean, that's just the only stories that really get out are negative. That's the way the business is. We don't necessarily love it. We try to, you know, keep it as positive as possible. But coming out of Philly, a lot of negative. With the Carson Wentz situation, Doug Peterson gone. New head coach has a press conference that is completely botched. I mean, it, it, it did not go fantastic. Have you talked to the new head coach? Have you gotten a chance to kind of meet maybe new coaches? And how do you feel about the season going in? I feel good, man. I, I met with both all the coaches, you know. Um, have a great talk, man. I'm looking forward to, uh, you know, seeing what they can bring to the table, man, helping me elevate my game and helping us elevate as a, as a team. So, uh, you know, I got high hopes, man. They come in there with a lot of energy. And, uh, you know, the first thing I talked to him, man, he just basically said, hey, football's going to be fun. And that's what it's all about, about having fun. It was a good convo, though, pretty smooth, like the way he spoke. Oh, 
It was way better than his interview. Okay. <laughs> okay. That, that, that's what I was trying to get to. You know, I didn't want to come out yeah. and say, I appreciate you getting there. Yeah. Because if I saw that press conference, I'd be looking at that. My first time talking to him, I'd be like, I got some questions here now, how on this guy operates. <laughs> nice to know that it's a smooth conversation. Football being fun, less thinky, more athlete take over -y. That is really good news for everybody. AJ, what do you have? Hey, Darius, I know in uh, what, 2017 you led the league in picks. Was that your best year if you look back? like overall or are there other years that you've played better but they just you didn't get any opportunities we know a lot of times as a corner they're not right. going to throw your way well uh that was obviously my best year really kind of me having eight picks you know uh but uh i say I me mean, that's me being in the right spot a lot of times but my uh the year after that man i came back with three picks i think that was more of my most uh technique uh year i had you know i was really uh locked in you know going against some elite guys in this uh in this game and uh and was winning battles consistently here in and here out so, uh, you know, I continue to keep um, getting better, and that's what I'm trying to do this year, too, to dominate this game and be the one of the best. I was just reminded, you do dominate games, by the way. You're unbelievable. Yep. And I think everybody is very surprised that Detroit traded you for a bag of balls to Philadelphia. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that was something that was very surprised. For those of us that understood football, they immediately gave you an extension, paid you. I mean, it was awesome. And uh, Diggs just sent us a tweet uh, that you restructured your contract to help out the Eagles. You're a hero. How come we're not wow. you're a hero? Whoa. What a team guy! Oh what a team guy! How did that? Oh, yeah. How did that all come to be? And how did that conversation go? And uh, right now, it seems like this is the new thing everybody's doing. Are you expecting to potentially do this in years to come as well? Was that a part of the conversation? Uh, uh, whatever needs to help the team, man. You know, I'm a winner. I, I, I like to win, man. Um, like I said, I, I, Eagles been in the um, big time moments, big time games. I only went to the playoff uh, maybe twice, you know, and ain't win. Uh, you know, they consistently uh, go to the playoff here and uh, they win. So I'm trying to do anything. I'm trying to, uh, to help this team out. So if I got to, you know, restructure some move something around, I'm willing to do it because, you know, I want to win. I want to feel them big moments. You know, I want to I want to feel the confetti, you know. So uh, <laughs> I'm trying to I'm trying to do whatever we need to do. I love it. Connor, what do you have? Yeah, Darius, uh, the Patriots got your guy uh, Jalen Mills this offseason. What type of player mm -hmm. is he going to be for New England, do you think? Oh, he'll be a great player, man. Hard worker, man. Uh, I'm, I'm happy for him, man. He's one of the hardest workers in the secondary we had. Very detailed, very locked in, um, very talented, man. Very versatile. He could go to corner, nickel, safety, whatever you want him to do, he could do it. And he'll give you his best effort at it. So, uh, you know, uh, the Patriots got a good guy, man. You know, I wish he was still with us, you know, so we could use him. But, uh, hey, I, I, I'm happy he got his money. He deserved, he it, deserved every penny of it. And, man, I'm looking forward to seeing how he look on, uh, on the other side. Diggs. Darius, um, it's been reported that Kenny Galladay is going to visit the Giants today. Are you uh, pumped to be potentially going up against one of your former former teammates twice a year? And what's he? Is he right. a dude? Hey, is he a dude? He's a dude, right? Oh, he's a guy, man. Uh, what up, Kenny? Hey, Kenny's a, a dog, man. Uh, he should come over here to Philly, but he's a dog <laughs> for sure. But he go over to New York, man. He he know what time it is. We go go out there now. Uh, it, it's gonna be a battle, you know. I know for sure I'm gonna be following him, and I, and I know all his moves. <laughs> hey, is that something? Do you talk during the game? No, nah, I don't talk, man. You know, I only had a, I don't really do that. It's, that's too much energy I gotta waste. I gotta do too much running and chasing somebody for a whole four quarters to be talking to you. <laughs> too much energy. I need every bit of energy I need. Okay, so this was said last year by the Dallas Cowboys safety. He he said it. He used it. Instead of using his inside voice, he used his outside voice and said this to the press. But he was like, uh, there's no way I can try hard on 80 straight plays or something. Like that. Like, <laughs> you know, and, and, and by the way, that's probably a thought that is had by a lot of people in the secondary. And there's moments you can hide it. But him him saying that publicly, you know, a lot of Cowboys fans were like, oh, these, these guys stink. We don't, we don't even have guys that will try hard or whatever. But that led to a conversation on this show. And I think a lot of people maybe potentially were intrigued by it. You guys in the secondary, corners, safeties, everything, you guys don't really rotate much. That, that is – No, no, no. Receivers get to rotate, man. They, they, yeah. You know, they got their guys that come in there and, and and give you the dummy route. When they run the ball, they go full <laughs> speed, go run a go route for no reason, just to get you tired. <laughs> then you got to come back in, and next thing you know, uh, Julio Jones lined up, fresh water. <laughs> fresh, please. Now you got like, oh, man, now they going to give me the real route, you know, so – that's that's the that's the that's the tickle, man. That's the hard part. So uh, you know, so hey, I don't I don't try to take no play out, but you gotta understand, uh, 
the game is situation. You got to know the, the situation of the game. I'm happy you didn't just tell Eagles fans that it's impossible for you to try hard every single game, every single play. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. I try hard every single play. No, but that's, that's a real it's a real thing, though. Like, that, whenever that conversation, I don't think it really happened until that moment because a lot of people obviously had to come out in defense of the guy. Like, hey, listen, he, this is what he meant. This is a real thing. It never gets talked about. How do you stay cardio condition like are you just naturally more in shape because you guys are running literally miles and you have to react right. you have to react to the greatest athlete how do you train for that are you just like a super conditioning you on the peloton out there you got coaches oh, coaching up each body part <laughs> i got a peloton for sure uh, I, I gotta be in the best shape uh i do way more running than lifting for sure so uh I try to keep that weight off my back. So uh, I, I do a lot of running, though. I'm pretty well conditioned, you know, definitely. Well, if you're a team that play a lot of man, you got to be well shaped for it. And, uh, and that's what I've been in for the last couple of years, and our team has played man a lot. So I got a lot of conditioning going. Patrick Peterson just signed with the Vikings for $10 million per. Congrats to P2. Yeah, yes, sir. <laughs> He's a man-to-man -man corner, though, so I, I believe that is probably somebody – there's not a lot of you guys out there, that whole thing. But it, right. th there comes a time, I would assume, and you're I would assume you're not near there or anything like that, but because to be corner, you got to be in shape. you got to be the most in shape person. You have to be the quickest person. You have to know what the other person's doing, or you're going to get bombed on or beat or whatever. As right. father time comes into place, how do you how do you adjust? Is that something you have to do mentally, or is that something? Is, is there any of those moments where it's like I have to change my game a bit, or is that something you can't do as a man to man corner? No, as a as a um, actually as a DB, the uh, you know the older you get, honestly, you get smarter. You know, so the game becomes slower. You start at reading concepts because the concepts don't change from the same got the same concept from like 1960. I don't know how long <laughs> they've been running curl flat, but I don't know how or slant flat. It's been going on since I don't know when, since Dion was playing. So uh, the concept not going to change, you know, it's just the talent world is going to change. And uh, so uh, you just got to beat guys to the punch when you get to that that, that old age. So, uh, and you know, Pat P, you know, uh, he's still gifted, very gifted, and uh, and he's very smart. So the game is still the same to him. So it ain't even, it's not even catching up with him. The only, the only time, other time I catch up with him is when he retire. Well, He'll be retiring a rich man, as will you. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Gary Slay, we appreciate yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good luck this year, man. I appreciate you. Yeah, you too, dude. He's a good player. Mm -hmm. Jalen Hurst just came in and said, I'm a guy. Get the yeah. fuck on. Yeah, yeah. It's my job. Hey, go prove your shotgun out. Maybe go shoot some skeet, pal, because I'm throwing the ball around here. <laughs> mm -hmm. Maybe that's why Carson was broke. Well, I mean, he said it, it was very respectful in how he did it, but very competitive. I could see how that would uh... – you Let's know, compete a little that bit. wouldn't sit well. Let's go ahead and compete a little bit. There was one day where me and Vinatieri kicked on the same day. That was an awesome day. It only happened one time. Ooh. That was oh! oh! Somebody got paid. Great cash, homie. Who made money? Uh, this is the week where the new league year Dang. began and teams are shaping okay. the Raiders who have traded and released a lot of people <laughs> due to potential cap problems have signed running back Kenyon Drake to a two-year, $14.5 million deal. Congrats to Kenyon Drake. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Well, Drake. Ian Rappaport reported that one there. Uh, the Raiders are quite an interesting situation going on right now. Get rid of players, bringing in some players here. How you doing? Keep it moving. Who's quarterback? Who's offensive line? Who knows? We got a guy that can run the ball, though. We talked to Michael Lombardi last week, and Michael Lombardi, a lot of people have thoughts, I'd assume, on Michael Lombardi. We love him over here. Mm -hmm. he, he forgets a lot more football than any of us have ever learned. Him talking about John Gruden also being the general manager and how normally coaches can't be GMs because they can't see the big picture. This might be one of those moves where John Gruden's like, you see Kenyon Drake, man? Give me that guy. <laughs> we don't have an offensive line. Give me that fucking guy. Let's do it. Or they really see something and maybe that's what they're building towards. But congrats to Kenyon Drake. What's going on in Las Vegas, though? I mean, what is I, I like it. I, I love Gruden just trusting his instincts, like his football instincts. Right. Like just He's found the place that gives him the freedom to do that, too. But when they... Oh, oh please, no. No. please no. Jen. With every new beginning comes from some other beginnings, and uh, Massacre Week has appeared yet again. Dove Kleiman is reporting that the Raiders oh. are parting ways with their backup quarterback, Marcus Mariota, likely releasing him because he's due to make 10.75. They could pay their backup running back $11 million guaranteed in Kenyon Drake. So this literally is a every new beginning comes from some other beginnings, and Marcus Mariota, one year in Las Vegas, being paid $8 million, I think, to potentially be a backup, had one good half, which was elected 
electrifying. Left a lot of people wondering, is he a guy again? He's on the market saving the Raiders $10.725 million. But if he was a starter, $20 million. I'd assume people are going to want him. We talked to New England Patriot fan earlier today. He said he would not want Mariota yeah, no over Cam Newton. I wonder what this market's going to be. I assume there's teams that want Marcus Mariota in the building. Is he going to be a starter somewhere, though? Are there any jobs that we... If he plays football like he did in that one half, I think, I think Marcus Mariota will play football again. Hey, what about Jacksonville? Couldn't he go down to Jacksonville? Well, Alex Smith's already back up there. We yep. What about Seattle? A little contingency plan for Russell Wilson. If he doesn't come in, just like they did with Tyrod Taylor in Houston, just in case Deshaun doesn't come back. Mm -hmm. Look at this. Uh oh. I don't know. They that wouldn't. I don't think that would sit well with Russ in Team Three because you know Mariota. Oh. Pete wants to get back and ground and pound, run the ball more. Mariota's not scared to tuck it and run right now, too. So. At all. Mar you saw what it looked like. You saw what that half looked like. Oh, oh, no. No. We did see that half. Ken. That half was so good. It was so good that it became too expensive. Marcus Mariota gets cut after they signed Kenyon Drake. Now, there's somebody else being released. Ian Rappaport is oh. reporting that there's... Oh, no. The Texans oh. are releasing veteran punter Brian Anger, source said, who was due to make $2.5 million. Of course, of course. No. Of course, oh, get rid of the punter. No. Why? Get rid of the kicker. Get rid of the long snapper. That has been a trend here in Massacre Week. Brian Anger, who was drafted ahead of Russell Wilson in the same draft class, <laughs> which is something that gets talked about by the Jacksonville Jaguars out of uh, Cal, I believe. An absolute bomber. Okay, he slaughters footballs. I'm not sure where he's at right now. I don't know who's going to sign him. Somebody will. But the Texans part ways with another member of their special teams unit. Punter down, long snapper down, kicker down there. Fair bear, I believe. Mm -hmm. Keep your head on a swivel, cuz. <laughs> Keep your head on a swivel. Hey, but who are they going to go – who do you go after? Like, when you cut another position, you have other players that – play that position when you cut the punter you got to go find somebody outside the building yeah they're just going to get a young guy they're just going to get a young guy come in hope he doesn't stink if he stinks we'll bring in another young guy we mm -hmm. don't need to pay this position how you doing uh brian anger i mean he's a good punter okay he's a good punter i if i was to look around the contracts like when that moment of massacre week really slapped me in the mouth last week i would assume that this was potentially one that was going to happen he'll end up on another team though he'll pump ball somewhere but i assume the texans are looking to go men probably rookie men uh in the punter position and long snapper position that could lose you some games but i'm not sure they're really worried about losing games right now they're worried about keeping that place uh alive that's down right there in houston they're probably gonna hey. be punting a lot too you would guess. A lot of punt. Uh, that <laughs> player like, performance, hey, that player performance bonus for whatever rookie yes. punter it is down in Houston is going to be a big one. He, he is going <laughs> to outperform his contract. Uh, the number of plays he will have will probably be rather large, if I had to guess, AJ. It's probably smart to bring in a fresh leg for that. You know you're going to get a bunch of reps. You want a fresh leg. So right, we, get the old 21-year-old kid. Hey, we need a 21-year-old. We're about to punt this a lot, okay? <laughs> We're talking maybe eight times a half, all right? Ten times a half. <laughs> This old guy, Brian Anger, has been around. I know he's got a big leg, but I don't know if he can handle what we're about to give to him down here in Houston. Let's go to Tory in Arizona. What's going on, Tory? Hey, Pat, boys, AJ, how are we doing today on day one of the best five-day stretch of the year? Oh, you talk about March Madness. Let's go. Yeah, baby. What do you want to talk about, Tory? Well, I'm in uh, I'm in Arizona, so there's very little or no uh, gambling allowed whatsoever, oh. which is. He got, you know, he got casinos over there. Oh, yeah. yeah. Want some casinos over there. True. You know, Camelback. I'm, I'm talking sports Ooh, gambling. So, you know. Oh, okay. You're talking about legal sports gambling. Got it. Okay. Yeah. What do you want to talk about? Though? Are you are you doing our bracket bonanza? Yeah. So I've got a comment and a question. The comment is I will definitely be doing the bonanza. Um, got to get in. It sounds like I'm going to have to accept second place, which is unfortunate, but I'm still going to participate. Good anyway. yeah. Good Good congrats. 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 congratulations. Big bronze. Ain't nothing wrong with bronze. No. Or silver, but, I mean. Uh, I appreciate that. Um, <laughs> ain't nothing wrong with silver. <laughs> now, because, right. because we don't have, uh, you know, legal sports gambling here in Arizona, I've been running my own unique style March Madness pool for years now. Uh -huh. um, not your typical bracket style, but a different setup. And oh, I so I figured I'd give you, AJ, the boys, any interest at all. Have someone reach out to me. I'll get you all the details on that. Um, We're not. Okay, Tori, come on. All right. We're, We're not. not a bonanza. <laughs> 
I mean, Tori, Tori, I love, Tori, I love Tori, okay, but we're not interested, Tori. Come on, we got our bracket bonanza. We're focused I on. I am. I'd like it. He could send me the info. Okay, cool. Yeah. Get, what's sure. your email? What's your email, AJ? So Just they give can, him your phone number. Yeah, AJ. maybe. What is it? Uh, Carl1211 at Gmail. <laughs> okay, thank you. Dot com, obviously, if you really want to make it happen, Tori, we appreciate you. Good luck with your bracket bonanza. I hope it's a great one. Thanks for calling in and telling us. Somebody got paid, though. Who is it? At My Sports Update is reporting Ooh, that the Giants man. are signing former Vikings tight end Kyle Rudolph to a two year, $16 million deal per his agents. Okay, we have said. The Giants stink. Michael Mansuri back there, Giants fan, rubbing his hands together. Mm. That has been an organization that has been very much out of relevance for some time now. Daniel Jones is back. Saquon Barkley is back from his injury. He got injured early. Now they got some weapons. They add in Kyle Rudolph. They're allegedly in on Kenny Galladay as well. What the hell is Joe Judge cooking over there in New Jersey, the home of the New York Giants, AJ? Doesn't this, this has to feel good if you're Danny Dimes. Say, hey, why not? Rudolph can definitely still play. Huge, big body target. They're going to say, oh, red zone. He's very valuable. He's valuable all over the place. I, th I think he's a good blocker, too. So he's going to be uh, – wow. don't you think he's going to be hungry? He's going to be ready, too, and motivated. I wonder if they sign him to be tight end, tackle, and guard because that is something that they uh, do have to address is that offensive line. Mm -hmm. But – but it, I like that the Giants are getting in the game here. Uh, we have another Giants fan, Brian, in Brian. Here, and he says it feels like Gettleman is just now learning of the signing bonus salary cap little trick that everybody else has been doing. <laughs> Late to the game. And that might be a real thing. And I, by the way, I don't think they're the only ones. I think there's a lot of teams that are watching what's going on everywhere else. They're like, we could have saved $60 million if we wanted to without doing anything, just rewriting things. Oh, we should have done that weeks ago. Mm -hmm. Oh, we should start doing that right now. I hope teams start doing that, but good for the Giants bringing in uh, Kyle Rudolph there. He went yeah. to Notre Dame, right? Yes. yes. Yeah. I was going to say Golden Domer, but I forgot if he went there or not. He's Golden He Domer. was. Notre Dame dead? No. I mean, you guess. What's so no. funny, Zito? Oh, oh, nothing. oh okay. Nothing. Oh. All right, Zito. nothing happened. Zito's after a Chicago guy. Chicago people love Notre Dame. Yeah, we do. Chicago people <laughs> love Notre Dame so much that, you know. What? We don't roll birds all day, though. Did nothing happen after all those fans stormed the field? No. Nah. Well, we don't know yet. The results aren't in. Remember, True. we don't know what's going to happen five, ten years down the road. So lock it in. Five, ten years, mm -hmm. then we'll get back on the other side of this. Now, the 20-year projection plan is something we're going to have to wait on a little bit, but yeah. I think we'll be allowed to go back outside before then. Let's go to Robin in New York City. What's going on, Robin? Yo, Pat, AJ, boys, what's good? Hey, Robin, how you doing? Two days in a row, probably won't ever happen again, but it's great to hear from you. What do you want to talk about? I, uh, I'm calling on Mr. Tone fucking Diggs right now. Okay, COVID Cowboy. He has been His constant bashing of Juju has landed him at the talk to my New York Jets. Mm -hmm. Trust me, us New Yorkers don't fuck around with that TikTok dancing shit. We don't need any more drama than we already got. Okay. I like this guy. All right. Yeah. That's how Robin feels. So he, he wanted to go at you, but then he kind of was on your side. I didn't really understand yeah. it, but shout out to Robin. Let's go to Mike in New York now. Are we big in New York? What's going on? Is this Francis? Hey, Pat and the boys, what's going on? I haven't talked to you since overreaction Monday. If you sucked on Sunday, it's not going to be a fun day. And that news you just gave oh. me about the Giants, Pat? Yeah. Oh! H. No, I, no, no, AJ. Oh, what, what? Oh, 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 okay. oh, congrats to Mike. Up. Love Mike, by the way. He, I think he was going to say pod, something about pod down there. I didn't see the full thing, but I think he just discovered the pod, which is the podcast that comes out of this office. It is appointment viewing and listening. Mm. I will say that. <laughs> that. That is the dumbest shit that gets put out. <laughs> by far. By any company. <laughs> It's unbelievable. Damn good time. Have your own. You guys have your own pod, our YouTube channel now. Mm -hmm. You guys are really doing it out there. Congrats to you guys. <laughs> it's a fucking great show. I listen to it. It's I. I get dumber while listening. Yep. I feel stupid for watching, but I love it. Mm -hmm. Let's go to Carl in Texas. What's going on, Carl? What's happening, boss? Carl, got a question for you. That place was wide open down there. Is, are, are all your neighbors just dying now, or what? <laughs> Man, we're doing great, man. It's yeah. wide ass open. Man, that's, yeah. that's what I've heard, Carl. We've heard that. You guys are kind of the guinea pigs for this whole thing, so go ahead and survive down there. All right? We all need it. Oh, oh wide down to Texas. Hey, we're making it work, man. We're making it work. Yeah, you're goddamn right. What do you want to talk about, Carl? 
man, I saw that Bubba Gump is on UT. Hook him, hook him. I see that. And I just want to know if any of the other boys are riding with him. No, no, horns down, pal. Okay. Mm-hmm. Sorry. Gumpy likes Texas because they make their free throws and they're incredibly athletic. And I'm going to be honest, after watching them play a couple of times, they look like a really good ball club out there. Shaka, too. Shaka Smart, yeah. yeah. He's been there, done that. Has had success with the Commonwealth, right? Oh, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Let's go to John in Austin. Wait. What's going on, John? <laughs> How we doing, Pat? That's it. Perfect, yeah. That's, yeah, the, name it mm-hmm. That's yeah. the name of their team, right? Yeah. VCU, yep. Virginia yeah. Commonwealth. What yeah. do you want to talk about, John? Great to hear from you. Uh, how we doing, Pat? Hey, not too shabby. What do you want to talk How are you? Uh, great. Uh, big news. fan of yours, and I just wanted to ask you, so, you know, it's a possibility for Mariota to be going up to the Pats, and mm-hmm. how do you think he'd fit in their scheme and their plan? Hey, great question, John. Thank you for calling. We got one minute left before the SiriusXM listeners uh, can no longer hear the show, and we appreciate you. And Chris Mad Dog Russo will be next, but we talked about that with Connor. Connor's biggest gripe about Mariota over Cam Newton is another quarterback dropped into a system that everybody says is very difficult to learn. Are you just maybe punting on the year as opposed to having Cam Newton another year in there, understanding now he has weapons. I don't know. Marcus Mariota's going to end up somewhere. If it's in New England, I would not be surprised. AJ, 20 seconds left for Sirius XM. Anything to say to these people? I don't know if Mariota fits in New England's plans with Cam. They seem like kind of similar play styles, but hey, appreciate being on the show with a big personality like you. Thank you. <laughs> you, you, you read the interview. Got it. Okay, Chris Mad Dog is right. next. We're back tomorrow. This has been the Pat McAfee Show. You read the interview? This is, I feel like a grandpa, but I tried to look it up, and it the only thing that kept popping up was whatever happened with the ESPN ban. Yeah. Jesus. I couldn't find whatever the, I couldn't find guy, the, You got to scroll down on Google, Bro, AJ. You know, it's always the very guy, top one. You wow. can find any toxic thing on the internet like that, Kenny. Easy. This guy can find any toxicity on the internet like this. got a sniffer for it. But mm-hmm. if he needs to find one article, can't do it. It's unbelievable. You're a fascinating human. Thank you. I usually can find it, but I did not scroll past like the first couple lines, so that's probably why. Hey, I'm going to let you know I don't do that either. If it was better, it would be towards the top. <laughs> and <laughs> that's I know exactly that, what I was thinking. And that's a very lazy way to do, go about Googling things, but yeah. I just want to let you know that's what I do. And, and everybody tells me, like, oh, well, then you're just getting all the ad ones. It's like, well, they're like Steinbrenner. They're trying to win. That's yeah. right. That's right. So, <laughs> uh, oh! oh! Speaking of trying to win... Great cash, homie. Somebody just signed somebody to a contract in the NFL. Reporting by NFL Trade Rumors, the Bills oh. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. are signing yes. QB Mitchell Trubisky. Yeah. At NFL Trade underscore Rumors. It's right. Yes. And this has been confirmed by everybody. Mitchell Trubisky is going into Buffalo to back up Joshua Allen. Well, Here we go. How do we know that? How do we know it's not a competition? <laughs> yep. It's not a competition. Last week, or last year, we talked to Big Money Bean, all right? And, we, and Cam Newton was available. And we asked Big Money Bean, the general manager for the Buffalo Bills, if there was ever a thought for Cam Newton to come in there. And he said, no, we want to build this around Josh. We want Josh to know this is his team. So I would assume that Josh has been in contact with Big Money Bean up there. And they talked about this whole thing. And I'm assuming they told Mitchell Trubisky, would love for have you to be a backup around here. We think you have a lot of the same traits potentially as Josh Allen. Josh Allen's our guy. Good for Mitchell Trubisky getting a new start in a place that has had success in very recent memory i'm happy for mitchell trubisky Thank you, Mitch. why not do you think bears fans are upset that he's not coming back no but the entire um the comment section is starting to say he's a starter he, he, guys come on guys guys Pat, they, you don't every job a every job is MVP open. to put him on the bench. it's an n oh, yeah. nvp did you say nvp I did. yeah okay Thank you, man. Josh Allen's not an MVP. No. No. no he's he's not. not Nickelodeon's valuable person or whatever it was. Hey, listen, you want to call it an open competition? I'm sure Josh Allen would welcome that. Fine by me. No. Maybe. Fine by me. You think Josh nice. Allen would? Well, yeah, he knows he's 10 times better than Mr. Bisky, so he oh. doesn't give a rat's ass. What do you want me to throw it Mitchell. left handed? What, what, happens Mitchell. If, what happens if a Carson Wentz, Jalen Hurts situation happens? Well, I don't think Josh Allen will no, react the same guy. way, but, but after what Darius Slay said there, about how Jalen Hurts came in and was like, yeah, yeah, same room, <laughs> one position, we get it. Uh, My job, no. You got paid how many millions? Doesn't matter. What's your dead cap space? Somebody will pay for it. Mm-hmm. You're out of here, pal. <laughs> you can see how Carson maybe felt a little bit uncomfortable. Okay? Doug Beers, no, I don't love it. I don't love that that's not, because I would hope that if I was in that position, my response would be, 
hey, Bob, fuck you. But everybody does yeah. things a lot differently, mm -hmm. you know? So that was a nice, interesting piece of information from Darius Slay. I don't think Josh Allen would react in a way that he would want to quit football basically for a little bit and maybe throw 100 interceptions or whatever. But maybe, maybe that's what's going to happen. Maybe. What a weird, like, it seems like it was 10 years ago, but how the, the Eagles season ended oh, with the last game. What would Sud fell. Hurts gets pulled. Like, what? We're going to look back at that. I mean, I look back at it now, and I'm like, what? Okay. What were we doing here? Bro, then there's pictures of, like, nasty looks. Like, yeah. Like, you know, like, in video, you maybe can't get it, but at some point, there are some still frames of photos where there are nasty looks coming from one person to another. Now, that moment might have been a heated conversation. I don't know how it could have been at that moment, how they were even interacting. But there were some nasty glare. And both of them are gone now. Doug Peterson and Carson Wentz are gone mm -hmm. now. So it's like Jalen Hurts survived the whole thing. And that's what Jalen Hurts does, though. That's why he squats so much, because he puts the whole place on his back. Lucky for Jalen Hurts, Sudfeld is gone as well. well. Sudfeld, now he comes into a place, you got to fucking watch it. Yeah. Fitzmagic yeah. and Sudfeld had those fourth quarter careers that we had never seen before. <laughs> yeah. This past NFL season. I heard he walked into J.P. Morgan and every executive on the floor oh, started, yeah. you know, shaking in their boots. Was that him or was that the guy who played for the Rams? No, that was Sudfeld. Was it? Wolford. The Wolf? Wolf is a... Abs bona fide stud. No, there was somebody. Was it he the LinkedIn? Sudfeld was LinkedIn? Uh, oh, no. I know who you're talking about now. I thought that's who you were referring to. Zona guy? No, that no, guy he was not awesome Strafolsky. Oh. Yeah, he was. Uh, the, yeah, yeah Strafolsky. Strafolsky uh -huh. was a stud. It's Patrick Light. I hope, I hope we get a chance to experience Strafolsky <laughs> for next 20 years like Fitzmagic. Was it way, Heineken? The, the Washington football team quietly making some, yeah. some solid yeah. moves this offseason. Yeah, they're, they're investing in the squad over there. They Two quarterbacks, they got Fitzmagic brought in there to be, um, I would assume, the starter, or maybe he'll play the fourth quarter role like he did Mariano or Vic. Curtis Samuel, they signed yesterday. William Jackson the other day. They, look at them. Hey, shout out yeah. to Washington football. Ron Rivera was trending, by the mm -hmm. way. They're like, oh, look. Look at the yeah, Washington. They got a team. They got a defense for sure. They oh. absolutely have a defense already. So yeah, they're trying to bolster their offense. And maybe maybe Fitz Magic is the guy. Maybe you have a magical run. I hey. He should. I With hope that so. defense and the weapons you have on offense. Oh, why not? The division. Heineke. Heineke and that team took the Tampa Bay Q Gronkineers to the limit in yeah. playoffs after Tampa Bay had figured out how to play football. I'm not saying that is indicative of anything that's going to happen next season. Obviously, the NFC stunk last year. It's difficult to judge anybody in there. But that team looks like they're going to be an okay team, and nobody would have guessed that. Nobody, Not an okay, a good team. Nobody would have guessed that a couple of years ago, especially when Expose 7 was coming out, and they, didn't, they still don't have a name. I mean, it is good for them over there. What, Ron Rivera comes in there and changes the entire – you know, mindset and culture of a place. The GM, too. Who's the GM? He's really good. He was on. Jason Wright. Jason Wright's the president. president. President, my bad. Yeah, they, do they have a GM? Do they bring one in? I think they did hire one, right? Yeah, but he's working for Ron, right? I'd assume that yeah, guy's working for Ron Rivera. I don't know. Go for the football team. Go for the football team. They're Are they just going to keep it? Like, what if they win the Super Bowl this year as the Washington football team? They said 2022 they're going to change their name or something. There'll be a new debut. <sighs> but if you tell me if they – somehow win the Super Bowl, they're going to change their name? Yeah. Well, when Jeff Bezos buys them and they're Washington Prime, yeah. Mm -hmm. That's a good name. Um, yeah. Yeah. I it thought is. about naming my kid Prime. But then Deion, Deion Prime, Sanders so has a... You know, oh, yeah. yeah. But little Prime McAfee would be dope. Mm -hmm. What's up, Prime? <laughs> Dion is the original Prime, but Amazon has kind of hijacked that entire thing. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's not as, not as good as Doobie, but it has a good ring to it. I mean, I'm only going to have one kid, so only one name will survive. I ain't got time for all those little fucking hellraisers. <laughs> you know what I mean? You don't have one yet. How do you not have time for many? We got some NFL media news I'm hearing from the back room. Craig Carton is reporting that DirecTV is out of the NFL and ESPN Plus gets it at Amazon Prime exclusive on oh, Thursday Night Football. 11 year deal opt out after seven. ESPN, CBS, Fox, and NBC continue doing their games. Okay, let's dive into this. DirecTV is out of the NFL and ESPN Plus now gets DirecTV. A lot of people's immediate reaction will be hopefully the ESPN Plus platform has it figured out how to handle that amount of people by the time football season comes around. Because although DirecTV does stink, there is a chance to watch the games if you have the Sunday 
ticket package. ESPN Plus gets that. Amazon Prime, exclusive home of Thursday Night Football, no longer on Fox. 11-year deal, opt-out after seven. ESPN, CBS, Fox, and NBC continue doing their games. Okay, here we go. So they're just raking in more and more money. Some more information is coming out about this 10-year, $100 billion worth of deals, allegedly, that is happening out there. Uh, what do you have, Dave? It's pretty nice if... Um, you don't have to have DirecTV to have Sunday ticket. Real was, shame. Yeah, it's pretty nice not to, we'll not to have to have DirecTV. Just yeah. put, this, the, this, put that period down This there. might be the thing that beheads DirecTV. Oh, it's done. Yes. DirecTV it's fucking absolutely. stinks. Hey, you know? real, real quick, though. Let's have a moment of silence for yeah. DirecTV. <laughs> you see what I did there? Mm-hmm. The moment of silence was frozen right in the fucking middle of it because that's what DirecTV does to every day. <laughs> I was uh, I was told that uh, DirecTV actually isn't going to be a comp- like do the satellites anymore because they're renewing their. Contract. Congrats, you guys had a great run, but honestly, the rest of the world is very thrilled that you guys are not going to fucking impose on our lives anymore. I missed out on so many things because day the satellite wasn't directly pa- facing north or something like that. I'm happy we're out of that game. Good for the NFL. Good for NFL fans. Let's hope ESPN Plus has it figured out though, because yeah. every UFC pay per view, the entire internet is one thing yeah. and one thing alone. This place stinks. Yes. So, I guess more- it's bigger than the UFC. Yeah. 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 Well. Yeah. yeah, I think this is a huge deal for ESPN. All they're doing, they always want to drive people to ESPN Plus and use their app. Now, yeah, if you have, you're carrying every NFL football game. Absolutely, this is going to drive. This is going to be the biggest driver of people to ESPN Plus. And what happens now? Do they get to create their own uh, NFL packaging or no? no? Red Zone, no. Sunday Ticket, you just carry the whole thing. Red Zone, I don't think you had to have re- Direct TV. I think that's its mm-hmm. own. But will they have? But what ESPN Plus now have their Maybe. ESPN person doing a Red Zone? Who is it? Orlovsky? Oh, Dane? No. Is it Dane? No, he's going to want to give too much input and, and commentate on a game. Greeny. Oh, you know who That's what Red on TV is, isn't it? Zubin Mahenti. Oh, put Zubs in there. This has got Zubin Mahenti written all over it. I'm in. I hope that Greeny would be very good at doing Red Yeah. Zone. Yeah, but then you would have to restructure Get Up and everything. Yeah. I mean, yeah, Green, you think Greeny wants to be on camera live for seven hours straight? Probably like not. You have to. I wonder if Scott Hansen potentially doing, uh, you know, I'm coming with type thing. Shopping. Package He's deal. an NFL Network guy, though, isn't he? I thought so, his deal was. Yeah. So red, NFL Network has a red zone, and I assume, you're, we're all assuming ESPN Plus will be allowed to have their own red zone? But maybe, yeah. Boom, maybe Boomer comes back and does it. Oh, yeah. Bark, 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 bark. yeah. Did anybody go over there to watch NFL Prime? Right. Time. Anybody watch that? Oh, yeah. It's great. It was on ESPN Plus. Oh, the new one? Yeah. No. No. What are you talking about? What is it? That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> what just happened right there? Man, uh, you guys are all like, yeah, Chris Berman, legend. <laughs> I am as well. You guys didn't even fucking know he had an entire show all no, last season. No, you didn't. Him and Book. You didn't know. <laughs> I did. You no, know, you saw the commercials. You didn't watch. Well, I couldn't because the ESPN Plus app fucking stinks. Uh, okay. So, you know, you so, try to watch it, the goddamn thing crashes. That goes back to the point we're saying yeah. that's going to have to get figured out before next NFL. <laughs> yes. Yeah. That's going to have to get figured out. And I assume they will. Disney's got like 700 million subscribers on their platform somehow. They know. They know. They know. They know. They know. They know. There's still 31,000 people watching. What are you doing? Yes, I agree. But also, going back to the Raiders situation with the center, that you know, they said they they released him and they were going to take a $2 million hit for releasing him. Was and then all of a sudden he gets traded. Did they just float that out there that they were releasing him to try to drive up interest and people to trade him? And I, that, is that legal? I is it sucks for the player as well. By the way, he thinks he's hitting the open market. Now he's going to a team that's good or whatever, you know. And these guys, okay, good. The team that seems to be trying to get good or whatever. But it is very interesting to be like, hey, we're cutting this guy. If somebody wants to come get it for pretty cheap, like that'd be very nice if you would do that because uh, you're obviously losing all leverage whenever you're saying we're going to release this person. You, you, it's not really a a negotiation it's it's basically that team is trying to get the player before the rest of the market does but you know the team is potentially against it it's not a good leverage move and i don't know if it's legal or not i do know it's pretty stupid though if you are looking to actually trade the player you know well is it is it possible that news leaked out because of just you know maybe too many people knew about it in oakland or, or for the raiders and they talked and you know to people like rapaport and Schefter, whoever and then it kind of got leaked out there before they did release them. And then all of a sudden they get calls and they say, okay, well, actually, no, we're not going to release you because we have offers for you. Yeah, I don't know. And how, how did Rodney, how did he think he was getting cut? Did he think he was going to become a free agent? And then they're like, oh, by the way, you've been traded. Well, I didn't even get the pick. What's going on? Like, you know, those yeah. are two very different worlds all of a sudden. That's how it works, man. Yeah. He, he learned probably from Twitter like the rest of us. Yeah. 
Twitter. Twitter's the best. Uh, yep. Big Money Bean has released a quote here from WGR 550. We're on your side. Brandon Bean on Trubisky. Athletically, he can do a lot of the same things Josh can do, Okay, such as RPOs. Oh, yeah. This is a reset for him. We don't expect him to be here long term. Hopefully in a year he'll get a chance to land a starter job. Okay, so this is the Marcus Mariota thing out in Las Vegas. If he has to come in and play, he's similar to Joshua Allen. One year we get him maybe, you know, teach him some things, learn him some things, get away from a situation that he probably deemed a bit toxic and kind of blossom again. But it seems like a good move by Big Money Bean. And he told Josh Allen, don't you worry about a thing. Did you see that guy? He stinks. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's nice of him to come out and say this, I guess, as the GM, say, hey, Mitchell, we have a lot of faith in him. He's going to be a starter for somebody else in a year, hopefully. But that's also saying he's going to have to have some kind of platform to show what he can do in a game which means josh allen would not be in the game well they're gonna be up so much you know what i mean mm -hmm. second mm -hmm. half true kind of guy let's not get our mvp potential guy out here in second or third and fourth quarter we're up so much let's go ahead and put the n v p mitchell trubisky out there and let him let him show everybody what he's got they get him in that analyzation thing that tells you that josh allen did where like oh, your yeah. elbow and hip bar yeah. maybe mitch trubisky is joe montana i think that's jordan palmer's thing i'm not sure that's <laughs> the bills doing that but if they do get the golf swing analyzation mm -hmm. thing that they had on josh allen's body and he realized that even though he was throwing the ball 80 some yards he wasn't even using his legs <clears throat> wasn't activating oh. him. so then he he used a little uh a little science and data and he he started you know getting the hip rotation with it some bitch increased by 35% accuracy wise. <laughs> I mean, are you kidding me? Is well, it that easy? Maybe I was doing something wrong. It makes too much sense. This is all setting up for Mitch to return to Chicago next year. Showing <laughs> what he can do one year in Buffalo. Oh my God. And Chicago oh. brings him back. Say, hey, listen, Dalton wasn't the answer. All right, Mitch, all right. come back home. We you fired are. Nagy. We fired Pace. Okay, you hated him. We hated mm -hmm. him. They're gone. Your team now, pal. Who do you want to coach this thing? We brought Mark Tressman back. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> He's an offensive guru. <laughs> yes. Yeah. From Canada. Yes. Remember when they hired, hired him? He got the job over Bruce yeah. Arians. <laughs> Did he really? Yeah. He got the job over Bruce Arians. They hired him. And then Bruce goes and gets a head coaching job at Arizona. Then Arizona plays Chicago. They're up 21, and he's throwing deep balls in the third and fourth <laughs> quarter. He's just fucking like... Uh, of course I remember, baby. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't forget about that. He was throwing spite deep balls? Oh, yeah. And then when they played us, right, because he left the Colts, and allegedly there was an attempt by him to stay as an Indianapolis Colt, but with the world that we're currently in and people wanting me to be the head coach of places, some things are going to have to happen. And he was told, like, go check the market if that's something. Allegedly that happened. We were playing him. They had to lead in the second half, and everybody on the sideline was like, hey, Bruce is not going to fucking let, like, hey, he's yeah. going to try to punish, he's going to try to punish us this week, which, by the way, is why people love Bruce Arians. You know what I mean? That's mm -hmm. why Bruce is Bruce. But, yeah, he wanted to be the Bears head coach, I think, and then they hired that guy out of Canada, and he went to Arizona, and now, obviously, Super Bowl champion. Oh, no. 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 Oh, Jen. No. Damn it. Somebody's career in a place has Matt Barkley oh, says, love you, oh, Buffalo. It's oh, been real. Mitchell oh, Trubisky in oh, Matt Barkley. At. Oh, Unbelievable. Did we know that the handsome Matt Barkley was the backup quarterback in Buffalo at the current moment? No way. We see he made him. some plays. He yeah. made some throws this past year. He shoved it up the Dolphins' ass. Of course he did. Of course he did. And, and that's something that Mitchell Trubisky is going to be looking to do uh, next year. But Matt Barkley... Hey, he's going to get a job somewhere. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. He'll be a backup somewhere. Let's yeah. not get it twisted, okay? I remember when he was coming out of USC, everybody was like, this oh, is the yeah. guy. This mm -hmm. is the guy. Mm -hmm. This is the guy. Still guy. Hey, who who is Joe uh, Burrow's backup right now? I believe the backup uh, is right. anybody that will sign up for the job, okay? So when Joe Burrow <laughs> goes down with a broken back, I have to go back out there and uh, potentially risk my spinal cord as well. Mm -hmm. So that is who. It, it's a tough son of a bitch, whoever it is. Well, but don't you think they need to address that? It, Joe, yeah, most likely he he is going to be ready for week one, but he's coming back from an ACL, a nasty one at that. Don't you think they're going to want to have some kind of solid piece there? Dude, listen, I can't speak for Matt Barkley, all right, but there was one year where four of our quarterbacks died, okay? Yeah. And we brought in two quarterbacks for the last week, and Chuck Pagano said that I potentially was going to play quarterback. And this is after I watched Andrew Luck die, Matt Hasselbeck die, Clipboard Jesus die. There was a couple more in there die. And it's the last game of the year. We have no chance to make the playoffs. And that was the first time I thought to myself, listen, I think I'm a pretty big team guy. 
But there ain't no way I'm fucking going out there and standing behind that offensive line with what's been happening to quarterbacks around here. Matt Barkley, I would assume, if you're going to be a backup quarterback, you have to look at that Bengals situation, and you just what? You just watch the clips of the Joe Burrow shots, and you're like, that's probably going to be me immediately after Joe Burrow gets hurt again if they don't address the offensive line. But you're right. That's going to be a highly sought-after backup quarterback position because it's going to – it, you're going to play. Like, there's a good chance you're going to play. That's no knock on Joe Burrow. Joe Burrow is probably going to be knocked, you know, out of a game or two if they sure. continue to not protect him. But the Bengals might be different this year. Hey, Bengals are investing money in their team all of a sudden. Mm-hmm. Maybe maybe they won't, won't want to kill their franchise guy. Draft an old lineman with that first-round pick. They got plenty of time to figure it out for old Joe. Yeah, first, and I assume that first-round draft pick offensive lineman will be able to Cure all the holes in that offensive exactly. line. Mm-hmm. Block all five positions. If you're looking for a tough son of a bitch, go trade for Wolford right now. Yeah. <laughs> True. Okay. Do we have Who are we picture? talking about? Wolford, the guy John that Wolf. the John, Wolf. He beat the fucking Seahawks in the playoffs. He yeah. started With over Jared neck. Goff. Yeah, yeah, okay. He started okay. over Jared Goff. Jared Goff went into the game after Wolford was carted out into an ambulance with a neck brace on. We thought he was dead. Mm-hmm. He's not dead. But he started over Jared Goff. Guy's a player. And anybody that gets carted off a field is willing to go to the, the – he is a tough son of yeah. a bitch. Yeah. yeah. And guess what? He can show what he can do, you know. I mean, it's it almost makes too much sense. I don't know why they haven't yeah. made this move already. They got Duck out there, a, don't they? I mean, yeah, and Duck is Duck is Wolford. I mean, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Wolford is Duck Spider-Man meme there. Yeah. And, and with Wolford, he wears the number nine. And Matthew Stafford wore the number nine in Detroit. He released a nine-minute video. I think that number nine is pretty – Let's not have any awkward situations. Let's get Wolford into a place where he can thrive, and that's a place where he's probably going to be close to death a lot. Send him to the Bengals. That's what the quarterback position is over there. Thinking back to that situation, just once again, another bizarre thing that happened during this past season. Like We were talking about Philly earlier. Now I almost forgot that that happened too with McVay and Goff all of a sudden comes in. and He he was slinging it for a little bit. He looked pretty good. It's not about how good he is. It's about what's inside. And that guy has a fire inside that is – inspiring to all of us um if we want to do throwback thursday let's go back through the the year that was then <laughs> you remember the steelers were 11 and 0 at one point then they oh, yeah. had a wednesday oh, yeah. afternoon football game yeah i mean there he is last year was absurd and we were just kind of covering it as it was but yeah looking back on last year there was some absurd shit that was going on not I, you know what i think it always been outdone though bill belichick spent 150 million dollars in guaranteed money yeah. the first like yeah. three days of free agent. you know what i mean it's been a lot of absurd shit aj yeah, I mean, I guess we sh- we should have seen some of this coming just because of how weird of a year it was and the, the salary cap situation. But it, it made me think of Juju. I know Juju's still out there. Could Juju, don't you think his he and his agent are probably saying, like, hey, I know the, the question is, oh, is he ever going to be a number one? They, they show how, how his stats were much better when A.B. was on the team with him. Could he also say, like, hey, look at, like, Ben hasn't been completely healthy and hasn't played like he was back when AB was here too. So how do you expect me to have these big numbers? Yeah, if you're Juju, I have no idea. What, I thought he would have been signed, by the way. I, I thought oh, that yeah. would have been something that would happen. Now, I'm not saying it's because people might not view him as, I mean, I guess that is what's happening is people are asking for numbers and then the teams are saying no, so the market might be different. But Darius Butler's point was very interesting. He was like, these young wide receivers are coming into the NFL ready, and they are not a lot of money. So are you going to spend $13, $15, 16000000 million on somebody, especially in this new cap shop, where there's a chance you could get a guy who is more prepared than they've ever been coming into the NFL? It's an interesting – I never even thought of that. but it's a, And I think he's saying that because on the Man to Man podcast, they interview a lot of DBs and, and safeties and corners, and a lot of them have been talking about the young guys in the new era. You know, I think he is – I think that's a vital point that we we haven't really chatted about is there's a chance you can get real young, real cheap, real quick at a position that is very important. That's wide receiver. Well, and this year, I know I don't dive into the whole draft and what's going on, but I know it's another wide receiver class that has a ton of talent coming out. We know what happened last year. Like there's seem like there's young receivers, five or six of them go in the first round the last couple of years, I feel like. And they all seem to step in and play pretty well from from the jump. I don't know what it is, but yeah, I would. I'd rather do that. Take a chance on a young receiver in the first or second round than like pay a guy that I'm not really, I'm like, yeah, he could be really good, but I'm not really sure. You don't want to miss on that. Yeah. Did you see the um, final thing here before we go? Oh, you know, it's back. Oh, Sharon. Oh. Sharon. Oh. 
Sherry! Sherry! Aussie, Sherry! Rules, Aussie Rules Football. The AFL is back, okay? The, yes. uh, the Australian Football no. League. Aussie Rules Football, which is not rugby, is back. They played early this morning. And I woke up with a bunch of tweets from Australian people saying, are you watching, are you watching, are you watching? I want to let you know, I, I am not watching live, okay? That, that's a 3.30, 4 a.m. wake-up call, and I don't have it in me. But I will watch highlights. They were in front of like 50,000 people down in Australia. Let's go! Yeah, AFL is back. Aussie Rules football is back. Woo! Fans are back. The explosive and entertaining plays. The spectacular marks, also known as sp- Becky Marks are happening. Becky. There's a lot of things happening in a sport that we just learned about. They are back. Let's go, AFL. Your boys play at 4.50 a.m. the morning. You're not getting up to... There is no chance I wake up for them, but I will see whether or not they won, and I will talk shit as if I watch them live. Mm-hmm. But I will watch the highlights. I appreciate the AFL. And Who's I your lo- team? Huh? Who's your team? Well, it was Colin- Collinwood Magpies, you see. Hold up. Smart. Oh. <gasps> Good morning. Oh, Good are you gonna do a breathe? Huh? A breathing? I don't know. It just sat on my tongue there. It tastes terrible. So I was trying to get sniff it. Sniff it. You're supposed to sniff it. I ain't snorting nothing. Okay. My brain matters to me. Uh, I was a Collingwood Magpie fan. Okay. Because they got an American over there named Mason Cox, also known as Coxzilla. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He's the most successful American that has ever played in the league. We're big fans. <laughs> I said, if there's one American who's been good over there, that's the team I'm gonna pull for. The team I decided to pull for, by the way, has a lot of shit going on. Oh, no. They got some off-the-field stuff going on. Oh, boy. And it, 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 now I'm kind of tore, you know. I'm, uh, uh, I'm like, I like the Mason Cock, the Coxzilla's there, but I get an onslaught of tweets every time something new comes out that's terrible about that team, about how I picked the wrong team. So I might choose a different team, but I know... <sighs> You know, whenever you do that, you kind of look like a Fugazi, which is exactly what you did last year whenever oh, we were picking yeah. our AFL Traitor. teams. Yeah, don't take my team. You can't jump on board with them. Who, the Richmond Tigers? Mm-hmm. Dusty Johnson, by the way, had a massive game last yeah, night. He's a beast. <laughs> Come on over he to the West is, Coast the Eagles. Who were, who were the Mullet team? Uh, North that Melbourne. Was, no, no. No. That was Mitt's team. Yeah, Mitt's, Mitt's team. Yeah. Mitt, who was your team, Mitt? Blue team, young team. Get on the mic. Bulldogs. Yeah, some, might be the bulldogs. some sort of bulldogs. Who are they? I mean, is Mitt dead back the there? What's in the... <sighs> <sighs> He just texted <sighs> back at the space <sighs> station. He just texted Western Bulldogs. Is he not here? Western Bulldogs? He actually said Western Bulldogs. Boy, yeah. Where is he? The Western Bulldogs. Oh, I think that's. <laughs> he's taking a dump. I was throwing some stuff away. Uh, it's yeah. muted, dude. Yeah. 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 Come on. Is his microphone on Z? Zito is burying him. Oh, <laughs> Zito. <laughs> Zito is the one Adam muted. Z, we appreciate the work you're doing, by the way. Yeah, appreciate yeah, you filming in. Filming in for my brother Jay. So Love you, Jay. Thanks, Where Jay. were you, Mitt? What was going on? I was throwing stuff away. It is the Western Bulldogs. Uh, oh, shit. I was going to shout out my favorite player, but I forgot. Bailey. Shout out Bailey. Greatest mullet uh, ever. Yeah, Adam bingo. Boy. I think yeah. that's going to be my team, by the way. Really? I think so. They stink. Yeah, no, they, they don't. Last yeah, year they, they had a young squad, yeah. pal. They had a young Bailey team. Bailey Smith. Yeah, him. Bailey You're Smith. hitching your wagon to a yeah. terrible team. The West Coast Eagles are ready Come to win on right over now. To the Cats, Fucking baby. Brisbane. Okay, I mean, we got a young roster. They made it to the Final Four last year. I mean, Mitt's team fucking stinks. No, <laughs> stinks. No, listen, I understand Mitt's team stinks, but Mitt's team has maybe the most delicious mullet the world has ever seen on it. The kid's name's Bailey Smith. Mm -hmm. He's an icon. He's a phenom. He's only going to get better. That squad, hey, they've been running and kicking, boys. Hey, they've been running and kicking, boys. You got no shot. I might be a Western Eagles fan. My fanhood is up for grabs because I don't like being associated (laughs) with something that has so many goddamn (laughs) controversies around it. The the controversies around the Collingwood like Magpies. What? Like what's happening off the field? Give I guess they're the most racist group of people of all time. Jesus. Oh, it's, it's, oh, like, yes. it's like every, I get a tweet every yeah. other day. Like, oh, why'd you pick this? Well, they got the only fucking American. What do you want from me? I didn't even know the sport existed. And then they're like, well, this is this, this is this. I guess it's all allegations. I'm not sure. But it is heavy tweets in my mentions. And I'm like, I didn't sign up. I like the sport. I didn't sign up to be associated with something terrible. So I'll go with the fucking mullets until something. Something despicable potentially comes out about them. Until they Smith. start on five, and exactly. then you start reconsidering. No, no, yeah. dude, please. Just, just be like don't AJ have... and change your team. Yeah, that's what week. this bum did. <laughs> nah, nah, we don't have those issues over at Richmond. We're good. You Bro. forgot your team name until I told you your team name, by the way. That was I unbelievable. Mean, it's a very real possibility. <laughs> <laughs>
Wow. That's my guy. Let's go, oh, Bailey yeah. Smith. Jeez, that's a real person? Yeah, that's, what do you my, mean? that's my person, dude. <laughs> Come on, AJ. Like the stash really ties it all together. The guy's a legend, Good bro. Good stash. Okay, Mason hey, put, Cox. Will you put that back up? Please. Does he have one side shaved? Uh, it's just where it's nah. It's like a, it's like a, a shadow. It's art, dude. Have you ever no, heard I mean, of it's art? Awesome. I love it. I've been trying to no, tell my wife don't. to shave her side of her hair. Bro, you, you, <laughs> bro, you didn't take a photography class. You have no clue what you're talking no, about. I, okay, oh, that oh, is my bad. Art. Tell me, how was your photography class? How'd it go? Well, Good. shadows and rule of thirds tells me that that's one of the greatest photos I've ever seen in my entire yeah. life. Mm -hmm. He's offset, by the way, yeah. so that you can, you know, study the entire frame of greatness. And that is the Western Eagles, Bailey Smith, phenom with the Sharon in his hands. And wait until you see him kick that song, bitch. I think I'm all the way in on the Western Eagles. Yeah. Yeah, but he's gonna leave that team for a better team like the West. Coast Eagles because it's a bigger market. I will go too. Okay. I will go too. <laughs> All right. I. I will. I will. I will leave. I will leave. I will leave my. I will leave my. I will leave my team today. I will leave my team today. I will leave my team today. I, I, will leave my I don't want to do it. I don't want to do it. But. But if they get rid of the reason why I'm on the team, I mean, I gotta, I gotta potentially. I mean, you league? can't blame me for trying. To, I jumped teams once, and now you're just going to bounce around the league? That's Where all Bailey's, Put the picture back up. Put the picture back up, please. Wherever that guy goes, I potentially go. Like just LeBron. You know. now, now, granted, there might be a another young, you know, Bailey Smith coming out that has a better mullet. Ooh. And maybe he's up. There is competition for my fanhood since, you know, a lot of negativity has hogged my timeline whenever the team that I cheer for plays with opposing fans who seem to be very, very, very over the Collingwood Magpies program uh, <laughs> as, as a whole. But if there's a younger one, maybe I'll, maybe I'll check it out. But Bailey Smith is electrifying. He and led the boys to the sixth place finish last season. Right? Bingo. That's what I'm talking it's about. It's not bad. That's not... Pff, I, mean, I mean, it's not Geelong, but it, it's not... Well, the Geelong Cats, they were the champ. No, wet the Richmond Tigers were. Yeah. yeah. We're wet in sales, though, boys. Hey, they really had 50,000 50, people there? I, I saw some highlights. It sounded like it. I, I did not get the actual numbers. because Just a bunch of people tweeting me that we got 50,000 in stands. I assume it was 50% maybe, and I think mm -hmm. some of those places have like 100,000 yeah. over there. Well, they were, Australia was super like restrictive, weren't they? I think if you go there, you have like a 14-day quarantine, all that. Well, and I think just a couple weeks ago, whenever the uh, tennis thing was happening, they shut it down, too, because a teacher in a school a couple blocks away, the, the whole they, they've been, yeah. I think when you're an island, you got to do that. I don't know. I don't. I'm no fucking government official. No Long Island. I'm 100 sure. Uh, we have some more NFL media news. I guess I've been told. Uh, we, NFL rep tells me Sunday ticket remains with AT. Fuck. Oh, fucking what? bullshit. Uh, uh, oh well, well who's wait, better? That, does, that makes no sense. Or the other guy. This is Peter Kafka. Okay, Kafka. I'm sure does great work, but he is the delivery, the messenger of terrible news. I, so what's on ESPN Plus then? If Sunday ticket is on both now. No, I don't right, think nothing. so. Go back to that pre. The go back to Carton's wrong. tweet, Craig Carton's tweet. Shout out you for remembering the name. Searching. Is that, is that guy lying? Or yeah. well, we, we maybe got to pick through the bullshit that's leaking out. Remember, this, this is just like a crown. Okay, this, Craig Carton, by the way, <laughs> does have a crown on in his thing. Prince or King, I'm not 100% sure. I didn't watch enough episodes of Crown to understand, but he's saying DirecTV is out of the NFL and ESPN Plus gets it. He's referring directly to Sunday Ticket there, then, in that tweet, right? Because that's, that's all they have. have. Yeah. That's all they are. So go back to the other one here. Kafka says, Peter Kafka says, DirecTV still has Sunday Ticket. Ugh. God damn it. What's going on? And that's has, bullshit. Has Harry Koontz tweeted about this? He did tweet, <laughs> thanking. Listen. I appreciate you saying his name right. No problem. But it's Harold. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Yes. Has Mr. Koontz like his grandfather. tweeted about this? Oh, I'm nice. sure it's not. Have you checked any of those media guys, like yeah, what Marshand and whoever else, the guys that report in the media? But what we, what we're saying is, no. Marshawn, we have not seen what Marshawn has said. This is just like the player information, though. Who knows who's leaking this information for what and who? There's so many people that potentially have access to some sort of information and plan that they're leaking it out. We can't get caught. Remember, Trent Dilfer told us we are a target for True. misinformation. Yeah. Jesus. Plus, this could be like a Raiders situation where they release a guy and then he's not actually released. And he they got traded. Yeah. yeah, exactly. How happy were we whenever we heard that it wasn't 
on DirecTV. So DirecTV Pumped. is still very much alive. And then Kafka came back and was like, wait a minute, bitch. <laughs> Slow down. We still got another at least That seven. means there's not a deal. Like, what would ESPN Plus, what would it benefit them if they don't have Sunday Ticket? Well, or maybe they have it, but it's like they also have it. And maybe they're doing maybe that. Maybe they split the deal. Did they split it and pay half and half and say we're both going to carry it? Then that's not, oh, that, that doesn't make a lot of sense there. Well, I would, I don't know actually, because ESPN because Plus has let me down as well. Is it so they could have a, like a red zone instead of the Sunday ticket where they have all the games except for the it's ones possible. that are blacked out in your area? So maybe. they could just have some sort of red zone? Yeah, like maybe that. it's all bullshit. I'll tell you this. We'll keep up with it. Oh, mm-hmm. yeah. We'll follow it, won't we, AJ? Yes, we will. Red zone is a hot commodity. I mean, I would, I would imagine ESPN Plus would. Yeah. We'd love to have it. Yeah, the Red Zone channel stinks. No. It's great. If you want to figure out what's going on, like you just get a, a broad brush of what's happening that day in the league. It's yeah. great because most people, yep. the majority of Americans, Pat, I know it's hard for you to believe this. Yeah. majority of Americans don't have 14 TV screens in the basement and they can sit there and eat vitamins and watch games for nine straight hours. Well, I, mean, I smoke you, them mostly, yeah. but I will eat them as well, depending upon what is available. But I would like to say that I understand why the Red Zone channel exists and I understand that people like it. But all I'm telling you is if you like the Red Zone channel, it's your favorite thing to watch. And I understand out of necessity, sometimes you have to. I just want to let you know, you don't like actual football, okay? You don't like actual football. <laughs> they, show, like... they show field goals and some punts, I think. Yeah, only when they're returned to the house. And there, there's no ebbs and flows of the game, okay? Exactly. Football is a game of territory. You are trying to gain territory. All the potential jousting between pawns and knights happening in a chess game, you don't see on the Red Zone channel. Plus, the Red Zone channel is potentially a terroristic organization. They try to take out a human and a job, which is the punter. So for me, not my thing, but I can understand how others watch it. And uh, we'll keep up with it, won't we? Absolutely. We'll keep up with it. AJ, I'll tell you what, today might have been one of our better shows. Good energy through today. You good, think? Good energy through today, I think. We're three and a half You look hours. good, man. You've been working out. You look good. Your Thank arms you. look big. You look trim. Thank you. It, it comes and goes. Listen, I, I <laughs> yeah. it comes and Within goes. Within like eight or, nine, eight or nine hours, it comes and goes. No, no well, wow. I'm about a week into this now, you know, so it comes and goes. I've been eating. I, look, hey, I saw you. I saw you. You're a week into what, though? I know you had, you splurged on St. Patty's Day, which you should, but then you had like an, uh, two that, you acai bowls and now you're, you're back? Well, I also, I've been boxing a lot of people at night. I've been eating yeah. a lot less. Okay, yesterday my wife put together, it was her first St. Patrick's Day with an Irish last name, so she's oh. all... You know, all pumped up. Fired up. All fired I up. wanted corned beef and cabbage so, so goddamn bad. It, was bad. it so looked good. incredible. It was so good. Now, the, I got a lot of people uh, telling us that croissants aren't a part of it. Like, okay, well, maybe you should add it. I, I think at this point, it was Who unbelievable. Cares? Who cares? It looked good. It I was unbelievable. My good wife, Rice crispy Treats for the office, too. Oh, oh lucky, yeah. Lucky nice. Charms Treats. So good. Lucky Charms Treats, actually, she put together. My wife crushes it. it it's like... Thank you. It, yeah. Thank some, you. Hey, thank, thank you, Sam. Thank you, thank you, Sam. Thank you, Sam. <laughs> but she, she likes to make things like special, you know. <laughs> it's awesome. It's a it's, great character trait to have. I agree, and I'm the complete opposite. You know, <laughs> yeah. Like, like I woke up yesterday and I was like uh, St. Patrick's Day or whatever, and I go out and the house is just like fully set up, and she's like, "Let's go. This is an awesome day or whatever." I'm like, "You know what? It is, isn't it? Like it, it, it's it cool. is. Let's go. This is an awesome day. This yeah. is a good thing." She's going to be a great mom one day. Cannot wait to see that, but I appreciate Samantha. And speaking of my wife, uh, this is going to get real for a second. My mother-in-law was born in Seoul, South Korea. Uh, My wife, half Korean. There's some things going on, I guess, against the Asian community, and I'd like to let everybody know. They're a pretty fucking dope group of people. Now, there's always going to be situations that happen where you could potentially think negative about somebody or something. I do not believe that there should be any hate towards the Asian group of folks. And growing up, by the way, not a lot of Asians in where we're from at all. Uh, but now with with Sam's mom and obviously Sam and learning about this whole situation, it's just, it's sad. And I don't think that is anything that we're about around here. Uh, so let's go ahead and keep it moving on that whole thing. I mean, yeah, it's, what a, yeah, what a weird situation. What a weird world. Why? Yeah. Weird world. There's, that, there's, it doesn't matter what anybody looks like. There's awesome people and there's turds. So. Every single group of people, every profession, every everything has turds in it. And we have to remember at all times that the non-turds far, far outweigh the turds. And we'll get the turds out eventually. Hopefully that's the goal for everything. But the power of the good has to outweigh them. And that's why we're coming together on this show to say, let's have a fucking day. Hell yeah. Hey.
AJ, appreciate you, buddy. If you're watching right now, please get in on the Spread the Love campaign on FanDuel Sportsbook if you have the ability to get on the mobile app. And I know it's not available in Tennessee, but I think you have a free $50 bet in Tennessee because the regulators said, no, you can't have a guaranteed win with Michigan State Spread the Love. Uh, also, get into our bracket bonanza. You have until noon tomorrow to get in there. If that thing gets to over 50,000 people, we'll give away $100,000. <laughs> we can't thank you enough for watching and listening. AJ, any final thoughts for the YouTubers? No, I'm excited to win the bracket challenge. And uh, actually, uh, my dad Pistol texted stinks. me earlier today. He said he got in on the bracket too, so he's in. There. Well, he's not gonna win either. Uh, yeah, <laughs> sorry, Pistol. Nobody in Ohio is winning this thing. No, Pistol. Yeah. No, he's definitely not gonna win. But he just wanted to support us. Well, neither are you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh no, I'll probably win. Your bracket stinks. I've been dude. watching AJ, a lot of college basketball. Oh, I mean, you dude. can't even watch NFL games, AJ. You're not watching college basketball. Yeah, you watch Red Zone Channel. You Stooge. don't even know what college basketball is. You don't even know that we're in March Madness. You're like, oh, it's March. 18th in Michigan, they're like, it's January, February, is 18th right now, 2021. What do you have, Nick? Got some clarity on the direct TV thing. Okay. Did digging. Per right, Craig Carton's report on the radio, this deal happens in 2024. Oh, so in 2024, oh. direct TV <laughs> is done. ESPN Craig Carton, thanks for the future, you Come know, on, but that is 10 years from now, Craig. Like, I appreciate the fact that he has a chance to do it. 2024 might as well be next century. Yeah. He's, he's a, look, he's a little rusty. He just got out of jail. Just let the, let the guy reacclimate, getting back into the groove of things. What? what? Oh, yeah. Watch his documentary on HBO. That is you didn't know that, Pat? No, no. I, I yeah, didn't. he used to do a morning show in New York with Boomer Esiason, and Boomer and Carton. Really? You have to and know And then this. things went wrong. What? Yeah, we've... No, I do. Oh, that's the ticket guy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah oh, yeah. I do know that story. I did not know uh -huh. that was him, though. I did not know the man with the crown was the guy that was potentially running a little Shout bit of a ticket run. Carton. Wow, King There's Carton. The, watch the documentary, man. He, he was in deep in gambling. Watch it. Okay. It I will. Good. It's on Showtime, watch. HBO, one of them. Was he putting like 30 grand on tails? He was like flying. Like, wasn't he like taking a helicopter, flying, gambling all night? Yeah. And then like getting back into the studio, like without sleeping. Like he was doing this for a long time and trying to cover his losses. Like it was serious. Really? It was like the uh, Uncut Gems type lifestyle? Yeah. Howie. I mean, yeah, kind of. Yeah. And then he started <laughs> he selling that. tickets. He started selling fake tickets to mm -hmm. make up for it. Wow. Can't have that, by the way. Gamble responsibly. Let's not fuck it up for everybody, okay? Now... <laughs> With Craig Carton happy he's on the other side of this whole thing and, and that whole thing. But we don't need news from 2024 breaking right now on this show. That's on us, not on Craig, obviously. We'll be back tomorrow, though. Feel Good Friday coming. I think we got yeah. a big guest tomorrow. Ooh, Let's go. Really? I think in studio, big guest tomorrow. Oh, wow. Really? In studio? I think so. I haven't been able to confirm it. Actually, I got a text message. Let's see. Who's in town? It wouldn't be anyone that's coming in town for March Madness. They can't do that. You sure? Says who? sure? We do have big guests in studio tomorrow. Let's go! Oh. Oh. I don't want to miss it. A football player? Associated with football, yeah. Oh, shit. So it's not Dick Vitale? <laughs> God it's not Dick EV. Damn it. Rob Lowe? It's not the guy from Deep Throat. Huh. Deep Throat. Wasn't that what he was part of? Rob Lowe? <laughs> Bob Lowe was the uh, shield hat guy. Yeah, yeah, but I think he did something with Deep Throat. Nick Lachey? I think Ooh. he did something. I mean, it's not Nick Lachey either, but go, go Reds. I think he's a Cincinnati Reds fan. <laughs> It is not John Gruden. It is not John Gruden. It's it's Jay, oh, my God. It's Jay Glazer. Yes. All right. Listen, it's, it's not Jay Glazer, unfortunately. I don't know if Jay Glazer is going to be coming on the show anytime soon. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I was looking at – I saw Lou Holtz's Instagram. It looked like he was near Indy. Uh, is Lou Holtz here? Is <laughs> – the fact that Ty knows that he completely burned a bridge there <laughs> yeah. is very – unfortunately – yeah. Carrying gasoline behind him. Big guest, though. Big, big guest tomorrow. Hey, the, you know the best part about it with Jay Glazer is Jay probably has no idea, but if he gets booked to come on the show and you say, hey, Jay's coming on tomorrow, he'll get 4,000 tweets or clips. <laughs> <laughs> Jay was supposed to come on the show one time, I, I think, recently, right? Something happened. No, he did. He came he on. Yeah. No, no, he there did? was another time, wasn't there? Yeah, there yeah, was some, another time there was recently. There sort of some scheduling conflict, I think it was. Yeah, yeah. The yeah. scheduling conflict like, was the conversation. He became aware of what yeah. the show is. Hey, no, I'm going to need you to read the uh, 15 pages verbatim to get out what I'm trying to promote, and then we can talk about whatever you want. I, 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 yeah. All right. That, <laughs> is that what happened? <laughs> it wasn't Jay. It was his people, though. I like Jay Glazer. I fucking love that. So man. do I. So do I. Me too. Ty. Do you, I do. A lot of hate in that impression. No. <laughs> yeah, there is. All right, we're out of here. The opinions of... 
Ty and those on this show do not reflect that of their peers or their boss. Have a great Thursday night. Michigan State spread the love campaign yeah. on FanDuel. Also, you got um, you got a lot of states playing tonight. I mean, tonight's playing games, a lot of states playing. You got Norfolk State mm-hmm. taking on Wichita State. You got Mount St. Mary's <laughs> against Texas Southern. You got Drake and Wichita State. You got Norfolk <laughs> State, Appalachian State, UCLA, Michigan State. You get it. A lot Let's of big go. games happening. A lot of states out there. Let's go. A lot of states putting the state on their back tonight to get into the big dance right here in India in the bubble. Let's see how it goes tonight, huh? Let's let's enjoy this March Madness that we have here. It's not Michigan State, though. It's the MSU Spartans presented by what? Michigan State University Spartans basketball team presented by Rocket Mortgage. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Ain't that right, Foxy? Sir. It's MSU a rough gig R. if you get the play-by-play duties for that one. Oh, it'd be awesome, wouldn't it? Wouldn't it be fucking awesome? They it, should put us on that game. Oh, uh, the Michigan State University Spartans basketball team presented by Rocket Mortgage on the drive. They swing it around. <laughs> the Michigan State University Spartans basketball team presented by Rocket Mortgage with a layup two seconds ago. Woo! They're already back on defense because I couldn't get the name of the goddamn team out. <laughs> what a moment, yeah. dude. Yeah, They better be, be saying awesome. that tonight. Yeah. Why what did he pay that? for? What did the guy pay for? You had to make up for all those lawyer fees. Need a big donation. Hey, yeah. I, I'd like Rocket Mortgage every single time Spartan has said, let's go ahead and follow that thing presented by Rocket Mortgage. We need to get a team now, I think. Yeah. You think we can get a team presented by by tonight? Uh, Norfolk. Oh Absolutely. Get one of the play-in games. You could probably get them before tip-off tonight. Oh, yeah. Who do we call? Athletic directors? Drake yeah. presented by. Whoa. Well, Drake should get Drake, by the way. I don't know what he's missing an opportunity. He for. has taken a picture in front of the Drake sign. It was on his Instagram or whatnot. Oh. He was, yeah. Okay, so, so they're going to lose, right? That's yeah. what kind of happens. Yeah. It was, uh, well, yeah, I guess. Well, he won for the Raptors, though. That, that, that yeah, thing's yeah, debunked. Well, canceled it out. I think UCLA, I think you could get them. The Bruins, dude? Yeah, that's Mick Cronin stinks. Bro, they just signed an Under Armour deal or something like that that was huge. Yeah, massive. Huge. Wait, huge. just now? Because Under Armour backed out of a couple of deals, I know. So maybe they backed out of a deal with Under Armour or Adidas. Yeah. They backed out with Adidas, right? And then they signed an Under Armour no, deal? No, Under Armour screwed them, mm-hmm. if I remember correctly. But then they re-signed for someone else. With big. Like, big money. Good for them. Chip Kelly out there still wheeling and dealing. Oh, yeah. yeah. UCLA Bruins presented wow. by Chip Kelly. Ooh. They should be good, man. They're not, though, I don't think. No. UCLA? Yeah. They're not bad. They had that quarterback from Vegas. Still do. Yeah, he's now a junior. He was a freshman. Three names. Yeah, he's a freak athlete, though. He's very good. Maybe they'll be good. I don't know. Maybe they'll be presented by the Ben McAfee Show. We'll see. Let's go. All right, All right let's get out of here. Uh, AJ, we'll see you tomorrow. Feel good Friday. Good luck to your Ohio State Buckeyes tomorrow night against what team? Oral Roberts. Bam. Thank you. Appreciate Gumby. you, Gump. <laughs> All right. Thanks, Gump. I thought you were pointing at me. Yeah, yeah. yeah I, <laughs> Just, uh, I would not have gotten it. For the record, I would not have gotten it. Yeah, I know. Yeah. No I shit. Know, I know, I exactly. know. That, that it's not them. about them. You know that. It's about us. Name when I say us, you're not included. Yeah, it is about us. I bet more money on stop Ohio State. Stop texting me us, too. First off, stop texting me us. Man, we, we sure got a squad this year. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, Andy looks really good in this press conference right now. Who does? Andy Dong. Ooh. Oh, Chicago, he has a press conference. Can we pull it up? Oh, yeah. There is news on the Bears, too. What is it? Kenny Galladay oh, visited yeah. there and stayed over there last <laughs> night. Ooh. Cool. He heard Andy Dalton was in the frame. He said, listen, I'll get the Red Rifles rockets out of my back. Right, let's go ahead and – oh, my God, he yeah. looks unbelievable. Wow. That yeah. you want to bring offensively is, you know, gives you the looks advantage. Looks like Lego to, hair. Uh, shift oh, the shut up. All the different things he will that, be the that starter, too, by the way. With, with Arms are big. So, yeah. I think you that's know, the thing that, uh, yeah, yeah, that yeah. we're excited about. There's – Stuff to build on from what uh, this team was able to do last year. A lot and, to build on, Andy. You know, you know for me, I, uh, I'm excited to kind of dig into the playbook and dig into the tape oh, and, yeah, and see are. exactly how we, how we His hair start. does match the color of the seat. Yeah, yeah. Look good. Yeah. Mm, they're going to stink. <laughs> Whoa. Let's hear the next question. This hey, good. Andy, Mark Grody with a score in WBBM. Here we go, Mark. Yeah. Mark. Here we go, Mark. Would it be fair to say that you would, would not have come here had you not been told or assured, as you said, that you were going to be the starter? Great question. Well, I think that was part of the consideration. I mean, when whenever you're going through the process, this was my first time to hit it, you know, when the new league year started. And so, um, I mean, when you hear that you're going to be the starter, that's uh, that's an enticing uh, an enticing pitch. So, yeah, I, you know, if it would have been different, maybe things wedges. would have turned out differently. But uh, you know, it wasn't. This is what you know. This is this is how it's supposed to be.
That is Andy Don. Boy, good luck. Yeah. Thank you, Andy. We love yeah. Andy Don. That's the first time he's ever been on the show. He's canceled every other time he's supposed to come on. Thanks, Andy. Mm. That was riveting stuff. Jesus. Yeah. Very good. I feel good. It was riveting. Mark asked him a question that was, you know. Oh, yeah. Pretty good. Good question, Mark. Tough question. Good question. The shark knows. <laughs> All right, we're out of here, dude. <laughs> see you, everybody. We'll see you tomorrow. Big guest in the studio. Be a friend, tell a friend. Big yeah. guest in the studio. Huge. Huge. 105 tomorrow, a conversation will happen on this show that people will re be reacting to. Oh, yeah. Obama? Is it Obama? Yes. Maybe. Maybe. Thanks, Obama. Is he associated with football? I guess he was an American president, American football. Yep. Oh, yeah. You're, You're right. Seven. You're right. Oh, frozen. Oh, that's because he has. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. <laughs> you loser! Yeah, your, your internet stinks so bad, dude. Oh, look, it's again. Oh, yeah. is that Buzz oh. Lightyear? <laughs> that's the show, dude. <laughs> From myself, Frozen Hawk, and all the boys. We'll see you tomorrow. Cheers. Get into the bracket bonanza, will you, please? Yeah.